43 was the inheritance of his mother, and by the emperor's bounty. He was himself invested with that ducal title, which has been improperly transferred to his lordship of Bouillon in the Ardennes. 44 In the service of Henry IV, he bore the great standard of the empire, and pierced with his lance the breast of Rodolph, the rebel king, Godfrey was the first who ascended the walls of Rome, and his sickness, his vow, perhaps. His remorse for bearing arms against the Pope, confirmed an early resolution of visiting the Holy Sepulchre, not as a pilgrim, but a deliverer. His valor was matured by prudence and moderation. His piety, though blind, was sincere, and, in the tumult of a camp, he practiced the real and fictitious virtues of a convent. Superior to the private factions of the chiefs, he reserved his enmity for the enemies of Christ, and though he gained a kingdom by the attempt, his pure and disinterested zeal was acknowledged by his rivals. Godfrey of Bouillon, 45, was accompanied by his two brothers, by Eustace the Elder, who had succeeded to the county of Boulogne, and by the younger, Baldwin, a character of more ambiguous virtue. The Duke of Lorraine, was alike celebrated on either side of the Rhine, from his birth and education, he was equally conversant with the French and Teutonic languages, the barons of France, Germany, and Lorraine, assembled their vassals and the Confederate force that marched under his banner was composed of fourscore thousand foot and about ten thousand horse. 2. In the Parliament that was held at Paris, in the King's presence, about two months after the Council of Clermont, Hugh, Count of Vermandois, was the most conspicuous of the princes who assumed the cross but the appellation of the great was applied. Not so much to his merit or possessions, though neither were contemptible, as to the royal birth of the brother of the king of France. 46 Robert, Duke of Normandy, was the eldest son of William the Conqueror, but on his father's death he was deprived of the Kingdom of England, by his own indolence and the activity of his brother Rufus. The worth of Robert was degraded by an excessive levity and easiness of temper, his cheerfulness seduced him to the indulgence of pleasure, his profuse liberality impoverished the prince and people, his indiscriminate clemency multiplied the number of offenders, and the amiable qualities of a private man became the essential defects of a sovereign. 4. The trifling sum of 10,000 marks, he mortgaged Normandy. During his absence to the English usurper, 47 but his engagement and behavior in the Holy War announced in Robert a reformation of manners, and restored him in some degree to the public esteem. Another Robert was Count of Flanders, a royal province, which, in this century, gave three queens to the thrones of France, England, and Denmark, he was surnamed the Sword and Lance of the Christians, but in the exploits of a soldier he sometimes forgot the duties of a general. Stephen, Count of Chartres, of Blois and of Troyes, was one of the richest princes of the age, and the number of his castles has been compared to the three hundred and sixty-five days of the year. His mind was improved by literature, and, in the council of the chiefs, the eloquent Stephen 48 was chosen to discharge the office of their president. 
These four were the principal leaders of the French, the Normans, and the pilgrims of the British Isles, but the list of the barons who were possessed of three or four towns would exceed, says a contemporary, the catalogue of the Trojan War. 49-3 In the south of France, the command was assumed by Adhemar Bishop of Puy, the Popegate, and by Raymond Count of Street, Giles and Thaulaus, who added the prouder titles of Duke of Narbonne and Marquis of Provence. The former was a respectable prelate, alike qualified for this world and the next. The latter was a veteran warrior, who had fought against the Saracens of Spain, and who consecrated his declining age, not only to the deliverance, but to the perpetual service, of the Holy Sepulchre. His experience and riches gave him a strong ascendant in the Christian camp, whose distress he was often able, and sometimes willing, to relieve. But it was easier for him to extort the praise of the infidels, than to preserve the love of his subjects and associates. His eminent qualities were clouded by a temper, haughty, envious, and obstinate, and, though he resigned an ample patrimony for the cause of God, his piety, in the public opinion, was not exempt from avarice and ambition. Fifty a mercantile, rather, then a martial, spirit prevailed among his provincials, fifty-one a common name, which included the natives of Auvergne and Languedoc, fifty-two the vassals of the kingdom of Burgundy or Alls. From the adjacent frontier of Spain he drew a band of hardy adventurers, as he marched through Lombardy, a crowd of Italians flocked to his standard, and his united force consisted of one hundred thousand horse and foot. If Raymond was the first to enlist and the last to depart, the delay may be excused by the greatness of his preparation and the promise of an everlasting farewell. 4. The name of Bohemond, the son of Robert Giscar, was already famous by his double victory over the Greek emperor. But his father's will had reduced him to the principality of Tarentum, and the remembrance of his eastern trophies, till he was awakened by the rumor and passage of the French pilgrims. It is in the person of this Norman chief that we may seek for the coolest policy and ambition, with a small allay of religious fanaticism. His conduct may justify a belief that he had secretly directed the design of the Pope, which he affected to second with astonishment and zeal, at the siege of Amalfi, his example and discourse inflamed the passions of a confederate army, he instantly tore his garment to supply crosses for the numerous candidates, and prepared to visit Constantinople and Asia at the head of 10,000 horse and 20,000 foot. Several princes of the Norman race accompanied this veteran general, and his cousin Tancred 53 was the partner, rather than the servant, of the war. In the accomplished character of Tancred we discover all the virtues of a perfect knight, 54 the true spirit of chivalry which inspired the generous sentiments and social offices of man. Far better than the base philosophy, or the baser religion, of the times. 42. Return, the author of the Esprit des Croyades has doubted, and might have disbelieved, the crusade and tragic death of Prince Sueno, 
with 1500 or 15,000 Danes, who was cut off by Sultan Solomon in Cappadocia, but who still lives in the poem of Tasso, Tom 4p 111-115 43, Return, The Fragments of the Kingdoms of Lotharingia, or Lorraine, were broken into the two duchies of the Moselle and of the Muse, the first has preserved its name, which in the latter has been changed into that of Brabant, Vales. Note it. Gaul. p. 283-288. 44. Return, c. In the description of France, by the Abbe D. Longuero, the Articles of Boulogne, Part I P 54, Brabant, Part 2 P 47, 48, Bouillon, P 134. On his departure, Godfrey sold or pond Bouillon to the church for 1300 marks. 45, Return, see the family character of Godfrey, in William of Tyre, L. 9. C. 5 to 8, his previous design in Guybert, p. 485. His sickness and vow in Bernard. Thesor, C. 78. 46. Return, Anacomna supposes that Hugh was proud of his nobility riches and power, LXP 288. The two last articles appear more equivocal, but an item, which 700 years ago was famous in the palace of Constantinople, attests the ancient dignity of the Capetian family of France. 47. Return, Will. Gemitacensis, L. 7. C. 7, P. 672. 673, in Camden, Normanisis. He pawned the duchy for one hundredth part of the present yearly revenue. Ten thousand marks may be equal to five hundred thousand livres, and Normandy annually yields fifty seven millions to the king, Necker, Administration Day. Finances, Tom. I. P. 287. 48. Return, his original letter to his wife is inserted in the Spicelegium of Dominican. Luke. Diacre, Tom. 4. And quoted in the Esprit de Croides, Tom. I. P. 63. 49. Return, Unius Enimduum. Trium seu quatuor opadorum. Dominos quis numerit? Quorum tanta foot copia, ut non vix totadem. Trojana obsidio cogis putatur. Ever the lively end. Interesting Guybert, p. 486. 50. Return, it is singular enough, that Raymond of Street. Giles, a second character in the genuine history of the Crusades, should shine as the first of heroes in the writings of the Greeks, on a common Alexiad, LX11, and the Arabians, Long Ruana, p. 129. 51. Return, Omnes de Burgundia, et Alvernia, et Visconia, E.T. Gotha, of Languedoc, Provinciales Appellabantur, Cedari Vero. Francigeni E.T. Hoc in Exercitu, Inter Hosts Autumn Franci. Dice Bonter. Raymond de Agiles, p. 144. 52. Return, the town of his birth, or first appanage, was. Consecrated to Saint Egidius, whose name, as early as the First Crusade, 
was corrupted by the French into street. Jill, or street. Giles. It is situate in the Iowan Languedoc, between Nisms and the Rhone, and still boasts a collegiate church of the foundation of Raymond, Melanges Tires d'un Grande Bibliothèque, Tom. XXXVIIP 51. 53. Return, the mother of Tancred was Emma, sister of the great. Robert Giscar, his father, the Marquis Odo the Good. It is singular enough that the family and country of so illustrious a person should be unknown, but Muratori reasonably conjectures that he was an Italian and perhaps of the race of the Marquises. Of Montferrat in Piedmont, Scripture Tom VP 281, 282. 54. Return, to gratify the childish vanity of the house of Este. Tasso has inserted in his poem, and in the First Crusade, a fabulous hero, the brave and amorous Rinaldo, X 75, 17. 66 to 94, he might borrow his name from a Rinaldo, with the Aquila. Bianca Estense, who vanquished, as the standard bearer of the Roman Church, the Emperor Frederick I, Storia Imperiali di Rico Baldo, in Muratori Scripture. Italian Tom. 9p 360. Ariosto. Orlando Furioso, 3. 30, but, 1. The distance of 60 years. Between the youth of the two Rinaldos destroys their identity. 2. The Storia Imperiali is a forgery of the Conti Boiardo, at the end of the XVTH century, Muratori, p. 281-289. 3. This Rinaldo and his exploits are not less chimerical than the hero of Tasso. Muratori, Anticita Estense, Tom IP 350. Chapter LVIII, The First Crusade, Part 3. Between the age of Charlemagne and that of the Crusades, a revolution had taken place among the Spaniards, the Normans, and the French, which was gradually extended to the rest of Europe. The service of the infantry was degraded to the plebeians, the cavalry formed the strength of the armies, and the honorable name of Miles, or soldier, was confined to the gentlemen fifty-five who served on horseback, and were invested with the character of knighthood. The dukes and counts, who had usurped the rights of sovereignty, divided the provinces among their faithful barons, the barons, distributed among their vassals the fiefs or benefices of their jurisdiction, and these military tenants, the peers of each other, and of their lord, composed the noble or equestrian order, which Disdain to conceive the peasant or burgher as of the same species with themselves. The dignity of their birth was preserved. By pure and equal alliances, their sons alone, who could produce four quarters or lines of ancestry without spot or reproach, might legally pretend to the honor of knighthood, but a valiant Plebeian was sometimes enriched and ennobled by the sword, and became the father of a new race. A single knight could impart, according to his judgment, the character which he received, and the warlike sovereigns of Europe derived more glory from this personal distinction than from the luster of their diadem. This ceremony of which some traces may be found in Tacitus and the Woods of Germany, 
56 was in its origin simple and profane, the candidate, after some previous trial, was invested with the sword and spurs, and his cheek or shoulder was touched with a slight blow, as an emblem of the last affront which it was lawful for him to endure. But superstition mingled in every public end private action of life, in the holy wars, it sanctified the profession of arms, and the order of chivalry was assimilated in its rights and privileges to the sacred orders of priesthood. The bath and white garment of the novice were an indecent copy of the regeneration of baptism, his sword, which he offered on the altar was blessed by the ministers of religion, his solemn reception was preceded by fasts and vigils, and he was created a knight in the name of God, of Street George, and of Street Michael the Archangel. He swore to accomplish the duties of his profession. An education, example, and the public opinion, were they inviolable guardians of his oath. As the champion of God and they. Ladies, I blush to unite such discordant names, he devoted himself to speak the truth, to maintain the right, to protect the distressed, to practice courtesy, a virtue less familiar to the ancients, to pursue the infidels, to despise the allurements of ease and safety, and to vindicate in every perilous adventure the honor of his character. The abuse of the same spirit provoked the illiterate knight to disdain the arts of industry and peace, to esteem himself the sole judge and avenger of his own injuries, and proudly to neglect the laws of civil society and military discipline. Yet the benefits of this institution, to refine the temper of barbarians, and to infuse some principles of faith, justice, and humanity, were strongly felt, and have been often observed. The asperity of national prejudice was softened, and the community of religion and arms spread a similar color and Generous emulation over the face of Christendom. Abroad in Enterprise and pilgrimage, at home in martial exercise, the Warriors of every country were perpetually associated, and Impartial taste must prefer a Gothic tournament to the Olympic Games of classic antiquity. 57 Instead of the naked spectacles which corrupted the manners of the Greeks, and banished from the stadium the virgins and matrons, the pompous decoration of the lists was crowned with the presence of chaste and high-born beauty, from whose hands the conqueror received the prize of his dexterity and courage, the skill and strength that were exerted in wrestling and boxing bear a distant and doubtful relation to the merit of a soldier, but the tournaments, as they were invented in France, and eagerly adopted both in the East and West, presented a lively image of the business of the field. The single combats, the general skirmish, the defense of a pass, or castle, were rehearsed as an actual service, and the contest, both in real and mimic war, was decided by the superior management of the horse and lance. The lance was the proper end. Peculiar weapon of the knight, his horse was of a large and heavy breed, but this charger, till he was roused by the approaching danger, was usually led by an attendant, and he quietly rode a pad or palfrey of a more easy pace. His helmet and sword, his greaves and buckler, 
it would be superfluous to describe, but I may remark, that, at the period of the Crusades, the armor was less ponderous than in later times, and that, instead of a massy cuirass, his breast was defended by a hauberk or coat of mail. When their long lances were fixed in the rest, the warriors furiously spurred their horses against the foe, and the light cavalry of the Turks and Arabs could seldom stand against the direct and impetuous weight of their charge. Each knight was attended to the field by his faithful squire, a youth of equal birth and similar hopes, he was followed by his archers and men at arms, and four, or five, or six soldiers were computed as the furniture of a complete lance. In the expeditions to the neighboring kingdoms or the Holy Land, the duties of the feudal Tenure no longer subsisted, the voluntary service of the knights and their followers were either prompted by zeal or attachment, or purchased with rewards and promises, and the numbers of each squadron were measured by the power, the wealth and the fame, of each independent chieftain. They were distinguished by his banner, his armorial coat, and his cry of war, and the most ancient families of Europe must seek in these achievements the origin and proof of their nobility. In this rapid portrait of chivalry I have been urged to anticipate on the story of the Crusades, at once an effect and a cause, of this memorable institution. 58 55. Return, of the words gentiles, gentilhomme, gentlemen, 2. Etymologies are produced, 1. From the barbarians of the 5th century, the soldiers, and at length the conquerors of the Roman Empire, who were vain of their foreign nobility, and 2. From the sense of the civilians, who consider gentiles as synonymous with Ingenuus. Selden inclines to the first but the latter is more pure, as well as probable. 56. Return, Framius Cutope Juvenum Ornant. Tacitus, Germania. C. 13. 57. Return, The Athletic Exercises, particularly the Caestus and Pancratium, were condemned by Lycurgus, Philippoamen, and Galen, a lawgiver, a general, and a physician. Against their authority and reasons, the reader may weigh the apology of Lucian, in the character of Solon. See West on the Olympic Games. In his Pinder, Vol. 2 p. 86 to 96, 243 to 248. 58. Return, on the curious subjects of knighthood. Knight's service, nobility, arms, cry of war, banners, and tournaments, an ample fund of information may be sought in. Selden, Opera, Tom, 3 Part I, Titles of Honor. Part 2 C. 1. 3, 5, 8, Duckenge, Gloss. Latin. Tom. 4 P. 398 to 412, and C. Dissertation Sir Joinvili, I 6 XII P. 127 to 142, P. 161 to 222. And M. D. Street. Palais, Memoirs sur la Chevalerie. Such were the troops, and such the leaders, who assumed the cross. For the deliverance of the Holy Sepulchre. As soon as they were. Relieved by the absence of the plebeian multitude, they. Encouraged each other, 
by interviews and messages, to accomplish their vow, and hasten their departure. Their wives and sisters were desirous of partaking the danger and merit of the pilgrimage, their portable treasures were conveyed in bars of silver and gold, and the princes and barons were attended by their equipage of hounds and hawks to amuse their leisure and to supply their table. The difficulty of procuring subsistence for so many myriads of men and horses engaged them to separate their forces, their choice or situation determined the road, and it was agreed to meet in the neighborhood of Constantinople, and from thence to begin their operations against the Turks. From the banks of the Meuse and the Moselle, Godfrey of Bouillon followed the direct way of Germany, Hungary and Bulgaria, and, as long as he exercised the sole command every step afforded some proof of his prudence and virtue. On the confines of Hungary he was stopped three weeks by a Christian people, to whom the name, or at least the abuse, of the cross was justly odious. The Hungarians still smarted with the wounds which they had received. From the first pilgrims, in their turn they had abused the right of defense and retaliation, and they had reason to apprehend a severe revenge from a hero of the same nation, and who was engaged in the same cause. But, after weighing the motives and the events, the virtuous duke was content to pity the crimes and misfortunes of his worthless brethren, and his twelve deputies. The messengers of peace, requested in his name a free passage and an equal market. To remove their suspicions, Godfrey trusted himself, and afterwards his brother, to the faith of Karl Oman. 581 King of Hungary, who treated them with a simple but hospitable entertainment, the treaty was sanctified by their common gospel, and a proclamation, under pain of death, restrained the animosity and license of the Latin soldiers. From Austria to Belgrade, they traversed the plains of Hungary without enduring or offering an injury, and the proximity of Karl Oman, who hovered on their flanks with his numerous cavalry, was a precaution not less useful for their safety than for his own. They reached the banks of the Save, and no sooner had they passed the river, than the King of Hungary restored the hostages and saluted their departure with the fairest wishes for the success of their enterprise. With the same conduct and discipline, Godfrey pervaded the woods of Bulgaria and the frontiers of Thrace, and might congratulate himself that he had almost reached the first term of his pilgrimage, without drawing his sword against a Christian adversary. After an easy end, pleasant journey through Lombardy, from Turin to Aquileia, Raymond and his provincials marched forty days through the savage country of Dalmatia 59 and Sclavonia. The weather was a perpetual fog, the land was mountainous and desolate, the natives were either fugitive or hostile, loose in their religion and government, they refused to furnish provisions or guides, murdered the stragglers, and exercised by night and day the vigilance of the count, who derived more security from the punishment of some captive robbers than from his interview and treaty with the prince of Skadra. 60 His march between Durazzo and Constantinople was harassed, without being stopped, by the 
peasants and soldiers of the Greek emperor, and the same feint. An ambiguous hostility was prepared for the remaining chiefs, who passed the Adriatic from the coast of Italy. Bohemond had arms and vessels and foresight and discipline, and his name was not forgotten in the provinces of Epirus and Thessaly. Whatever obstacles he encountered were surmounted by his military conduct and the valor of Tancred, and if the Norman prince affected to spare the Greeks, he gorged his soldiers with the full plunder of an heretical castle. 61 The nobles of France pressed forwards with the vain and thoughtless ardor of which their nation has been sometimes accused. From the Alps to Apulia the march of Hugh the Great, of the two Roberts, and of Stephen of Chartres, through a wealthy country, and amidst the applauding Catholics, was a devout or triumphant progress, they kissed the feet of the Roman Pontiff, and the Golden Standard of Street. Peter was delivered to the brother of the French monarch. 62 But in this visit of piety and pleasure, they neglected to secure the season, and the means of their embarkation, the winter was insensibly lost, there. Troops were scattered and corrupted in the towns of Italy. They separately accomplished their passage, regardless of safety or dignity, and within nine months from the Feast of the Assumption, the day appointed by Urban, all the Latin princes had reached Constantinople. But the Count of Vermandois was produced as a captive, his foremost vessels were scattered by a tempest, and his person, against the law of nations, was detained by the lieutenants of Alexius. Yet the arrival of Hugh had been Announced by four and twenty knights in golden armor, who commanded the emperor to revere the general of the Latin Christians, the brother of the king of kings. 63631 581 Return, Karl Oman, or Kalmany, demanded the brother of Godfrey as hostage, but Count Baldwin refused the humiliating submission. Godfrey shamed him into this sacrifice for the common good by offering to surrender himself Wilkin, Vol. I. P. 104 M. 59, Return, the Familii Dalmatici of Ducange are meager and imperfect, the national historians are recent and fabulous, the Greeks remote and careless. In the year 1104 Coloman reduced the Maritime country as far as Tra and Saloma, Catona, History Criticism. Tom. 3 p. 195-207. 60. Return, Scadras appears in Livy as the capital and fortress. Of Gentius, king of the Illyrians, Arx Munitissima, afterwards a Roman colony, Celerius, Tom I.P. 393, 394. It is now called Iscodar, or Scutari, Danville, Geography Ancienne, Tom I.P. 164, the Sangiac, now a Pasha, of Scutari, or Skendir, was the Aedith under the Beglerbeg of Romania and furnished 600 soldiers on a revenue of 78,787 rix dollars, Marsigli, Stato. Militare del Imperio Ottomano, p. 128. 61, return, in Pelagonia Castrum Hereticum. Spoliatum cum. Suis habitatoribus igni 
Nec ideis injuria contigit. Kia alorum detestabilis sir mo et cancer sir bat, yamk. Circumjacence regione suo provo dogmat fi davre, Robert. Monday p. 36, 37. After coolly relating the fact, the Archbishop. Baldrick adds, as a praise, omnes si quidem illi viators, judeos. Hereticos, saracenos equaliter habent excesses, quos omnes. Appellant inimicos dei, p. 92. 62, return, Alexiad LXP 288. 63, return, this oriental pomp is extravagant in account of Vermandoas, but the patriot Duckenge repeats with much complacency. Not at Alexiad P. 352, 353. Dessert. XXVII, Sir Joinville, P. 315, The Passages of Matthew Paris, A.D. 1254, and Fro Vol. 4 p. 201, which style the King of France Rex Regum, and Chef de Tout les Rois Chrétiens. 631, Return, Hugh was taken at Durazzo, and sent by land to Constantinople Wilkin M. In some oriental tale I have read the fable of a shepherd, who was ruined by the accomplishment of his own wishes, he had prayed for water, the Ganges was turned into his grounds, and his flock and cottage were swept away by the inundation. Such was the fortune, or at least the apprehension of the Greek emperor. Alexius Comnus whose name has already appeared in this history, and whose conduct is so differently represented by his daughter Anne, 64 and by the Latin writers, 65 in the Council of Placentia, his ambassadors had solicited a moderate succor, perhaps of 10,000 soldiers, but he was astonished by the Approach of so many potent chiefs and fanatic nations. The Emperor fluctuated between hope and fear, between timidity and courage, but in the crooked policy which he mistook for wisdom, I cannot believe, I cannot discern, that he maliciously conspired against the life or honor of the French heroes. The promiscuous Multitudes of Peter the Hermit were savage beasts, alike destitute of humanity and reason, nor was it possible for Alexius to prevent or deplore their destruction. The troops of Godfrey and his peers were less contemptible, but not less suspicious, to the Greek emperor. Their motives might be pure and pious, but he was equally alarmed by his knowledge of the ambitious Bohemond. 651 and his ignorance of the Transalpine chiefs, the courage of the French was blind and headstrong, they might be tempted by the luxury and wealth of Greece, and elated by the view and opinion of their invincible strength, and Jerusalem might be forgotten in the prospect of Constantinople. After a long march and painful abstinence, the troops of Godfrey encamped in the plains of Thrace, they heard with indignation, that their brother, the Count of Vermandois, was imprisoned by the Greeks, and their reluctant duke was compelled to indulge them in some freedom of retaliation and rapine. They were appeased by the submission of Alexius, he promised to supply their camp, and as they refused, in the midst of winter, to pass the Bosphorus, their quarters were assigned among the gardens and palaces on the shores of that 
narrow sea. But an incurable jealousy still rankled in the minds of the two nations, who despised each other as slaves and barbarians. Ignorance is the ground of suspicion, and suspicion was inflamed into daily provocations, prejudice is blind, hunger is deaf, and Alexius is accused of a design to starve or assault. The Latins in a dangerous post, on all sides encompassed with the waters. 66 Godfrey sounded his trumpets, burst the net, overspread the plain, and insulted the suburbs, but the gates of Constantinople were strongly fortified, the ramparts were lined with archers, and, after a doubtful conflict, both parties listened to the voice of peace and religion. The gifts and promises of the emperor insensibly soothed the fierce spirit of the western strangers, as a Christian warrior, he rekindled their zeal for the prosecution of their holy enterprise, which he engaged to second with his troops and treasures. On the return of spring, Godfrey was persuaded to occupy a pleasant and plentiful camp in Asia, and no sooner had he passed the Bosphorus, than the Greek vessels were suddenly recalled to the opposite shore. They same policy was repeated with the succeeding chiefs, who were swayed by the example, and weakened by the departure, of their foremost companions. By his skill and diligence, Alexius prevented the union of any two of the confederate armies at the same moment under the walls of Constantinople, and before they Feast of the Pentecost Not a Latin pilgrim was left on the coast of Europe. 64. Return, Anacomna was born the 1st of December, A.D. 1083, Indictian 7, Alexiad L6 p. 166, 167. At 13. The time of the First Crusade, she was Nubal, and perhaps married to the younger nice Forus Brian News, whom she fondly styles, LXP 295-296. Some moderns have imagined that her enmity to Bohemond was the fruit of disappointed love. In the transactions of Constantinople and Nice, her partial accounts Alex LX 11 P 283 to 317 may be opposed to the partiality of the Latins, but in their subsequent exploits she is brief and ignorant. 65 Return in their views of the character and conduct of Alexius, Maimbarg has favored the Catholic Franks and Voltaire has been partial to the schismatic Greeks. The prejudice of a philosopher is less excusable than that of a Jesuit. 651, Return, Wilkin quotes a remarkable passage of William of Malmesbury as to the secret motives of Urban and of Bohemond in urging the crusade. Illud repositius propositum non eda. Volgabater, quat bomundi concilio, pin totum europam in Asiaticam expeditionum moverit, ut in ton totum ultu omnium. Provinciarum facil ober atis auxiliaribus, et urbanus romum et. Boemundus illyricum et Macedonium pervade rent. Nam is terris et. Quid quid praetiri ad oratio usqui ad Thessalonicam. Protenditor, Giscardus Pater, Super Alexium Acquisirat, Idaerco. Illos Boemundus suo jury comptir clamit abat, in ops her de Apolii, 
Quam genitor Rogerio, Minori Filio della Gavre. Wilkin. Vol. 2p 313m. 66, Return, Between the Black Sea, the Bosphorus, and the River. Barb Yss, which is deep in summer, and runs 15 miles through. A flat meadow. Its communication with Europe and Constantinople is by the stone bridge of the Black Erno, which in successive ages was restored by Justinian and Basil, Julius de Bosforo. Thracio, L. 2. C. 3. Ducanjo, P. Christiana, L. V. C. 2, P. 179. The same arms which threatened Europe might deliver Asia, and repel the Turks from the neighboring shores of the Bosphorus and Hellespont. The fair provinces from Nice to Antioch were they recent patrimony of the Roman Emperor, and his ancient end. Perpetual claim still embraced the kingdoms of Syria and Egypt. In his enthusiasm, Alexius indulged, or affected, the ambitious hope of leading his new allies to subvert the thrones of the East, but the calmer dictates of reason and temper dissuaded him from exposing his royal person to the faith of unknown and lawless barbarians. His prudence, or his pride, was content with extorting from the French princes an oath of homage and fidelity, and a solemn promise, that they would either restore, or hold, their Asiatic conquests as the humble and loyal vassals of the Roman Empire. Their independent spirit was fired at the mention of this foreign and voluntary servitude, they successively yielded to the dexterous application of gifts and flattery, and the first proselytes became the most eloquent and effectual missionaries to multiply the companions of their shame. The pride of Hugh of Vermandois was soothed by the honors of his captivity, and in the brother of the French king. The example of submission was prevalent and weighty. In the mind of Godfrey of Bouillon every human consideration was subordinate to the glory of God and the success of the crusade. He had firmly resisted the temptations of Bohemond and Raymond, who urged the attack and conquest of Constantinople. Alexius esteemed his virtues, deservedly named him the champion of the empire, and dignified his homage with the filial name and the rights of adoption. 67 The hateful Bohemond was received as a true and ancient ally, and if the emperor reminded him of former hostilities, it was only to praise the valor that he had displayed, and the glory that he had acquired, in the fields of Durazzo and Larissa. The son of Giscar was lodged and entertained, and served with imperial pomp, one day, as he passed. Through the gallery of the palace, a door was carelessly left, open to expose a pile of gold and silver, of silk and gems, of curious and costly furniture, that was heaped, in seeming disorder, from the floor to the roof of the chamber. What conquests, exclaimed the ambitious miser, might not be achieved by the possession of such a treasure? It is your own, replied a Greek attendant, who watched the motions of his soul, and Bohemond, after some hesitation, condescended to accept this magnificent present. The Norman was flattered by the assurance of an independent principality, and Alexius alluded, rather than denied, 
his daring demand of the office of great domestic, or general of the East. The two Roberts, the son of the conqueror of England, and the kinsman of three queens, sixty-eight bowed in their turn. Before the Byzantine throne, a private letter of Stephen of Chartres attests his admiration of the emperor, the most excellent and liberal of men, who taught him to believe that he was a favorite, and promised to educate and establish his youngest son. In his southern province, the Count of Street, Giles, and thou Laos faintly recognized the supremacy of the King of France, a prince of a foreign nation and language. At the head of a hundred thousand men, he declared that he was the soldier and servant of Christ alone, and that the Greek might be satisfied with an equal treaty of alliance and friendship. His obstinate Resistance enhanced the value and the price of his submission. And he shone, says the Princess Anne, among the barbarians, as the sun amidst the stars of heaven. His disgust of the noise and insolence of the French, his suspicions of the designs of Bohemond, the emperor imparted to his faithful Raymond, and that aged statesmen might clearly discern, that however false in friendship, he was sincere in his enmity. 69 The spirit of chivalry was last subdued in the person of Tancred, and none could deem themselves dishonored by the imitation of that gallant knight. He disdained the gold and flattery of the Greek monarch assaulted in his presence an insolent patrician, escaped to Asia, in the habit of a private soldier, and yielded with a sigh to the authority of Bohemond, and the interest of the Christian cause. The best and most ostensible reason was the impossibility of passing the sea and accomplishing their vow, without the license, and the vessels of Alexius, but they cherished a secret hope that as soon as they trod the continent of Asia, their swords would obliterate their shame and dissolve the engagement, which on his side might not be very faithfully performed. The ceremony of their homage was grateful to a people who had long since considered pride as the substitute of power. High on his throne, the emperor sat mute and immovable, his majesty was adored by the Latin princes, and they submitted to kiss either his feet or his knees, an indignity which their own writers are ashamed to confess and unable to deny. 70. 67. Return, there are two sorts of adoption, the one by arms the other by introducing the son between the shirt and skin of his father. Dukhangisar Joinvili, Dissertations XXIIP 270, supposes Godfrey's adoption to have been of the latter sort. 68. Return, after his return, Robert of Flanders became the man of the King of England, for a pension of 400 marks. C. The first act in Reimer's Fedora. 69. Return, Sensit Vetus Regandi, Falsos in Amor, Odianon. Fingery. Tacit. 644. 70. Return, The proud historians of the Crusades slide end. Stumble over this humiliating step. Yet, since the heroes knelt to salute the emperor, as he sat motionless on his throne, it is clear that they must have kissed either his feet or knees. It is only singular that Anna should not have amply supplied the 
silence or ambiguity of the Latins. The abasement of their princes would have added a fine chapter to the ceremoniali ali. Byzantini Private or public interest suppressed the murmurs of the dukes and counts, but a French baron, he is supposed to be Robert of Paris 71 presumed to ascend the throne, and to place himself by the side of Alexius. The sage reproof of Baldwin provoked him to exclaim, in his barbarous idiom, who is this rustic, that keeps his seat, while so many valiant captains are standing round him. The emperor maintained his silence, dissembled his indignation, and questioned his interpreter concerning the meaning of the words, which he partly suspected from the universal language of gesture and countenance. Before the departure of the pilgrims, he endeavored to learn the name and condition of the audacious Baron. I am a Frenchman, replied Robert, of the purest end most ancient nobility of my country. All that I know is, that there is a church in my neighborhood, 72 the resort of those who are desirous of approving their valor in single combat. Till an enemy appears, they address their prayers to God and his saints. That church I have frequently visited, but never have I found an antagonist who dared to accept my defiance. Alexius dismissed the challenger with some prudent advice for his conduct in the Turkish warfare, and history repeats with pleasure this lively example of the manners of his age and country. 71. Return, he called himself, see Alexius, LXP 301. What? A title of noblesse of the 11th century, if anyone could now prove his inheritance. Honor relates, with visible pleasure, that the swelling barbarian was killed, or wounded, after fighting in the front in the Battle of Dorylium, L11 p. 317. This Circumstance may justify the suspicion of Dukange, not p. 362. That he was no other than Robert of Paris, of the district most peculiarly styled the Duchy or Island of France, Lyle d. France. 72. Return, with the same penetration, Dukange discovers his church to be that of street. Drosuas, or Drosen, of Swasa, Quem. Duello dimicaturi solent invocare, Pugilski ad memoriam edges. His tomb, per noctant imbcto's reddit, utet di burgundia et. Italia tali necessitate confugitor ad eum. Joan. Sari Bariensis. Epist. 139. The conquest of Asia was undertaken and achieved by Alexander. With 35,000 Macedonians and Greeks, 73 and his best. Hope was in the strength and discipline of his phalanx of infantry. The principal force of the Crusaders consisted in their cavalry, and when that force was mustered in the plains of Bithynia, the knights and their martial attendants on horseback amounted to 100,000 fighting men, completely armed with the helmet and coat of mail. The value of these soldiers deserved a strict and authentic account, and the flower of European chivalry might furnish, in a first effort, this formidable body of heavy horse. A part of the infantry might be enrolled for the service of scouts, pioneers, and archers, but 
the promiscuous crowd were lost in their own disorder, and we depend not on the eyes and knowledge, but on the belief and fancy, of a chaplain of Count Baldwin, 74 in the estimate of six hundred thousand pilgrims able to bear arms, besides the priests and monks, the women and children of the Latin camp. The reader starts, and before he is recovered from his surprise, I shall add, on the same testimony, that if all who took the cross had accomplished their vow, above six millions would have migrated from Europe to Asia. Under this oppression of faith, I derive some relief from a more sagacious and thinking writer, 75 who, after the same review of the cavalry, accuses the credulity of the priest of Chartres, and even doubts whether the Cisalpine regions, in the geography of a Frenchman, were sufficient to produce and pour forth such incredible multitudes. The coolest Skepticism will remember, that of these religious volunteers, great numbers never beheld Constantinople and Nice. Of enthusiasm, the influence is irregular and transient, many were detained at home by reason or cowardice, by poverty or weakness, and many were repulsed by the obstacles of the way, the more insuperable as they were unforeseen, to these ignorant fanatics. The savage countries of Hungary and Bulgaria were whitened with their bones. Their vanguard was cut in pieces by the Turkish Sultan, and the loss of the first adventure, by the sword, or climate, or fatigue, has already been stated at 300,000 men. Yet the myriads that survived, that marched, that pressed forwards on the holy pilgrimage, were a subject of astonishment to themselves and to the Greeks. The copious energy of her language sinks under the efforts of the Princess Anne, 76. The images of locusts, of leaves and flowers, of the sands of the sea or the stars of heaven, imperfectly represent what she had seen and heard, and the daughter of Alexius exclaims, that Europe was loosened from its foundations, and hurled against Asia. The ancient hosts of Darius and Xerxes labor under the same doubt of a vague and indefinite magnitude, but I am inclined to believe that a larger number has never been contained within the lines of a single camp, than at the siege of Nice, the first operation of the Latin princes. Their motives, their characters, and their arms, have been already displayed. Of their troops the most numerous portion were natives of France, the Low Countries, the banks of the Rhine, and Apulia, sent a powerful reinforcement. Some bands of adventurers were drawn from Spain, Lombardy, and England, 77 and from the distant bogs and mountains of Ireland or Scotland 78 issued some naked and savage fanatics, ferocious at home but unwarlike abroad. Had not superstition condemned the sacrilegious prudence of depriving the poorest or weakest Christian of the merit of the pilgrimage, the useless crowd, with mouths but without hands, might have been stationed in the Greek Empire, till their companions had opened and secured the way of the Lord. A small remnant of the pilgrims, who passed the Bosphorus, was permitted to visit the Holy Sepulchre. There, northern constitution was scorched by the rays, and infected by the vapors, of a Syrian sun. They consumed, with heedless 
prodigality, their stores of water and provision, their numbers. Exhausted the inland country, the sea was remote, the Greeks were unfriendly, and the Christians of every sect fled before they voracious and cruel rapine of their brethren. In the dire necessity of famine, they sometimes roasted and devoured the flesh of their infant or adult captives. Among the Turks and Saracens, the idolaters of Europe were rendered more odious by the name and reputation of cannibals, the spies, who introduced themselves into the kitchen of Bohemond, were shown several human bodies turning on the spit, and the artful Norman encouraged a report, which increased at the same time the abhorrence and the terror of the infidels. 79. 73. Return, there is some diversity on the numbers of his army. But no authority can be compared with that of Ptolemy, who states, It at five thousand horse and thirty thousand foot, see Usher's. Annals, p. 152. 74. Return, Fulcher. Carnoensis, p. 387. He enumerates. 19 nations of different names and languages, p. 389, but I do not clearly apprehend his difference between the Franci and Gali, Itali, and Apuli. Elsewhere, p. 385, he contemptuously brands the deserters. 75, return, Guybert, p. 556. Yet even his gentle opposition implies an immense multitude. By Urban II, in the fervor of his zeal, it is only rated at 300,000 pilgrims, Epist. 16. Consul. Tom. 12 p. 731. 76. Return, Alexius, LXP 283. 305. Her fastidious delicacy complains of their strange and inarticulate names, and indeed, there is scarcely one that she has not contrived to disfigure with the proud ignorance so dear and familiar to a polished people. I shall select only one example, Sangles, for the Count of Street. Giles. 77. Return, William of Malmesbury, who wrote about the year. 1130, has inserted in his history, L4P 130 to 154, a narrative of the First Crusade, but I wish that, instead of listening to the Tenya murmur which had passed the British Ocean, P 143, he had confined himself to the numbers, families, and adventures of his countrymen. I find in Dugdale, that an English Norman, Stephen Earl of Albemarle and Holderness, led the rear guard, with Duke Robert, at the Battle of Antioch, Baronage, Part I P. 61. 78. Return. Vidir Scott Orum Apud Se Ferociam Alias Imbellium. Cuneos, Guybert, p. 471, The Cruce Intectum and Hispita Claimus. May suit the Highlanders, but the Finibus Eulogenosis may rather apply to the Irish bogs. William of Malmesbury expressly mentions the Welsh and Scots, and C. L4P 133, who quitted, the former Vinay Shoram, the latter familiaritatum Pulicum. 79, return, this cannibal hunger, sometimes real, more frequently an artifice or a lie, may be found in Anacomna. Alexias, 
LXP 288, Guybert, P 546, Radolf. Katum, C. 97, The Stratagem is Related by the Author of the Gusta. Francorum, The Monk Robert Baldrick, and Raymond de Agiles, in The Siege and Famine of Antioch. Chapter LVIII, The First Crusade, Part 4 I have expiated with pleasure on the first steps of the Crusaders, as they paint the manners and character of Europe, but I shall abridge the tedious and uniform narrative of their blind achievements, which were performed by strength and are described by ignorance. From their first station in the neighborhood of Nicomedia, they advanced in successive divisions, past the contracted limit of the Greek Empire, opened a road through the hills, and commenced, by the siege of his capital, their pious warfare against the Turkish Sultan. His kingdom of Rum extended from the Hellespont to the confines of Syria, and barred the pilgrimage of Jerusalem, his name was Kilijarslan, or Solomon. Eighty of the race of Seljuk, and son of the first conqueror, and in the defense of a land which the Turks considered as their own, he deserved the praise of his enemies, by whom alone he is known to posterity. Yielding to the first impulse of the torrent, he deposited his family and treasure in Nice, retired to the mountains with fifty thousand horse, and twice descended to assault the camps or quarters of the Christian besiegers, which formed an imperfect circle of above six miles. The lofty end. Solid walls of Nice were covered by a deep ditch, and flanked by 370 towers, and on the verge of Christendom, the Moslems were trained in arms, and inflamed by religion. Before this city, the French princes occupied their stations, and prosecuted their attacks without correspondence or subordination, emulation prompted their valor, but their valor was sullied by cruelty, and their emulation degenerated into envy and civil discord. In the siege of Nice, the arts and engines of antiquity were employed by the Latins, the mine and the battering ram, the tortoise, and the belfry or movable turret. Artificial fire, and the catapult and ballast, the sling, and the crossbow for the casting of stones and darts. 81 In the space of seven weeks much labor and blood were expended, and some progress, especially by Count Raymond, was made on the side of the besiegers. But the Turks could protract their resistance and secure their escape, as long as they were masters of the Lake 82. Ascanius, which stretches several miles to the westward of the city. The means of conquest were supplied by the prudence and industry of Alexius, a great number of boats was transported on sledges from the sea to the lake, they were filled with the most dexterous of his archers, the flight of the sultana was intercepted, Nice was invested by land and water, and a Greek emissary persuaded the inhabitants to accept his master's protection, and to save themselves, by a timely surrender, from the rage of the savages of Europe. In the moment of victory, or at least of hope, the crusaders, thirsting for blood and plunder, were awed by the imperial banner that streamed from the citadel. 821 And Alexius guarded with jealous vigilance this important conquest. 
The murmurs of the chiefs were stifled by honor or interest, and after a halt of nine days, they directed their march towards Phrygia under the guidance of a Greek general, whom they suspected of a secret connivance with the Sultan. The consort and the principal servants of Solomon had been honorably restored without ransom, and the emperor's generosity to the miscreants 83 was interpreted as treason to the Christian cause. 80. Return, his Musulman appellation of Solomon is used by the Latins, and his character is highly embellished by Tasso. His Turkish name of Kilijarslan, A.H. 485-500, A.D. 1192-1206 C.D. Gienza's Tables, Tom I.P. 245, is employed by the Orientals, and with some corruption by the Greeks, but little more than his name can be found in the Mohammedan writers, who are dry and sulky on the subject of the First Crusade, D. Gienz. Tom 3p2 p10 to 30 asterisk note c note page 556 solomon and kilajarslan were father and son m 81 return on the fortifications engines and sieges of the middle ages see muratori antiquitat italii tom 2. Dessert. XXVIP 452-524. The Belfredus, from whence are. Belfry, was the movable tower of the ancients, Duckenge, Tom I. P. 608. 82. Return, I cannot forbear remarking the resemblance between. The siege and lake of Nice with the operations of Hernan Cortes. Before Mexico. See Dr. Robertson, History of America, LV. 821, Return, see Anacomna, M. 83, Return, Macreant, a word invented by the French crusaders. And confined in that language to its primitive sense. It should seem, that the zeal of our ancestors boiled higher, and that they branded every unbeliever as a rascal. A similar prejudice still lurks in the minds of many who think themselves Christians. Solomon was rather provoked than dismayed by the loss of his capital, he admonished his subjects and allies of this strange invasion of the western barbarians, the Turkish emirs obeyed the call of loyalty or religion, the Turkmen hordes encamped round his standard, and his whole force is loosely stated by the Christians at 200, or even 360 thousand horse. Yet he patiently waited till they had left behind them the sea and the Greek frontier, and hovering on the flanks, observed their careless and confident progress in two columns beyond the view of each other some miles before they could reach Dorylium in Phrygia, the left and least numerous division was surprised and attacked and almost oppressed by the Turkish cavalry 84 the heat of the weather, the clouds of arrows, and the barbarous onset, overwhelmed the crusaders, they lost their order and confidence, and the fainting fight was sustained by the personal valor, rather than by the military conduct, of Bohemond, Tancred, and Robert of Normandy. They were revived by the welcome banners of Duke Godfrey, who flew to their succor, with the Count of Vermandois, and 60,000 horse, and was followed by 
Raymond of Thalaus, the Bishop of Puy, and the remainder of the Sacred Army. Without a moment's pause, they formed in new order, and advanced to a second battle. They were received with equal resolution, and, in their common disdain for the unwarlike people of Greece and Asia, it was confessed on both sides, that they Turks and the Franks were the only nations entitled to the appellation of soldiers. 85 Their encounter was varied, and balanced by the contrast of arms and discipline, of the direct charge, and wheeling evolutions, of the couched lance, and the brandished javelin, of a weighty broadsword, and a crooked saber, of cumbrous armor, and thin flowing robes, and of the long tartar bow, and the arbalist or crossbow, a deadly weapon, yet unknown to the Orientals. 86 As long as the horses were fresh, and they quivers full, Solomon maintained the advantage of the day, and 4,000 Christians were pierced by the Turkish arrows. In the evening, swiftness yielded to strength, on either side, the numbers were equal or at least as great as any ground could hold, or any generals could manage, but in turning the hills, the last division of Raymond and his provincials was led, perhaps without design on the rear of an exhausted enemy, and the long contest was determined. Besides a nameless and unaccounted multitude, three thousand pagan knights were slain in the battle and pursuit, the camp of Solomon was pillaged, and in the variety of precious spoil, the curiosity of the Latins was amused with foreign arms and apparel, and the new aspect of dromedaries and camels. The importance of the victory was proved by the hasty retreat of the Sultan, reserving ten thousand guards of the relics of his army, Solomon evacuated the Kingdom of Rome, and hastened to implore the aid, and kindle the resentment, of his Eastern Brethren. In a march of five hundred miles, the Crusaders traversed the Lesser Asia, through a wasted land and deserted towns, without finding either a friend or an enemy. The Geographer 87 may trace the position of Dorylium, Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Archele, and Germanicia, and may compare those classic appellations with the modern names of Eskisher the Old City, Aksher the White City, Cogne, Erkley, and Mirage. As the pilgrims passed over a desert, where a draft of water is exchanged for silver, they were tormented by intolerable thirst. And on the banks of the first rivulet, their haste and intemperance were still more pernicious to the disorderly throng. They climbed with toil and danger the steep and slippery sides of Mount Taurus, many of the soldiers cast away their arms to secure their footsteps, and had not terror preceded their van, the long and trembling file might have been driven down the precipice by a handful of resolute enemies. Two of their most respectable chiefs, the Duke of Lorraine and the Count of Thalaus, were carried in litters, Raymond was raised, as it is said by miracle, from a hopeless malady, and Godfrey had been torn by a bear, as he pursued that rough and perilous chase in the mountains of Pisidia. 84. Return, Baronius has produced a very doubtful letter to his brother Roger, A.D. 1098, number 15. The enemies consisted of Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, 
be it so. The first attack was Kum. Nostro Incomodo, true and tender. But why God free of bullion? N. Hugh Brothers. Tancred is styled Phileas, of whom? Certainly. Not of Roger, nor of Bohemond. 85. Return, Verum to Mendicunt Sese de Francorum Generatione. Et qui nullis homo naturaliter debet se miles nisi France et. Tersi, Gusta Francorum, p. 7. The same community of blood and. Valor is attested by Archbishop Baldrick, p. 99. 86. Return, Ballista, Balestra, Arbalister. C. Muratori, Antique. Tom. 2 p. 517 to 524. Duckenge, Gloss. Latin. Tom. I. P. 531, 532. In the time of Anacomna, this weapon, which she describes, under the name of Isangra, was unknown in the East. Lxp. 291. By a humane inconsistency, the Pope strove to prohibit it. In Christian Wars. 87. Return, the curious reader may compare the classic learning of Celerius and the geographical science of Danville. William. Of Tyre is the only historian of the Crusades who has any knowledge of antiquity and M. Otter trod almost in the footsteps of the Franks from Constantinople to Antioch, voyage in Turkey. E.T. in purse, Tom. I.P. 35-88, asterisk note, the journey of Colonel. MacDonald Kinnear in Asia Minor throws considerable light on the geography of this march of the Crusaders M. To improve the general consternation, the cousin of Bohemond and the brother of Godfrey were detached from the main army with their respective squadrons of five, and of seven, hundred knights. They overran in a rapid career the hills and sea coast of Cilicia, from Cogna to the Syrian gates, the Norman standard was first planted on the walls of Tarsus and Malmistra, but the proud injustice of Baldwin at length provoked the patient and generous Italian, and they turned their consecrated swords against each other in a private and profane quarrel. Honor was the motive, and fame the reward, of Tancred, but fortune smiled on the more selfish enterprise of his rival. 88 He was called to the assistance of a Greek or Armenian tyrant, who had been suffered under the Turkish yoke to reign over the Christians of Edessa. Baldwin accepted the character of his son and champion. But no sooner was he introduced into the city, than he inflamed the people to the massacre of his father, occupied the throne and treasure, extended his conquests over the hills of Armenia and the plain of Mesopotamia, and founded the first principality of the Franks or Latins, which subsisted fifty-four years beyond the Euphrates. 89. 88. Return. This detached conquest of Edessa is best represented by Fulturius Carnoensis, or of Chartres, in the collections of Bonger C.S. Duchesne, and Martinet, the valiant chaplain of Count Baldwin, Esprit de Croates, Tom I.P. 13. 14. In the disputes of that prince with Tancred, his partiality is encountered by the partiality of Radolfus Cato Menses, the soldier and historian of the gallant Marquis. 89. Return, 
C. D. Geens, History de Huns, Tom I. P. 456. Before the Franks could enter Syria, the summer, and even the autumn, were completely wasted, the siege of Antioch, or the separation and repose of the army during the winter season, was strongly debated in their council, the love of arms and the holy. Sepulchre urged them to advance, and reason perhaps was on the side of resolution, since every hour of delay abates the fame and force of the invader, and multiplies the resources of defensive war. The capital of Syria was protected by the river Orontes, and the Iron Bridge, 891 of nine arches, derives its name from the massy gates of the two towers which are constructed at either end. They were opened by the sword of the Duke of Normandy, his victory gave entrance to 300,000 crusaders, an account which may allow some scope for losses and desertion, but which clearly detects much exaggeration in the review of Nice. In the description of Antioch, 90 it is not easy to define a middle term between her ancient magnificence, under the successors of Alexander and Augustus, and the modern aspect of Turkish desolation. The Tetrapolis, or four cities, if they retained their name and position, must have left a large vacuity in a circumference of twelve miles, and that measure, as well as the number of four hundred towers, are not perfectly consistent with the five gates, so often mentioned in the history of the siege. Yet Antioch must have still flourished as a great and populous capital. At the head of the Turkish emirs, Bahijan, a veteran chief, commanded in the place, his garrison was composed of six or seven thousand horse, and fifteen or twenty thousand foot, one hundred thousand Moslems are said to have fallen by the sword, and their numbers were probably inferior to the Greeks, Armenians, and Syrians, who had been no more than fourteen years. The slaves of the house of Seljuk from the remains of a solid and stately wall, it appears to have arisen to the height of three score feet in the valleys, and wherever less art and labor had been applied, the ground was supposed to be defended by the river, the morass, and the mountains. Notwithstanding these fortifications, the city had been repeatedly taken by the Persians, the Arabs, the Greeks, and the Turks, so large a circuit must have yielded many pervious points of attack, and in a siege that was formed about the middle of October, the vigor of the execution could alone justify the boldness of the attempt. Whatever strength and valor could perform in the field was abundantly discharged by the champions of the cross, in the frequent occasions of sallies, of forage, of the attack and defense of convoys, they were often victorious, and we can only complain, that their exploits are sometimes enlarged beyond the scale of probability and truth. The sword of Godfrey 91 divided a Turk from the shoulder to the haunch, and one half of the infidel fell to the ground, while the other was transported by his horse to the city gate. As Robert of Normandy rode against his antagonist, I devote thy head, he piously exclaimed, to the demons of hell, and that head was instantly cloven to the breast by the resistless stroke of his descending falchion. But, 
the reality or the report of such gigantic prowess 92 must have taught the Muslims to keep within their walls, and against those walls of earth or stone, the sword and the lance were unavailing weapons. In the slow and successive labors of a siege, the crusaders were supine and ignorant, without skill to contrive, or money to purchase, or industry to use, the artificial engines and implements of assault. In the conquest of Nice, they had been powerfully assisted by the wealth and knowledge of the Greek emperor, his absence was poorly supplied by some Genoese and Pisan vessels, that were attracted by religion or trade to the coast of Syria, the stores were scanty, the return precarious, and the communication difficult and dangerous. Indolence or weakness had prevented the Franks from investing the entire circuit, and the perpetual freedom of two gates relieved the wants and recruited the garrison of the city. At the end of seven months, after the ruin of their cavalry, and an enormous loss by famine, desertion, and fatigue, the progress of the crusaders was imperceptible, and their success remote, if the Latin Ulysses the artful and ambitious Bohemond, had not employed the arms of cunning and deceit. The Christians of Antioch were numerous and discontented, Firaus, a Syrian renegado, had acquired the favor of the emir and the command of three towers, and the merit of his repentance disguised to the Latins, and perhaps to himself, they Foul design of perfidy and treason. A secret correspondence, for their mutual interest, was soon established between Firaus and the Prince of Taranto, and Bohemond declared in the Council of the Chiefs, that he could deliver the city into their hands. 921. But he claimed the sovereignty of Antioch as the reward of his service, and the proposal which had been rejected by the envy, was at length extorted from the distress of his equals. The nocturnal surprise was executed by the French and Norman princes, who ascended in person the scaling ladders that were thrown from the walls, their new proselyte, after the murder of his two scrupulous brother, embraced and introduced the servants of Christ, the army rushed through the gates, and the Moslems soon found, that although mercy was hopeless, resistance was impotent. But the citadel still refused to surrender, and the victims themselves were speedily encompassed and besieged by the innumerable forces of Kerboga, prince of Mosul, who, with 28 Turkish emirs, advanced to the deliverance of Antioch. Five and twenty days the Christians spent on the verge of destruction, and the proud lieutenant of the caliph and the sultan left them only the choice of servitude or death. 93 In this extremity they collected the relics of their strength, sallied from the town, and in a single memorable day, annihilated or dispersed the host of Turks and Arabians, which they might safely report to have consisted of 600,000 men. 94. Their supernatural allies I shall proceed to consider, the human causes of the victory of Antioch were the fearless despair of the Franks, and the surprise, the discord, perhaps the errors, of their unskillful and presumptuous adversaries. The battle is described with as much disorder as it was fought, but we may observe the tent of Kerboga, 
a movable and spacious palace. Enriched with the luxury of Asia, and capable of holding above 2,000 persons, we may distinguish his 3,000 guards, who were cased, the horse as well as the men, in complete steel. 891, return, this bridge was over the Ifrin, not the Orontes. At a distance of three leagues from Antioch. C. Wilkin, Vol. I. P. 172 M. 90, Return, for Antioch, C. Pocock, Description of the East. Vol. 2 P. I. P. 188 to 193, Otter, Voyage in Turkey, and C. Tom. I. P. 81, and C. The Turkish geographer, in Otter's notes, they Index Geographicus of Schultens, ad calcium bohadan. VIT. Saladin, and a bullfeather, tabula serii, p. 115, 116, ver. Reisky. 91, return, on some elevat, yumquia sinistra part scapularum. Tanta virtut interseat, ut quat pectus medium disjunxit spinam et. Vitalia inter pit, et sic lubricus ensis super cruce dextrum. Integer exivit, sic caput inte grum cum dextra part corporis. Immersit gurgite, partem quae equo presi debat remisit. Civitati, Robert. Monday p. 50. Cudgis and Strajectus, Turcus Duo. Factus est tersi, ut inferior altar in urbum equiterat, altar. Arsidanens in fluminateret, Radulf. Catum. C. 53, p. 304. Yet he justifies the deed by the stupendis viribus of Godfrey and William of Tyre covers it by obstipuit populus facti novitate. Mirabilis, LVC 6, p. 701. Yet it must not have appeared incredible to the knights of that age. 92, return, see the exploits of Robert, Raymond, and the modest Tancred who imposed silence on his squire, Randolph. Catum. C. 53. 921. Return, see the interesting extract from Camaldon's History of Aleppo in Wilkin, Preface to Vol. 2 p. 36. Firaus. Or Aitzerad, the breastplate maker, had been pillaged and put to the torture by Baggy Sejan. The Prince of Antioch M. 93, return, after mentioning the distress and humble petition. Of the Franks, a bull Faragius adds the haughty reply of Cod Buka. Or Kerboga, non evasory estus nisi per gladium, dynast p. 242. 94, return, in describing the host of Kerboga, most of the Latin historians, the author of the Gusta, p. 17, Robert Monachus, p. 56, Baldrick, p. 111, Fulgurius Carnoensis, p. 392, Guybert, p. 512, William of Tyre, L6 C3, p. 714. Bernard Thesaurarius, C. 39, P. 695, are content with the vague expressions of infinita multitudo, immensum agmen, enumerae, copii or gentes, which correspond with anacomna, Alexias. L. 11. P. 318 to 320. The numbers of the Turks are fixed by Albert. 
Aquensis at 200,000, L, 4C10, P242, and by Radulfius. Cato Menses at 400,000 horse, C72, P309. In the eventful period of the siege and defense of Antioch, they Crusaders were alternately exalted by victory or sunk in despair. Either swelled with plenty or emaciated with hunger. A speculative reasoner might suppose that their faith had a strong and serious influence on their practice, and that the soldiers of the cross, the deliverers of the Holy Sepulchre, prepared themselves by a sober and virtuous life for the daily contemplation of martyrdom. Experience blows away this charitable illusion, and seldom does the history of profane war display such scenes of intemperance and prostitution as were exhibited under the walls of Antioch. The grove of Daphne no longer flourished. But the Syrian air was still impregnated with the same vices, they Christians were seduced by every temptation 95 that nature either prompts or reprobates, the authority of the chiefs was despised. And sermons and edicts were alike fruitless against those scandalous disorders, not less pernicious to military discipline than repugnant to evangelic purity. In the first days of the Siege in the possession of Antioch, the Franks consumed with wanton and thoughtless prodigality the frugal subsistence of weeks and months, the desolate country no longer yielded a supply, and from that country they were at length excluded by the arms of the besieging Turks. Disease, the faithful companion of want, was envenomed by the rains of the winter, the summer heats, unwholesome food, and the close imprisonment of multitudes. The pictures of famine and pestilence are always the same, and always disgustful, and our imagination may suggest the nature of their sufferings and their resources. The remains of treasure or spoil were eagerly lavished in the purchase of the vilest nourishment. And dreadful must have been the calamities of the poor, since after paying three marks of silver for a goat and fifteen for a lean camel, ninety-six the Count of Flanders was reduced to beg a dinner and Duke Godfrey to borrow a horse. Sixty thousand horse had been reviewed in the camp, before the end of the siege they were diminished to two thousand, and scarcely two hundred fit for service could be mustered on the day of battle. Weakness of body and terror of mind extinguished the ardent enthusiasm of the pilgrims, and every motive of honor and religion was subdued by the desire of life. Ninety-seven among the chiefs, Three heroes may be found without fear or reproach, Godfrey of Bouillon was supported by his magnanimous piety, Bohemond by ambition and interest, and Tancred declared, in the true spirit of chivalry, that as long as he was at the head of forty knights, he would never relinquish the enterprise of Palestine. But the Count of Thalaus and Provence was suspected of a voluntary indisposition, the Duke of Normandy was recalled from the seashore by the censures of the Church, Hugh the Great, though he led the vanguard of the battle, embraced an ambiguous opportunity of returning to France and Stephen, Count of Chartres, basely deserted the standard which he bore, and the council in which he presided. The soldiers were discouraged by the flight of William, Viscount of Mellon, surnamed 
the carpenter, from the weighty strokes of his axe, and they saints were scandalized by the fall 971 of Peter the Hermit, who, after arming Europe against Asia, attempted to escape from the penance of a necessary fast of the multitude of recreant warriors, the names, says an historian, are blotted from the book of life, and the opprobrious epithet of the rope dancers was applied to the deserters who dropped in the night from the walls of Antioch. The Emperor Alexius, 98 who seemed to advance to the succor of the Latins, was dismayed by the assurance of their hopeless condition. They expected their fate in silent despair. Oaths and punishments were tried without effect, and to rouse the soldiers to the defense of the walls, it was found necessary to set fire to their quarters. 95. Return, see the tragic and scandalous fate of an archdeacon of royal birth, who was slain by the Turks as he reposed in an orchard, playing at dice with a Syrian concubine. 96. Return, the value of an ox rose from five solid I, 15 shillings, at Christmas to two marks, four pounds, and afterwards much higher, a kid or lamb, from one shilling to eighteen of our present money, in the second famine, a loaf of bread, or the head of an animal, sold for a piece of gold. More examples might be produced, but it is the ordinary, not the extraordinary, prices, that deserve the notice of the philosopher. 97. Return, Ali Multi, Quorum Nomina Nonten Mus, Kia, Delita. De Libro Vitae, Presenti Operi Non Sunt Inzerenda, Will. Tier. L. 6. C. 5, P. 715. Guybert, P. 518, 523, Attempts to Excuse. Hugh the Great, and even Stephen of Chartres. 971, Return, Peter fell during the siege, he went afterwards on. An embassy to Kerboga Wilkin. Vol. I. P. 217 M. 98, Return, see the progress of the crusade, the retreat of. Alexius, the victory of Antioch and the conquest of Jerusalem. In the Alexiad, L11. p. 317-327. Anna was so prone to exaggeration, that she magnifies the exploits of the Latins. For their salvation and victory, they were indebted to the same fanaticism which had led them to the brink of ruin. In such a cause, and in such an army, visions, prophecies, and miracles were frequent and familiar. In the distress of Antioch, they were repeated with unusual energy and success, Street. Ambrose had assured a pious ecclesiastic that two years of trial must precede the season of deliverance and grace, the deserters were stopped by the presence and reproaches of Christ himself, the dead had promised to arise and combat with their brethren, the virgin had obtained the pardon of their sins, and their confidence was revived by a visible sign, the seasonable and splendid discovery of the Holy Lance. The policy of their chiefs has on this occasion been admired, and might surely be excused, but a pious fraud is seldom produced by the cool conspiracy of many persons. And a voluntary impostor might depend on the support of the wise.
and the credulity of the people of the diocese of Marseilles. There was a priest of low cunning and loose manners, and his name was Peter Bartholemy. He presented himself at the door of the council chamber, to disclose an apparition of street. Andrew, which had been thrice reiterated in his sleep with a dreadful menace. If he presumed to suppress the commands of heaven. At Antioch, said the apostle, in the church of my brother street. Peter, near the high altar, is concealed the steel head of the lance that pierced the sight of our Redeemer. In three days that instrument of eternal, and now of temporal, salvation, will be manifested to his disciples. Search, and ye shall find, bear it aloft in battle, and that mystic weapon shall penetrate the souls of the miscreants. The Pope's legate, the Bishop of Puy, affected to listen with coldness and distrust, but the revelation was eagerly accepted by Count Raymond, whom his faithful subject, in the name of the Apostle, had chosen for the guardian of the Holy Lance. The experiment was resolved, and on the third day after a due preparation of prayer and fasting, the priest of Marseilles introduced twelve trusty spectators, among whom were the Count and his chaplain, and the church doors were barred against the impetuous multitude. The ground was opened in the appointed place, but the workmen, who relieved each other, dug to the depth of twelve feet without discovering the object of their search. In the evening, when Count Raymond had withdrawn to his post, and the weary assistants began to murmur, Bartholemy, in his shirt, and without his shoes, boldly descended into the pit, the darkness of the hour and of the place enabled him to secrete and deposit the head of a Saracen lance, and the first sound, the first gleam, of the steel was saluted with a devout rapture. The holy lance was drawn from its recess, wrapped in a veil of silk and gold, and exposed to the veneration of the crusaders, there. Anxious suspense burst forth in a general shout of joy and hope, and the desponding troops were again inflamed with the enthusiasm of valor. Whatever had been the arts, and whatever might be the sentiments of the chiefs, they skillfully improved this fortunate revolution by every aid that discipline and devotion could afford. The soldiers were dismissed to their quarters with an injunction to fortify their minds and bodies for the approaching conflict, freely to bestow their last pittance on themselves and their horses, and to expect with the dawn of day the signal of victory. On the festival of Street, Peter and Street, Paul, the gates of Antioch were thrown open, a martial psalm, let the Lord arise, and let his enemies be scattered, was chanted by a procession of priests and monks, the battle array was marshaled in twelve divisions, in honor of the twelve apostles, and the holy lance, in the absence of Raymond, was entrusted to the hands of his chaplain. The influence of his relic or trophy, was felt by the servants, and perhaps by the enemies, of Christ, 99 and its potent energy was heightened by an accident, a stratagem, or a rumor, of a miraculous complexion. Three knights, in white garments and resplendent arms, either issued, or seemed to issue. From the hills, the voice of Adhemar, the Pope's legate, 
proclaimed them as the Martyrs Street, George Street, Theodore and Street, Maurice. The tumult of battle allowed no time for doubt or scrutiny, and the welcome apparition dazzled the eyes or the imagination of a fanatic army. 991 In the season of danger and triumph, the revelation of Bartholemy of Marseilles was unanimously asserted, but as soon as the temporary service was accomplished, the personal dignity and liberal arms which the Count of Thalaus derived from the custody of the Holy Lands provoked the envy and awakened the reason of his rivals. A. Norman clerk presumed to sift, with a philosophic spirit, the truth of the legend, the circumstances of the discovery, and the character of the prophet, and the pious Bohemond ascribed their deliverance to the merits and intercession of Christ alone. For a while, the provincials defended their national palladium with clamors and arms and new visions condemned to death and hell they profane skeptics who presumed to scrutinize the truth and merit of the discovery. The prevalence of incredulity compelled the author to submit his life and veracity to the judgment of God. A pile of dry faggots four feet high and fourteen long, was erected. In the midst of the camp, the flames burned fiercely to the elevation of thirty cubits, and a narrow path of twelve inches was left for the perilous trial. The unfortunate priest of Marseilles traversed the fire with dexterity and speed, but the thighs and belly were scorched by the intense heat, he expired. The next day, 992 and the logic of believing minds will pay some regard to his dying protestations of innocence and truth. Some efforts were made by the provincials to substitute a cross, a ring, or a tabernacle, in the place of the holy lands, which soon vanished in contempt and oblivion. 100 Yet the revelation of Antioch is gravely asserted by succeeding historians, and such is the progress of credulity, that miracles most doubtful on the spot, and at the moment, will be received with implicit faith at a convenient distance of time and space. 99 Return, the Mohammedan Abul Mahazan, Abhud Deegins, Tom. 2 p. 2. p. 95, is more correct in his account of the Holy Lands than the Christians, Anacomna and Abul Faragius, the Greek princess confounds it with the nail of the cross, L. 11. p. 326, the Jacobite primate, with street. Peter's staff, p. 242. 991, return, the real cause of this victory appears to have been the feud in Kerboga's army Wilkin, Vol. 2 p. 40 m. 992, return, the twelfth day after. He was much injured, and his flesh torn off, from the ardor of pious congratulation with which he was assailed by those who witnessed his escape, unhurt. As it was first supposed. Wilkin Vall. IP 263 M. 100, Return, the two antagonists who express the most intimate knowledge and the strongest conviction of the miracle, and of the fraud, are Raymond de Agiles, and Radolfius K. Domenses, the one attached to the Count of Thalaus, the other to the Norman Prince. Fulgurius Carnoensis presumes to say, Audite fraudum et. 
non fraudum. And afterwards, invenit lansum, fallacitor. A col totum fursitan. The rest of the herd are loud and strenuous. The prudence or fortune of the Franks had delayed their invasion. Till the decline of the Turkish Empire. 101 Under the Manly Government of the Three First Sultans, the Kingdoms of Asia were United in peace and justice, and the innumerable armies which They led in person were equal in courage, and superior in Discipline, to the barbarians of the West But at the time of the Crusade, the inheritance of Malak Shah was disputed by his four Sons, their private ambition was insensible of the public danger. And, in the vicissitudes of their fortune, the royal vassals were ignorant, or regardless, of the true object of their allegiance. The twenty-eight emirs who marched with the standard or Kerboga were his rivals or enemies, their hasty levies were drawn from the towns and tents of Mesopotamia and Syria, and the Turkish veterans were employed or consumed in the civil wars beyond the Tigris. The Caliph of Egypt embraced this opportunity of weakness and discord to recover his ancient possessions, and his Sultan, Aftal besieged Jerusalem and Tyre, expelled the children of Ortok, and restored in Palestine the civil and ecclesiastical authority of the Fatimites. 102 They heard with astonishment of the vast armies of Christians that had passed from Europe to Asia, and rejoiced in the sieges and battles which broke the power of the Turks, the adversaries of their sect and monarchy. But the same Christians were the enemies of the Prophet, and from the overthrow of Nice and Antioch, the motive of their enterprise, which was gradually understood, would urge them forwards to the banks of the Jordan, or perhaps of the Nile. An intercourse of epistles and embassies, which rose and fell with the events of war, was maintained between the throne of Cairo and the camp of the Latins, and their adverse pride was the result of ignorance and enthusiasm. The ministers of Egypt declared in a haughty, or insinuated in a milder, tone, that their sovereign, the true and lawful commander of the faithful, had rescued Jerusalem from the Turkish yoke, and that the pilgrims, if they would divide their numbers, and lay aside their arms, should find a safe and hospitable reception at the sepulchre of Jesus. In the belief of their lost condition, the Caliph mistily despised their arms and imprisoned their deputies. The conquest and victory of Antioch prompted him to solicit those formidable champions with gifts of horses and silk robes, of vases, and purses of gold and silver, and in his estimate of their merit or power, the first place was assigned to Bohemond, and the second to Godfrey. In either fortune, the answer of the crusaders was firm and uniform, they disdained to inquire into the private claims or possessions of the followers of Muhammad. Whatsoever was his name or nation, the usurper of Jerusalem was their enemy, and instead of prescribing the mode and terms of their pilgrimage, it was only by a timely surrender of the city and province, their sacred right, that he could deserve their alliance, or deprecate their impending and irresistible attack. 103 101, Return, C. M. D. Geens, Tom, 2 p. 2 p. 223, and C. And the articles of Barkadrak, Mohammed, Sanjiar, 
in Deherbalus. 102. Return, the Emir, or Sultan, Aftal, recovered Jerusalem. Entire, AH 489, Renaudot, History Patriarch. Alexandrin. P. 478. Deakins, Tom. I. P. 249, from a Bolfetta and Ben Scauna. Jerusalem Anti Adventum Vestrum Recuperavimus, Tutco Sigisimus. Say the Fatimite Ambassadors. 103. Return, see the transactions between the Caliph of Egypt and the Crusaders in William of Tyre, L4C 24, L6C 19, and Albert Aquensis, L3C 59, who are more sensible of their importance than the contemporary writers. Yet this attack, when they were within the view and reach of their glorious prize, was suspended above ten months after they defeat of Kerboga. The zeal and courage of the Crusaders were chilled in the moment of victory, and instead of marching to improve the consternation, they hastily dispersed to enjoy the luxury of Syria. The causes of this strange delay may be found in the want of strength and subordination. In the painful end, various service of Antioch, the cavalry was annihilated, many thousands of every rank had been lost by famine, sickness, and desertion, the same abuse of plenty had been productive of a third famine, and the alternative of intemperance and distress had generated a pestilence, which swept away above fifty thousand of the pilgrims. Few were able to command, and none were willing to obey, the domestic feuds, which had been stifled by common fear, were again renewed in acts, or at least in sentiments, of hostility, the fortune of Baldwin and Bohemond excited the envy of their companions, the bravest knights were enlisted for the defense of their new principalities, and Count Raymond exhausted his troops and treasures in an idle expedition into the heart of Syria. 1031 The winter was consumed in discord and disorder, a sense of honor and religion was rekindled in the spring, and the private soldiers, less susceptible of ambition and jealousy, awakened with angry clamors the indolence of their chiefs. In the month of May, the relics of this mighty host proceeded from Antioch to Laodicea, about 40,000 Latins, of whom no more than 1,500 horse, and 20,000 foot, were capable of immediate service. Their easy march was continued. Between Mount Libanus and the seashore, their wants were liberally supplied by the coasting traders of Genoa and Pisa, and they drew large contributions from the emirs of Tripoli, Tyre, Sidon, Acre, and Caesarea, who granted a free passage, and promised to follow the example of Jerusalem. From Caesarea they advanced into the Midland country, their clerks recognized the Sacred Geography of Lydda, Ramla, Emmaus, and Bethlehem, 1032 end. As soon as they descried the holy city, the Crusaders forgot their toils and claimed their reward. 104. 1031, return, this is not quite correct, he took Mara on his road. His excursions were partly to obtain provisions for the army and fodder for the horses Wilkin, Vol. I. P. 226 M. 1032, Return, Scarcely of Bethlehem, 
to the south of Jerusalem M. 104, return, the greatest part of the march of the Franks is traced, and most accurately traced, in Mondral's journey from Aleppo to Jerusalem, p. 11 to 67, unde Milas Morso, sans contractedit chuan eight dan ce genre, Danville, memoir sur Jerusalem, p. 27. Chapter LVIII, The First Crusade, Part V. Jerusalem has derived some reputation from the number and importance of her memorable sieges. It was not till after a long and obstinate contest that Babylon and Rome could prevail against the obstinacy of the people, the craggy ground that might supersede the necessity of fortifications and the walls and towers that would have fortified the most accessible plain. 105. These obstacles were diminished in the age of the Crusades. The bulwarks had been completely destroyed and imperfectly restored. The Jews, their nation, and worship, were forever banished, but nature is less changeable than man and the site of Jerusalem, though somewhat softened and somewhat removed, was still strong against the assaults of an enemy. By the experience of a recent siege, and a three years' possession, the Saracens of Egypt had been taught to discern, and in some degree to remedy, the defects of a place, which religion as well as honor forbade them to Resign. Aladdin, or Iftikhar, the caliph's lieutenant, was entrusted with the defense, his policy strove to restrain the native Christians by the dread of their own ruin and that of the Holy Sepulchre, to animate the Moslems by the assurance of temporal and eternal rewards. His garrison is said to have consisted of 40,000 Turks and Arabians, and if he could muster 20,000 of the inhabitants, it must be confessed that the besieged were more numerous than the besieging army. 106. Had the diminished strength and numbers of the Latins allowed them to grasp the whole circumference of 4,000 yards, about two English miles and a half, 107 to what useful purpose should they have descended into the valley of Ben Hinnom and Torrent of Cedron, 108 or approach the precipices of the south and east, from whence they had nothing either to hope or fear. Their siege was more reasonably directed against the northern and western sides of the city. Godfrey of Bullion erected his Standard on the first swell of Mount Calvary, to the left, as far as Street. Stephen's Gate, the line of attack was continued by Tancred and the two Roberts, and Count Raymond established his quarters from the citadel to the foot of Mount Zion, which was no longer included within the precincts of the city. On the fifth day, the Crusaders made a general assault, in the fanatic hope of battering down the walls without engines, and of scaling them without ladders. By the dint of brutal force, they burst the first barrier, but they were driven back with shame and slaughter. To the camp, the influence of vision and prophecy was deadened by the too frequent abuse of those pious stratagems, and time and labor were found to be the only means of victory. The time of the siege was indeed fulfilled in forty days, but they were forty days of calamity and anguish. A repetition of the old complaint of famine may be imputed in some degree to the voracious or 
disorderly appetite of the Franks, but the stony soil of Jerusalem is almost destitute of water, the scanty springs and hasty torrents were dry in the summer season, nor was the thirst of the besiegers relieved, as in the city, by the artificial supply of cisterns and aqueducts. The circumjacent country is equally destitute of trees for the uses of shade or building, but some large beams were discovered in a cave by the crusaders, a eh? wood near Sitchum, the enchanted grove of Tasso, 109 was cut down. The necessary timber was transported to the camp by the vigor and dexterity of Tancred, and the engines were framed by some Genoese artists, who had fortunately landed in the harbor of Jaffa. 2. Movable turrets were constructed at the expense, and in the stations, of the Duke of Lorraine and the Count of Thalaus, and rolled forwards with devout labor, not to the most accessible, but to the most neglected, parts of the fortification. Raymond's tower was reduced to ashes by the fire of the besieged, but his colleague was more vigilant and successful, 1091 the enemies were driven by his archers from the rampart, the drawbridge was let down, and on a Friday, at three in the afternoon, the day end. Hour of the Passion, Godfrey of Bouillon stood victorious on the walls of Jerusalem. His example was followed on every side by the emulation of valor, and about 460 years after the conquest of Omar, the holy city was rescued from the Mohammedan yoke. In the pillage of public and private wealth, the adventurers had agreed to respect the exclusive property of the first occupant, and the spoils of the great mosque, seventy lamps, and massy vases of gold and silver, rewarded the diligence, and displayed the generosity, of Tancred. A bloody sacrifice was offered by his mistaken votaries to the god of the Christians. Resistance might provoke but neither age nor sex could mollify. Their implacable rage, they indulged themselves three days in a promiscuous massacre, 110 and the infection of the dead bodies produced an epidemical disease. After 70,000 Moslems had been put to the sword, and the harmless Jews had been burnt. In their synagogue, they could still reserve a multitude of captives, whom interest or lassitude persuaded them to spare. Of these savage heroes of the cross, Tancred alone betrayed some sentiments of compassion, yet we may praise the more selfish lenity of Raymond, who granted a capitulation and safe conduct to the garrison of the citadel. 111 The Holy Sepulchre was now free, and the bloody victors prepared to accomplish their vow. Bareheaded and barefoot, with contrite hearts, and in an humble posture, they ascended the hill of Calvary, amidst the loud anthems of the clergy, kissed the stone which had covered the Saviour of the world, and bedewed with tears of joy and penitence, the monument of their redemption. This union of the fiercest and most tender passions has been variously considered by two philosophers, by the one, 112 as easy and natural, by the other, 113 as absurd and incredible. Perhaps it is too rigorously applied to the same persons and the same hour, the example of the virtuous Godfrey awakened the piety of his companions, while they cleansed their bodies, they purified their minds, nor shall I 
believe that the most ardent in slaughter and rapine were they. Foremost in the procession to the Holy Sepulchre. 105. Return, see the masterly description of Tacitus, History v. 11, 12, 13, who supposes that the Jewish lawgivers had provided for a perpetual state of hostility against the rest of mankind. Asterisk. Note, this is an exaggerated inference from the words of Tacitus, who speaks of the founders of the city, not the lawgivers. Prevederant conditores, ex diversitate morum, crebra bella, ind. Cuncta quam vis adversus loagum obsidium, m. 106, return, the lively skepticism of Voltaire is balanced with sense and erudition by the French author of the Esprit de Croyades, Tom 4p 386-388, who observes, that, according to the Arabians, the inhabitants of Jerusalem must have exceeded 200,000, that in the siege of Titus, Josephus collects 1,300,000 Jews, that they are stated by Tacitus himself at 600,000, and that the largest defalcation, that his Exepimus can justify, will still leave them more numerous than the Roman army. 107. Return, Mondral, who diligently perambulated the walls found a circuit of 4630 paces, or 4167 English yards, p. 109. 110, from an authentic plan, Danville concludes a measure nearly similar, of 1960 French toises, p. 23-29, in his scarce and valuable tract. For the topography of Jerusalem, See Reland. Palestina, Tom 2 p. 832 to 860. 108. Return, Jerusalem was possessed only of the torrent of Kedron, dry in summer, and of the little spring or brook of Siloe, Reland, Tom I p. 294, 300. Both strangers and natives. Complain of the want of water, which, in time of war, was studiously aggravated. Within the city, Tacitus mentions a perennial fountain, an aqueduct, and cisterns for rain water. The aqueduct was conveyed from the rivulet Ticos or Etham, which is likewise mentioned by Bohadan, in VIT. Saludio p. 238. 109. Return, Jerusalem Liberata, Canto 13. It is pleasant enough to observe how Tasso has copied and embellished the minutest details of the siege. 1091. Return, this does not appear by Wilkins' account, p. 294. They fought in Var the whole of the Thursday, M. 110, return, besides the Latins, who are not ashamed of the massacre, C. Elmison, History Saracen p. 363, a bull Faragius. Dynast p. 243, and M. D. Geens, Tom. 2 p. 2. p. 99, from. Abul Mahazan. 111. Return, the old tower Sifana, in the Middle Ages. Neblissa, was named Castellum Pisanum, from the Patriarch. Diambert. It is still the citadel, the residence of the Turkish. Aga, and commands a prospect of the Dead Sea, Judea, and Arabia. Danville p. 19-23. It was likewise called the Tower of David. 112, Return, Hume, 
in his History of England, Vol. I. P. 311. 312, Octavo Edition. 113, Return, Voltaire, in his Essay sur l'Histoire Générale. Tom 2. C. 54, P. 345, 346. Eight days after this memorable event, which Pope Urban did not live to hear, the Latin chiefs proceeded to the election of a king, to guard and govern their conquests in Palestine. Hugh the Great, and Stephen of Chartres, had retired with some loss of reputation, which they strove to regain by a second crusade and an honorable death. Baldwin was established at Edessa, and Bohemond at Antioch, and two Roberts, the Duke of Normandy 114, and the Count of Flanders, preferred their fair inheritance in the West to a doubtful competition or a barren scepter. The jealousy and ambition of Raymond were condemned by his own followers, and the free, the just, the unanimous voice of the army proclaimed Godfrey of Bouillon the first and most worthy of the champions of Christendom. His magnanimity accepted a trust as full of danger as of glory, but in a city where his Saviour had been crowned with thorns, the devout pilgrim rejected the name and ensigns of royalty, and the founder of the kingdom of Jerusalem contented himself with the modest title of defender and baron of the Holy Sepulchre. His government of a single year, 115. Too short for the public happiness, was interrupted in the first fortnight by a summons to the field, by the approach of the vizier or sultan of Egypt, who had been too slow to prevent, but who was impatient to avenge the loss of Jerusalem. His total overthrow in the Battle of Ascalon sealed the establishment of the Latins in Syria, and signalized the valor of the French princes who in this action bade a long farewell to the holy wars. Some glory might be derived from the prodigious inequality of numbers, though I shall not count the myriads of horse and foot. 1151 on the side of the Fatimites, but, except 3,000 Ethiopians or blacks, who were armed with flails or scourges of iron, the barbarians of the south fled on the first onset, and afforded a pleasing comparison between the active valor of the Turks and the sloth and effeminacy of the natives of Egypt. After suspending before the Holy Sepulchre the sword and standard of the Sultan, the new king, he deserves the title, embraced his departing companions, and could retain only with the gallant Tancred three hundred knights, and 2,000 foot soldiers for the defense of Palestine. His sovereignty was soon attacked by a new enemy, the only one against whom Godfrey was a coward. Adhemar, Bishop of Puy, who excelled both in counsel and action, had been swept away in the last plague at Antioch, the remaining Ecclesiastics preserved only the pride and avarice of their character, and their seditious clamors had required that the choice of a bishop should precede that of a king. The revenue and jurisdiction of the lawful patriarch were usurped by the Latin clergy, the exclusion of the Greeks and Syrians was justified by the reproach of heresy or schism. 116 and, under the iron yoke of their deliverers, the Oriental Christians regretted the tolerating government of the Arabian Caliphs. Diambert 
Archbishop of Pisa, had long been trained in the secret policy of Rome, he brought a fleet at his countrymen to the succor of the Holy Land, and was installed, without a competitor, the spiritual and temporal head of the Church. 1161 The New Patriarch 117 Immediately grasped the scepter which had been acquired by the toil and blood of the victorious pilgrims, and both Godfrey and Bohemond submitted to receive at his hands the investiture of their feudal possessions. Nor was this sufficient, Diembert claimed the immediate property of Jerusalem and Jaffa, instead of a firm and generous refusal, the hero negotiated with the priest. A quarter of either city was ceded to the church, and the modest bishop was satisfied with an eventual reversion of the rest, on the death of Godfrey without children, or on the future acquisition of a new seat at Cairo or Damascus. 114. Return, the English ascribed to Robert of Normandy, and the provincials to Raymond of Thalaus, the glory of refusing the crown, but the honest voice of tradition has preserved the memory of the ambition and revenge, Vilharduin, number 136, of the Count of Street. Giles. He died at the siege of Tripoli, which was possessed by his descendants. 115, return, see the election, the Battle of Ascalon, and see, in William of Tyre L. 9. C. 1 to 12, and in the conclusion of the Latin historians of the First Crusade. 1151, return, 20,000 francs, 300,000 Musulman, according to Wilkin, Vol. 2p9, m. 116, return, Renaudot, History. Patriarch. Alex. p. 479. 1161, return, Arnulf was first chosen, but illegitimately, and degraded. He was ever after the secret enemy of Diembert or Dagobert. Wilkin, Vol. I. P. 306, Vol. 2. P. 52. M. 117. Return, see the claims of the Patriarch Diembert, in William of Tyre, L9 C 15 to 18, X4, 7, 9, who asserts with marvelous candor the independence of the conquerors and kings of Jerusalem. Without this indulgence, the conqueror would have almost been stripped of his infant kingdom, which consisted only of Jerusalem and Jaffa with about twenty villages and towns of the adjacent country. 118 Within this narrow verge, the Mahometans were still lodged in some impregnable castles, and the husbandman, the traitor, and the pilgrim, were exposed to daily and domestic hostility by the arms of Godfrey himself, and of the two Baldwins, his brother and cousin, who succeeded to the throne. The Latins breathed with more ease and safety, and at length they equaled, in the extent of their dominions, though not in the millions of their subjects, the ancient princes of Judah and Israel. 119 After the reduction of the maritime cities of Laodicea, Tripoli, Tyre, and Ascalon, 120 which were powerfully assisted by the fleets of Venice, Genoa, and Pisa, and even of Flanders and Norway, 121 the range of sea coast from Skanderun 
to the borders of Egypt was possessed by the Christian pilgrims. If the Prince of Antioch disclaimed his supremacy, the Counts of Edessa and Tripoli owned themselves the vassals of the King of Jerusalem, the Latins reigned beyond the Euphrates, and the four cities of Hems, Hama, Damascus, and Aleppo, were the only relics of the Mohammedan conquests in Syria. 122 The Laws and Language The Manners and Titles of the French Nation and Latin Church were introduced into these transmarine colonies. According to the feudal jurisprudence, the principal states and subordinate baronies descended in the line of male and female succession, 123. But the children of the first conquerors, 124 a motley and degenerate race, were dissolved by the luxury of the climate, the arrival of new crusaders from Europe was a doubtful hope and a casual event. The service of the feudal tenures 125 was performed by 666 knights, who might expect the aid of 200 more under the banner of the Count of Tripoli, and each knight was attended to the field by four squires or archers on horseback. 126 5,070 sergeants, most probably foot soldiers, were supplied by the churches and cities, and the whole legal militia of the kingdom could not exceed 11,000 men, a slender defense against the surrounding myriads of Saracens and Turks. 127 But the firmest bulwark of Jerusalem was founded on the Knights of the Hospital of Street. John 128 And of the Temple of Solomon, 129 On the strange association of a monastic and military life, which fanaticism might suggest, but which policy must approve. The flower of the nobility of Europe aspired to wear the cross, and to profess the vows, of these respectable orders, their spirit and discipline were immortal, and the speedy donation of 28,000 farms or manors 130 enabled them to support a regular force of cavalry and infantry for the defense of Palestine. The austerity of the convent soon evaporated in the exercise of arms, the world was scandalized by the pride, avarice and corruption of these Christian soldiers, their claims of immunity and jurisdiction disturbed the harmony of the church and state, and the public. Peace was endangered by their jealous emulation. But in their most dissolute period, the knights of their hospital and temple maintained their fearless and fanatic character, they neglected to live, but they were prepared to die, in the service of Christ and the spirit of chivalry, the parent and offspring of the Crusades, has been transplanted by this institution from the Holy Sepulchre to the Isle of Malta. 131 118 Return, Willerm Tier L. X. 19 The Historia Hierosolimitana of Jacobus of Vitriaco, LIC 21-50, and the Secreta Fidelium Crucis of Marinus Sinutus, L3P1. Describe the state and conquests of the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem. 119, Return, an actual muster, not including the tribes of Levi and Benjamin gave David an army of 1,300,000 or 1,574,000 fighting men, which, with the addition of women, children, 
and slaves may imply a population of 13 millions in a country 60 leagues in length and 30 broad the honest end rational le clerk comment on 2d samuel xxiv and first chronicles xxi estuate augusto and limite and mutters his suspicion of a false transcript a dangerous suspicion asterisk note david determined to take a census of his vast dominions which extended from lebanon to the frontiers of egypt from the euphrates to the mediterranean the numbers in 2 sam xxiv 9 and 1 chronicles xxi 5 differ but the lowest gives 800,000 men fit to bear arms in Israel, 500,000 in Judah. History of Jews, Vol. I. P. 248. Gibbon. Has taken the highest census in his estimate of the population. And confined the dominions of David to Jordanic Palestine. M. 120. Return, these sieges are related, each in its proper place, in the great history of William of Tyre, from the Ixth to the 80th book, and more briefly told by Bernardus. Thesaurus, Deacquisition Terrae Sancti, c. 89-98, p. 732-740, some domestic facts are celebrated in the chronicles of Pisa, Genoa, and Venice, in the Vith, Ixth, and Zeeth tomes of Muratori. 121. Return, Quidem Populus de Insulus Occidentis Agrisus, et. Maxime Dea Part Qua Norvegia Dissiter. William of Tyre, L. 11 c. 14, p. 804, marks their course per Britannicum Mare et Calpin. To the Siege of Sidon. 122, Return, Benalathir, Apod de Gines, Histoire de Huns, Tom. 2 Part 2. p. 150, 151, a.d. 1127. He must speak of the inland country. 123. Return, Sanat very sensibly descants on the mischiefs of female succession, in a land hostivius circumdata, ubicuncta. Virilia et virtuosa esse debe rent. Yet, at the summons, and with the approbation, of her feudal lord, a noble damsel was obliged to choose a husband and champion, Assisus de Jerusalem, c. 242. And c. C. N. M. D. Gaines, Tom I. P. 441-471, The Accurate End. Useful tables of these dynasties, which are chiefly drawn from the lineage de Outremer. 124, Return, they were called by derision Pool Lanes, Polani. And their name is never pronounced without contempt, Duckenge. Gloss. Latin. Tom. V. P. 535, An Observation Sir Joinville, P. 84, 85, Jacob. A Vitriaco History. Here also. I. C. 67, 72, and. Sanat, L. 3. P. 8. C. 2, P. 182. Illustrium Virorum, Key at. Terrae Sancti. Liberationum in Ipsa Mans Runt, Degeneris. Filii. In Delhi CII's Enatriti, Moles et Ephominity, and c. 125, Return, 
this authentic detail is extracted from the Assisis de Jerusalem, c. 324, 326 to 331. Sanat, L3P8. C. 1, P. 174, reckons only 518 knights, and 5775 followers. 126, return, the sum total, and the division, ascertain the service of the three great baronies at 100 knights each, and the text of the assesses, which extends the number to 500, can only be justified by this supposition. 127, return, yet on great emergencies, says Sanat, the barons. Brought a voluntary aid, decentum comitivam militum juxta statum. Sum. 128, return, William of Tyre, L18C3, 4, 5, relates the ignoble origin and early insolence of the hospitallers, who soon deserted their humble patron, Street. John the Elemosinary, for they more august character of street. John the Baptist, see they. Ineffectual struggles of Pagi, Ktitika, AD 1099, no 14-18. They assumed the profession of arms about the year 1120, they. Hospital was Mater, the Temple Philaea, the Teutonic Order was. Founded AD 1190, at the Siege of Acre, Mosheim Institute p. 389, 390. 129, Return, C Street. Bernard de Laud Novi Militiae Templi. Composed AD 1132 1136, in opposite Tom. I p. 2. p. 547 563, Edit. Mabilon, Venet. 1750. Such an encomium, which is thrown away on the dead Templars, would be highly valued by the historians of Malta. 130, Return, Matthew Paris, History. Major, p. 544. He assigns to the Hospitallers 19,000, to the Templars 9,000 Mainaria, word of much higher import, as Duckange has rightly observed, in the English than in the French idiom. Manor is a lordship, Manoire. Dwelling. 131, return, in the three first books of the Histoire d. Chevaliers de Mouth Parl Ave de Verto, the reader may amuse himself with a fair, and sometimes flattering, picture of the order, while it was employed for the defense of Palestine. The subsequent books pursue their emigration to Rhodes and Malta. The spirit of freedom, which pervades the feudal institutions, was felt in its strongest energy by the volunteers of the cross, who elected for their chief the most deserving of his peers. Amidst the slaves of Asia, unconscious of the lesson or example, a model of political liberty was introduced, and the laws of the French kingdom are derived from the purest source of equality and justice. Of such laws, the first and indispensable condition is the assent of those whose obedience they require, and for whose benefit they are designed. No sooner had Godfrey of Bouillon accepted the office of Supreme Magistrate, than he solicited the public and private advice of the Latin pilgrims, who were they best skilled in the statutes and customs of Europe. From these materials, with the counsel and approbation of the Patriarch and 
barons, of the clergy and laity, Godfrey composed the Assis of Jerusalem, 132 A Precious Monument of Feudal Jurisprudence The New Code, attested by the seals of the King, the Patriarch, and the Viscount of Jerusalem, was deposited in the Holy Sepulchre. Enriched with the improvements of succeeding times, and respectfully consulted as often as any doubtful question arose in the tribunals of Palestine. With the kingdom and city all was lost, 133 the fragments of the written law were preserved by jealous tradition 134 and variable practice till the middle of the 13th century, the code was restored by the pen of John D. Iblin, Count of Jaffa, one of the principal feudatories, 135. And the final revision was accomplished in the year 1369, for the use of the Latin Kingdom of Cyprus. 136. 132. Return, the Assises de Jerusalem, in Old Law French, were printed with Beaumanoir's coup MS de Beauvoises, Ourge and Paris, 1690, in folio, and illustrated by Gaspard Thomas de La Thomasier, with a comment and glossary. An Italian version had been published in 1534, at Venice, for the use of the Kingdom of Cyprus. Asterisk note, C. Wilkin, Vol. I. P. 17, and C. M. 133, Return, A. La Terre Perdue, Tout Feud Perdue, is the vigorous expression of the Assis, C. 281. Yet Jerusalem capitulated. With Saladin, the Queen and the principal Christians departed in peace, and a code so precious and so portable could not provoke the avarice of the conquerors. I have sometimes suspected the existence of this original copy of the Holy Sepulchre, which might be invented to sanctify and authenticate the traditionary customs of the French in Palestine. 134, Return, a noble lawyer, Raoul de Tabari, denied the prayer of King Amaudi, A.D. 1195 to 1205, that he would commit his knowledge to writing, and frankly declared, Q.D.C.E. Chu Illinois. Savoid ne feroit Illinois ga null bourgeois son perel, ne null sage. Om letra, C. 281. 135. Return, the compiler of this work, Jean de Iblin, was Count of Jaffa and Ascalon, Lord of Baruth, Baradus, and Rheims, and died A.D. 1266, Sanat, L3P 2C58. The family of Iblin, which descended from a younger brother of a Count of Chartres in France, long flourished in Palestine and Cyprus, c. The Lignage de Decamer, or d'Outremer, c. 6, at the end of the Assises de Jerusalem, an original book, which records the pedigrees of the French adventurers. 136, return, by sixteen commissioners chosen in the states of the island, the work was finished the 3d of November, 1369. Sealed with four seals and deposited in the Cathedral of Nicosia. See the preface to the Assises. The justice and freedom of the Constitution were maintained by two tribunals of unequal dignity, which were instituted by Godfrey of Bouillon after the conquest of Jerusalem. The king, in person, 
presided in the upper court, the court of the barons. Of these the foremost conspicuous were the prince of Galilee, the lord of Sidon and Caesarea, and the counts of Jaffa and Tripoli, who, perhaps with the constable and marshal, 137 were in a special manner the compeers and judges of each other. But all they nobles, who held their lands immediately of the crown, were entitled and bound to attend the king's court, and each baron exercised a similar jurisdiction on the subordinate assemblies of his own feudatories. The connection of lord and vassal was honorable and voluntary, reverence was due to the benefactor, protection to the dependent, but they mutually pledged their faith to each other, and the obligation on either side might be suspended by neglect or dissolved by injury. The cognizance of marriages and testaments was blended with religion, and usurped by the clergy, but the civil and criminal causes of the nobles. The inheritance and tenure of their fiefs formed the proper occupation of the Supreme Court. Each member was the judge and guardian both of public and private rights. It was his duty to assert with his tongue and sword the lawful claims of the Lord. But if an unjust superior presumed to violate the freedom or property of a vassal, the confederate peers stood forth to maintain his quarrel by word and deed. They boldly affirmed his innocence and his wrongs, demanded the restitution of his liberty, or his lands, suspended, after a fruitless demand, their own service, rescued their brother from prison, and employed every weapon in his defense, without offering direct violence to the person of their lord, which was ever sacred in their eyes. 138 In their pleadings, replies, and rejoinders, the advocates of the court were subtle and copious, but the use of argument and evidence was often superseded by judicial combat, and the assists of Jerusalem admits in many cases this barbarous institution, which has been slowly abolished by the laws and manners of Europe. 137, return, the cautious John D. Iblin argues, rather than affirms, that Tripoli is the fourth barony, and expresses some doubt concerning the right or pretension of the constable and Marshall, c. 323. 138, return, entre signer et omnena q la foi. Maze. Tant cul home doit a son signer reverence and toots choses. c. 206. Tu le homes dudit roy am sunt par latite assis. Tinus le uns as autres. Et in Thelemoniere QLE Signior. Met main OU face, met recours OU OFI de Ocon de Yas Sans. Escard et sans connoissance de court, Q2 les autres doivent. Venir de Vant LE Signior, and C. 212. The form of their remonstrances is conceived with the noble simplicity of freedom. The trial by battle was established in all criminal cases which affected the life, or limb, or honor, of any person, and in all civil transactions, of or above the value of one mark of silver. It appears that in criminal cases the combat was the privilege of the accuser, who, except in a charge of treason, avenged his personal injury or the death of those persons whom he had a right to represent, but wherever, from the nature of the charge, 
testimony could be obtained, it was necessary for him to produce witnesses of the fact. In civil cases, the combat was not allowed as the means of establishing the claim of the demandant, but he was obliged to produce witnesses who had, or assumed to have, knowledge of the fact. The combat was then the privilege of the defendant, because he charged the witness with an attempt by perjury to take away his right. He came therefore to be in the same situation as the appellant in criminal cases. It was not then as a mode of proof that the combat was received, nor as making negative evidence, according to the supposition of Montesquieu, 139 but in every case the right to offer battle was founded on the right to pursue by arms the redress of an injury. And the judicial combat was fought on the same principle, and with the same spirit, as a private duel. Champions were only allowed to women, and to men maimed or past the age of sixty. The consequence of a defeat was death to the person accused, or to the champion or witness, as well as to the accuser himself, but in civil cases, the demandant was punished with infamy and the loss of his suit, while his witness and champion suffered ignominious death. In many cases it was in the option of the judge to award or to refuse the combat, but two are specified, in which it was the inevitable result of the challenge, if a Faithful vassal gave the lie to his compeer, who unjustly claimed any portion of their lord's domains, or if an unsuccessful suitor presumed to impeach the judgment and veracity of the court. He might impeach them, but the terms were severe and perilous, in the same day he successively fought all the members of the tribunal even those who had been absent, a single defeat, was followed by death and infamy, and where none could hope for victory, it is highly probable that none would adventure the trial. In the Assis of Jerusalem, the legal subtlety of the Count of Jaffa is more laudably employed to elude, than to facilitate, the judicial combat which he derives from a principle of honor rather than of superstition. 140. 139. Return, see l'esprit de loya, LXXVIII. In the 40 years since its publication, no work has been more read and criticized, and the spirit of inquiry which it has excited is not the least of our obligations to the author. 140. Return, for the intelligence of this obscure and obsolete jurisprudence, c. 80 to 111, I am deeply indebted to the friendship of a learned lord, who, with an accurate and discerning eye, has surveyed the philosophic history of law by his studies. Posterity might be enriched, the merit of the orator and the judge can be felt only by his contemporaries. Among the causes which enfranchised the plebeians from the yoke of feudal tyranny, the institution of cities and corporations is one of the most powerful, and if those of Palestine are coeval with the First Crusade, they may be ranked with the most ancient of the Latin world. Many of the pilgrims had escaped from there. Lords under the banner of the cross, and it was the policy of the French princes to tempt their stay by the assurance of the rights and privileges of freemen. It is expressly declared in the Assis of Jerusalem, that after instituting, 
before his knights and barons. The court of peers, in which he presided himself, Godfrey of Bouillon established a second tribunal, in which his person was represented by his viscount. The jurisdiction of this inferior court extended over the burgesses of the kingdom, and it was composed of a select number of the most discreet and worthy citizens, who were sworn to judge, according to the laws of the actions and fortunes of their equals. 141 In the Conquest and Settlement of New Cities, the example of Jerusalem was imitated by the kings and their great vassals, and above thirty similar corporations were founded before the loss of the Holy Land. Another class of subjects, the Syrians, 142 or Oriental Christians, were oppressed by the zeal of the clergy, and protected by the toleration of the state. Godfrey listened to their reasonable prayer, that they might be judged by their own national laws. A third court was instituted for their use, of limited and domestic jurisdiction, the sworn members were Syrians, in blood, language, and religion, but the office of the President, in Arabic, of the Rice, was sometimes exercised by the Viscount of the city. At an immeasurable distance below the Nobles, the Burgesses, and the Strangers, the Assis of Jerusalem condescends to mention the villains and slaves, the peasants of the land and the captives of war, who were almost equally considered as the objects of property, the relief or protection of these unhappy men was not esteemed worthy of the care of the legislator, but he diligently provides for the recovery, though not indeed for the punishment, of the fugitives, like hounds, or hawks, who had strayed from the lawful owner, they might be lost and claimed, the slave and falcon were of the same value, but three slaves, or twelve oxen, were accumulated to equal the price of the war horse, and a sum of three hundred pieces of gold was fixed, in the age of chivalry, as the equivalent of the more noble animal. 143 141 Return, Louis L. E. Grow, who is considered as the father of this institution in France, did not begin his reign till nine years, A.D. 1108, after Godfrey of Bouillon, Assises, c. 2. 324, for its origin and effects, see the judicious remarks of Dr. Robertson, History of Charles V. Vol. I.P. 30-36, 251-265 Quarto Edition 142, Return, Every Reader Conversant with the Historians of the Crusades will understand by the Pupil des Surians, the Oriental Christians, Melchites, Jacobites, or Nestorians, who had all adopted the use of the Arabic language, Vol. 4p. 593. 143, Return, see the Assises de Jerusalem, 310, 311, 312. These laws were enacted as late as the year 1350, in the Kingdom of Cyprus. In the same century, in the reign of Edward I, I, understand, from a late publication, of his book of account, that the price of a war horse was not less exorbitant in England. Volume 6 Chapter Lix, The Crusades Part I Preservation of the Greek Empire Numbers, Passage and Event, of 
the Second and Third Crusades, Street. Bernard, Reign of Saladin in Egypt and Syria, His Conquest of Jerusalem, Naval. Crusades, Richard I of England, Pope Innocent III. And the Fourth and Fifth Crusades, The Emperor Frederick the Second, Louis IX of France, and the two last. Crusades, Expulsion of the Latins or Franks by the Mamelukes. In a style less grave than that of history, I should perhaps Compare the Emperor Alexius I to the jackal, who is said to follow the steps, and to devour the leavings, of the lion. Whatever had been his fears and toils in the passage of the First Crusade, they were amply recompensed by the subsequent benefits which he derived from the exploits of the Franks. His dexterity and vigilance secured their first conquest of Nice, and from this threatening station the Turks were compelled to evacuate the neighborhood of Constantinople, while the Crusaders, with blind valor, advanced into the Midland countries of Asia, the crafty Greek improved the favorable occasion when the emirs of the Sea coast were recalled to the standard of the Sultan. The Turks were driven from the Isles of Rhodes and Chios, the cities of Ephesus and Smyrna, of Sothes, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, were restored to the empire, which Alexius enlarged from the Hellespont to the banks of the Maunder, and the rocky shores of Pamphylia. The churches resumed their splendor, the towns were rebuilt and fortified, and the desert country was peopled with colonies of Christians, who were gently removed from the more distant and dangerous frontier. In these paternal cares, we may forgive Alexius, if he forgot the deliverance of the Holy Sepulchre, but, by the Latins, he was stigmatized with the foul reproach of treason and desertion. They had sworn fidelity and obedience to his throne, but underscore he underscore had promised to assist their enterprise in person, or, at least, with his troops and treasures, his base retreat dissolved their obligations, and they soared which had been the instrument of their victory, was the pledge and title of their just independence. It does not appear that the emperor attempted to revive his obsolete claims over the kingdom of Jerusalem, too but the borders of Cilicia and Syria were more recent in his possession, and more accessible to his arms. The great army of the Crusaders was annihilated or dispersed, the Principality of Antioch was left without a head, by the surprise and captivity of Bohemond, his ransom had oppressed him with a heavy debt, and his Norman followers were insufficient to repel the hostilities of the Greeks and Turks. In this distress, Bohemond embraced a magnanimous resolution, of leaving the defense of Antioch to his kinsman, the faithful Tancred, of arming the West against the Byzantine Empire, and of executing the design which he inherited from the lessons and example of his father Giscar. His embarkation was clandestine, and, if we may, Credit a tale of the Princess Anne, he passed the hostile sea, closely secreted in a coffin. Three but his reception in France was dignified by the public applause, and his marriage with the king's daughter, his return was glorious, since the bravest spirits of the age enlisted under his veteran command, and he repassed the Adriatic at the head of 5,000 horse and 40,000 foot, 
assembled from the most remote climates of Europe. For the strength of Durazzo, and prudence of Alexius, the progress of famine and approach of winter, eluded his ambitious hopes, and the venal confederates were seduced from his standard. A treaty of peace five suspended the fears of the Greeks, and they were finally delivered by the death of an adversary, whom neither oaths could bind, nor dangers could appall, nor prosperity could satiate. His children succeeded to the Principality of Antioch. But the boundaries were strictly defined, the homage was clearly stipulated, and the cities of Tarsus and Malmistra were restored to the Byzantine emperors of the coast of Anatolia, they possessed the entire circuit from Trebizond to the Syrian gates. The Seljukian dynasty of Rum VI was separated on all sides from the sea and their Musulman brethren, the power of the Sultan was shaken by the victories and even the defeats of the Franks, and after the loss of Nice, they removed their throne to Cogne or Iconium, an obscure and inland town above 300 miles from Constantinople. Seven instead of trembling for their capital, the Comnian princes waged an offensive war against the Turks, and the First Crusade prevented the fall of the declining empire. One, return. Anna Komna relates her father's conquests in Asia. Minor Alexiad, L. 11. p. 321-325, L. 14. p. 419, His Silikian. War against Tancred and Bohemond, p. 328-324, The War of Epirus. With tedious prolixity, L. 12. 13 p. 345 406, The Death of Bohemond, L. 14. p. 419. 2. Return, The Kings of Jerusalem submitted, however, to a nominal dependence, and in the dates of their inscriptions, 1. is still legible in the Church of Bethlehem, they respectfully placed before their own the name of the reigning emperor. Dukenge, Dissertation sur Joinville XXVII p. 319. 3. Return, Anakamna adds, that, to complete the imitation, he was shut up with a dead cock, and condescends to wonder how the barbarian could endure the confinement and putrefaction. This Absurd tale is unknown to the Latins. Asterisk note, the Greek writers. In general, Zonaras, p. 2, 303, and Glycas, p. 334 agree in this. Story with the Princess Anne, except in the absurd edition of The Dead Cock. Duckenge has already quoted some instances where a Similar stratagem had been adopted by underscore Norman underscore princes. On this, authority Wilkin inclines to believe the fact. Appendix to Vol. 2 p. 14 m. 4. Return, in the Byzantine geography, must mean England, yet we are more credibly informed that our Henry I would not suffer him to levy any troops in his kingdom, Dukenge. Not. Ad Alexiad. P. 41. 5. Return, the copy of the treaty, Alexiad L. 13 p. 406 416, is an original and curious piece, which would require. And might afford, a good map of the Principality of Antioch. 6. Return, C. In the learned work of M. D. Gaines, Tom 2. Part 2, 
The History of the Seljukians of Iconium, Aleppo, and Damascus, as far as it may be collected from the Greeks, Latins, and Arabians. The last are ignorant or regardless of the affairs of underscore room underscore. 7. Return, Iconium is mentioned as a station by Xenophon, and by Strabo, with an ambiguous title of, Celarius, Tom. 2 p. 121. Yet Street. Paul found in that place a multitude of Jews and Gentiles. Under the corrupt name of underscore Kunija underscore, it is described as a great city, with a river and garden, three leagues from the mountains, and decorated, I know. Not why, with Plato's tomb, a bull feather, to bull 17 p. 303 ver. Reisky, and the Index Geographicus of Schultens from IBN said. In the 12th century, three great emigrations marched by land. From the west for the relief of Palestine. The soldiers and pilgrims of Lombardy, France and Germany were excited by the Example and success of the First Crusade 848 years After the deliverance of the Holy Sepulchre, the Emperor, and the French King, Conrad III and Louis VII, undertook The Second Crusade to support the falling fortunes of the Latins Nine A grand division of the Third Crusade was led by the Emperor Frederick Barbarossa Ten who sympathized with his brothers of France and England in the common loss of Jerusalem. These three expeditions may be compared in their resemblance of the greatness of numbers, their passage through the Greek Empire, and the nature and event of their Turkish warfare, and a brief parallel may save the repetition of a tedious narrative. However splendid it may seem, a regular story of the Crusades would exhibit the perpetual return of the same causes and effects, and the frequent attempts for the defense or recovery of the Holy Land would appear so many faint and unsuccessful copies of the original. 8. Return, for this supplement to the First Crusade, Siana. Comna, Alexias, L. 11 p. 331, and C., and the 8th Book of Albert Aquensis. 9. Return, for the Second Crusade, of Conrad III and Louis. 7. C. William of Tyre, L. 16 c. 1819, Otho of Friday's Ingen. L. I. C. 34 45 59. 60, Matthew Paris, History Major P. 68. Struvius, Corpus Hist Germanic, P. 372, 373, Scriptoras Rerum. Franci Caramay Duchesne Tom. 4, Nystus, in VIT. Manuel, L.I. C. 4, 5, 6, P. 4148, Sin Amos L. 2. P. 4149. 10. Return, for the Third Crusade, of Frederick Barbarossa, C. Nystus and Isaac Angel. L. 2. C. 38, P. 257 266. Strav. Corpus. History Germ. P. 414, and two historians, who probably were spectators, Tejano, in scriptor. Free her. Tom. I. P. 406-416, Edit Strav, and the Anonymous de Expedition Asiatica. Fred. I. 
In Cana C I Antique, Lection Tom, 3P 2P 498-526 Edit Basinage I of the swarms that so closely trod in the footsteps of the First pilgrims, the chiefs were equal in rank, though unequal in Fame and merit, to Godfrey of Bouillon and his Fellow adventurers at their head were displayed the banners of the Dukes of Burgundy, Bavaria, and Aquitaine, the first a descendant of Hugh Capet, the second, a father of the Brunswick line, the Archbishop of Milan, a temporal prince, transported for the benefit of the Turks, the treasures and ornaments of his church and palace, and the veteran crusaders, Hugh the Great and Stephen of Chartres, returned to consummate their unfinished vow. The huge and disorderly bodies of their followers moved forward in two columns, and if the first consisted of two hundred and sixty thousand persons, the second might possibly amount to sixty thousand horse and one hundred thousand foot. 11111 The armies of the Second Crusade might have claimed the conquest of Asia. The nobles of France and Germany were animated by the presence of their sovereigns, and both the rank and personal character of Conrad and Louis gave a dignity to their cause, and a discipline to their force, which might be vainly expected from the feudatory. Chiefs. The cavalry of the emperor, and that of the king, was each composed of seventy thousand knights, and their immediate attendants in the field, twelve and if the light armed troops, the peasant infantry, the women and children, the priests and monks, be rigorously excluded, the full account will scarcely be Satisfied with four hundred thousand souls. The West, from Rome to Britain, was called into action, the kings of Poland and Bohemia obeyed the summons of Conrad, and it is affirmed by the Greeks and Latins, that, in the passage of a strait or river, the Byzantine agents, after a tale of nine hundred thousand, desisted from the endless and formidable computation. 13 In the Third Crusade, as the French and English preferred the navigation of the Mediterranean, the host of Frederick Barbarossa was less numerous. 15,000 knights, and as many squires, were they. Flower of the German chivalry, 60,000 horse, and one hundred thousand foot, were mustered by the emperor in the plains of Hungary, and after such repetitions, we shall no longer be startled at the six hundred thousand pilgrims, which credulity has ascribed to this last emigration. Fourteen such extravagant reckonings prove only the astonishment of contemporaries, but their astonishment most strongly bears testimony to the existence of an enormous, though indefinite, multitude. The Greeks might applaud their superior knowledge of the arts and stratagems of war, but they confessed the strength and courage of the French cavalry, and the infantry of the Germans, fifteen and the strangers, are described as an iron race, of gigantic stature, who darted fire from their eyes, and spilt blood like water on the ground. Under the banners of Conrad, a troop of females rode in the attitude and armor of men, and the chief of these Amazons, from her gilt spurs and buskins, obtained the epithet of the golden-footed dame. 11. Return, and who states these later swarms at 40,000 horse. 
and 100,000 foot, calls them Normans, and places at their head. Two brothers of Flanders. The Greeks were strangely ignorant of the names, families, and possessions of the Latin princes. 111, return, it was this army of pilgrims, the first body of which was headed by the Archbishop of Milan and Count Albert of Bland Dras, which set forth on the wild, yet, with a more disciplined army, not impolitic, enterprise of striking at the heart of the Mohammedan power, by attacking the Sultan in Baghdad. For their adventures and fate, see Wilkin, Vol. 2 p. 120 and C. Michaud, Book 4 M. 12, Return, William of Tyre, and Matthew Paris, Reckon 70,000. Loricati in each of the armies. 13, Return, the imperfect enumeration is mentioned by St. Amos. And in Contamuriad V, and confirmed by Odo di Diogolo Apud. Duckenjad Cinemum with the more precise sum of 900,556. Why? Must therefore the version and comment suppose the modest end? Insufficient reckoning of 90,000? Does not Godfrey of Viterbo? Pantheon, p. 19 in Muratori, Tom 7 p. 462, exclaim, Numerum si poscara chorus, milia milina militis egman erat. 14. Return, this extravagant account is given by Albert of. Stade, apud struvium, p. 414, my calculation is borrowed from. Godfrey of Viterbo, Arnold of Lubeck, apud Undum, and Bernard. Thesor. c. 169. P. 804. The original writers are silent. The Mahometans gave him 200,000, or 260,000, men, Bohadan, in VIT. Saladin, P. 110. 15. Return, I must observe, that, in the Second and Third Crusades, the subjects of Conrad and Frederick are styled by the Greeks and Orientals underscore Alamani underscore. The Lucky and Tseki of St. Amos are the Poles and Bohemians, and it is for the French that he reserves the ancient appellation of Germans. He likewise names the Britchioi, or Britannoi. Asterisk note. Asterisk he names both Britchioite. K. Britannoi M. 2. The number and character of the strangers was an object of terror to the effeminate Greeks, and the sentiment of fear is nearly allied to that of hatred. This aversion was suspended or softened by the apprehension of the Turkish power, and they Invectives of the Latins will not bias our more candid belief that the Emperor Alexius dissembled their insolence, eluded their hostilities, counseled their rashness, and opened to their ardor the road of pilgrimage and conquest. But when the Turks had been driven from Nice and the sea coast, when the Byzantine princes know Longer dreaded the distant sultans of Cognit, they felt with purer indignation the free and frequent passage of the western barbarians, who violated the majesty, and endangered the safety of the empire. The second and third crusades were undertaken under the reign of Manuel Comnus and Isaac Angelus. Of the former, the passions were always impetuous, and often malevolent. And the natural union of a cowardly and a mischievous temper was exemplified in the latter, who, without merit or mercy, 
could punish a tyrant and occupy his throne. It was secretly, and perhaps tacitly, resolved by the prince and people to destroy, or at least to discourage, the pilgrims, by every species of injury and oppression, and their want of prudence and discipline continually afforded the pretense or the opportunity. The Western monarchs had stipulated a safe passage and fair market in the country of their Christian brethren, the treaty had been ratified by oaths and hostages, and the poorest soldier of Frederick's army was furnished with three marks of silver to defray his expenses on the road but every engagement was violated by treachery and injustice, and the complaints of the Latins are attested by the honest confession of a Greek historian, who has dared to prefer truth to his country. Sixteen instead of a hospitable reception, the gates of the cities, both in Europe and Asia, were closely barred against the Crusaders, and the scanty pittance of food was let down in baskets from the walls. Experience or foresight might excuse this timid jealousy, but the common duties of humanity prohibited the mixture of chalk or other poisonous ingredients in the bread, and should man well be acquitted of any foul connivance, he is guilty of coining base money for the purpose of trading with the pilgrims. In every step of their march they were stopped or misled, the governors had private orders to fortify the passes and break down the bridges against them, they stragglers were pillaged and murdered, the soldiers and horses were pierced in the woods by arrows from an invisible hand, they sick were burnt in their beds, and the dead bodies were hung on gibbets along the highways. These injuries exasperated the champions of the cross, who were not endowed with evangelical patience, and the Byzantine princes, who had provoked the unequal conflict, promoted the embarkation and march of these formidable guests. On the verge of the Turkish frontier Barbarossa spared the guilty Philadelphia, 17 rewarded the hospitable Laodicea, and deplored the hard necessity that had stained his sword with any drops of Christian blood. In their intercourse with the monarchs of Germany and France, the pride of the Greeks was exposed to an anxious trial. They might boast that on the first interview the seat of Louis was a low stool, beside the throne of Manuel, 18. But no sooner had the French king transported his army beyond the Bosphorus, than he refused the offer of a second conference. Unless his brother would meet him on equal terms, either on the sea or land, with Conrad and Frederick, the ceremonial was still nicer and more difficult, like the successors of Constantine. They styled themselves emperors of the Romans, 19 and firmly maintained the purity of their title and dignity. The first of these representatives of Charlemagne would only converse with Manuel on horseback in the open field, the second, by passing the Hellespont rather than the Bosphorus, declined the view of Constantinople and its sovereign. An emperor, who had been crowned at Rome, was reduced in the Greek epistles to the humble appellation of underscore rex underscore, or prince, of the Alemanni, and the vain and feeble Angelus affected to be ignorant of the name of one of the greatest men and monarchs of the age. While they viewed with 
hatred and suspicion the Latin pilgrims the Greek emperors maintained a strict, though secret, alliance with the Turks and Saracens. Isaac Angelus complained that by his friendship for the great Saladin he had incurred the enmity of the Franks, and a mosque was founded at Constantinople for the public exercise of the religion of Muhammad. 20. 16. Return Nystes was a child at the Second Crusade, but in the Third he commanded against the Franks the important post of Philip Papulis. Sinamus is infected with national prejudice and pride. 17. Return The conduct of the Philadelphians is blamed by Nystes, while the anonymous German accuses the rudeness of his Countrymen, Culpa Nostra. History would be pleasant, if we were embarrassed only by underscore such underscore contradictions. It is likewise from Nystus, that we learn the pious and humane sorrow of Frederick. 18. Return, Camulhedra, which Sinamus translates into Latin by the word Selian. Duckenge works very hard to save his king and country from such ignominy, Sir Joinville, Dissertat XXVIIP. 317-320. Lewis afterwards insisted on a meeting in Mari ex quo. Not ex equo, according to the laughable readings of some missus. 19. Return, Ego Romanorum Imperator Sum. Isle Romaniorum. Anonym Canus, p. 512. The public and historical style of the Greeks was underscore princeps underscore. Yet Sin Amos owns that is synonymous to 20. Return, in the Epistles of Innocent 3, 13 p. 184. And the history of Bohaddon, p. 129, 130, see the views of a Pope and a caddy on this underscore singular underscore toleration. 3. The swarms that followed the First Crusade were destroyed in Anatolia by famine, pestilence, and the Turkish arrows, and they Princes only escaped with some squadrons of horse to accomplish their lamentable pilgrimage. A just opinion may be formed of their knowledge and humanity, of their knowledge, from the design of subduing Persia and Chaasan in their way to Jerusalem, 201 of their humanity, from the massacre of the Christian people, a friendly city, who came out to meet them with palms and crosses in their hands. The arms of Conrad and Louis were less cruel and imprudent, but the event of the Second Crusade was still more ruinous to Christendom, and the Greek Manuel is accused by his own subjects of giving seasonable intelligence to the Sultan, and treacherous guides to the Latin princes. Instead of crushing the common foe, by a double attack at the same time but on different sides, the Germans were urged by emulation, and the French were retarded by jealousy. Louis had scarcely passed the Bosphorus when he was met by the returning emperor, who had lost the greater part of his army in glorious, but unsuccessful, actions. On the banks of the Maunder, the contrast of the pomp of his rival hastened the retreat of Conrad, 202 the desertion of his independent vassals reduced him to his hereditary troops, and he borrowed some Greek vessels to execute by sea the pilgrimage of Palestine. Without studying the lessons of experience, or the 
nature of the war, the King of France advanced through the same country to a similar fate. The vanguard, which bore the royal banner and the aura flam of street. Dennis, 21 had doubled their march. With rash and inconsiderate speed, and the rear, which the king commanded in person, no longer found their companions in the evening camp. In darkness and disorder, they were encompassed, assaulted, and overwhelmed, by the innumerable host of Turks, who, in the art of war, were superior to the Christians of the 12th century. 211 Lewis, who climbed a tree in the general discomfiture, was saved by his own valor and the ignorance of his adversaries, and with the dawn of day he escaped alive, but almost alone, to the camp of the vanguard. But instead of pursuing his expedition by land, he was rejoiced to shelter the relics of his army in the friendly seaport of Sadalia. From thence he embarked for Antioch, but so penurious was the supply of Greek vessels, that they could only afford room for his knights and nobles, and the plebeian crowd of infantry was left to perish at the foot of the Pamphylian hills. The emperor and the king embraced and wept at Jerusalem, their martial trains. The remnant of mighty armies, were joined to the Christian powers of Syria, and a fruitless siege of Damascus was the final effort of the Second Crusade. Conrad and Lewis embarked for Europe with the personal fame of piety and courage, but the Orientals had braved these potent monarchs of the Franks, with whose names and military forces they had been so often threatened. Twenty-two perhaps. They had still more to fear from the veteran genius of Frederick. The first, who in his youth had served in Asia under his uncle. Conrad. Forty campaigns in Germany and Italy had taught. Barbarossa to command, and his soldiers, even the princes of the empire, were accustomed under his reign to obey. As soon as he lost sight of Philadelphia and Laodicea, the last cities of the Greek frontier, he plunged into the salt and barren desert, a land, says the historian, of horror and tribulation. 23 During 20 days, every step of his fainting and sickly march was besieged by the innumerable hordes of Turkmen's, 24 whose numbers and fury seemed after each defeat to multiply and inflame. The emperor continued to struggle and to suffer, and such was the measure of his calamities, that when he reached the gates of Iconium, no more than one thousand knights were able to serve on horseback. By a sudden and resolute assault he defeated the guards, and stormed the capital of the Sultan, twenty-five who humbly sued for pardon and peace. The road was now open, and Frederick advanced in a career of triumph, till he was unfortunately drowned in a petty torrent of Cilicia. 26 The remainder of his Germans was consumed by sickness and desertion, and the emperor's son expired with the greatest part of his Swabian vassals at the Siege of Acre. Among the Latin heroes, Godfrey of Bouillon and Frederick Barbarossa could alone achieve the passage of the Lesser Asia, yet even their success was a warning, and in the last end, most experienced age of the Crusades, every nation preferred the sea to the toils and perils of an inland expedition. 27. 
201, Return, this was the design of the pilgrims under the Archbishop of Milan. See note, P. 102 M. 202, Return, Conrad had advanced with part of his army along a central road, between that on the coast and that which led to Iconium. He had been betrayed by the Greeks, his army destroyed. Without a battle. Wilkin, Vol. 3p165. Michaud, Vol. 2p. 156. Conrad advanced again with Louis as far as Ephesus, and from thence, at the invitation of Manuel, returned to Constantinople. It was Louis who, at the passage of the Maunder, was engaged in a glorious action. Wilkin, Vol. 3p 179. Michaud Vol. 2p. 160. Gibbon followed Nystus M. 21, return, as Counts of Vexen, the kings of France were they. Vassals and advocates of the Monastery of Street. Dennis. The Saints. Peculiar banner, which they received from the abbot, was of a square form and a red or underscore flaming underscore color. The underscore or a flam underscore appeared at the head of the French armies from the Zeeth to the XVTH century, Duckenge sur Joinville, Dessert 18 p. 244-253 211, Return, they descended the heights to a beautiful valley, which by beneath them the Turks seized the heights which separated the two divisions of the army. The modern historians represent differently the act to which Lewis owed his safety, which Gibbon has described by the undignified phrase, he climbed a tree. According to Michaud, Vol. 2 p. 164, the king got upon a rock, with his back against a tree, according to Wilkin, Vol. 3, he dragged himself up to the top of the rock by the roots of a tree, and continued to defend himself till nightfall. M. 22, Return, the original French histories of the Second Crusade, are the Gustaludo VC7, published in the Ivyth volume of Duchesne's collection. The same volume contains many original letters of the king, of Sugar his minister, and C, the best documents of authentic history. 23. Return, Terum Hor Oris et Sal Suginus, Terum Sixum. Sterilum, in Amnam. Anonym. Canus. P. 517. The emphatic language of a sufferer. 24. Return, gens enumera, sylvestris, indomita, per duns sign. Ductory. The Sultan of Cogna might sincerely rejoice in their defeat. Anonym. Canus. P. 517. 518. 25. Return, C, in the anonymous writer in the collection of Canisius, Tejano, and Bohadan, V.I.T. Saladin. P. 119, 120. The ambiguous conduct of Kilij Arslan, Sultan of Cognate, who hated and feared both Saladin and Frederick. 26. Return, the desire of comparing two great men has tempted many writers to drown Frederick in the river Sidness, in which Alexander so imprudently bathed, Q.C.I.D. L. 3C. 4, 5. 
but from the march of the emperor, I rather judge that his salaf is the Kalaikadnas, a stream of less fame, but of a longer course. Asterisk. Note, asterisk it is now called the Jirama, its course is described in M. Donald Kinnear's Travels, M. 27, Return, Marinus Sinutus, A.D. 1321, lays it down as a Precept, Quats de los Ecclesi Perterum Nullatinus Est Dosin Da. He resolves, by the divine aid, the objection, or rather, exception, of the First Crusade, Secreta Fidelium Crucis, L. 2. Pars 2. C. I. P. 37. The enthusiasm of the First Crusade is a natural and simple event, while hope was fresh, danger untried, an enterprise congenial to the spirit of the times. But the obstinate perseverance of Europe may indeed excite our pity and admiration. That no instruction should have been drawn from constant and adverse experience, that the same confidence should have repeatedly grown from the same failures, that six succeeding generations should have rushed headlong down the precipice that was open before them, and that men of every condition should have staked their public and private fortunes on the desperate adventure of possessing or recovering a tombstone two thousand miles from their country. In a period of two centuries after they Council of Clermont, each spring and summer produced a new emigration of pilgrim warriors for the defense of the Holy Land. But the seven great armaments or crusades were excited by some impending or recent calamity, the nations were moved by the authority of their pontiffs and the example of their kings. Their zeal was kindled and their reason was silenced by the voice of their holy orators, and among these, Bernard, 28 the monk, or the saint, may claim the most honorable place. 281 About eight years before the first conquest of Jerusalem, he was born of a noble family in Burgundy, at the age of three and twenty he buried himself in the monastery of Sito, then in the primitive fervor of the institution, at the end of two years he led forth her third colony, or daughter, to the valley of Clairvaux 29 in Champagne, and was content, till the hour of his death, with the humble station of abbot of his own community. A philosophic age has abolished, with too liberal and indiscriminate disdain, the honors of these spiritual heroes. The meanest among them are distinguished by some energies of the mind, they were at least superior to their votaries and disciples, and, in the race of superstition, they attained the prize for which such numbers contended. In speech, in writing, in action, Bernard stood high. Above his rivals and contemporaries, his compositions are not devoid of wit and eloquence, and he seems to have preserved as much reason and humanity as may be reconciled with the character of a saint. In a secular life, he would have shared the seventh part of a private inheritance, by a vow of poverty and penance. By closing his eyes against the visible world, thirty by the refusal. Of all ecclesiastical dignities, the abbot of Clairvaux became the oracle of Europe, and the founder of 160 convents. Princes and pontiffs trembled at the freedom of his apostolical censures, France, England, and Milan, consulted and 
abate his judgment in a schism of the church, the debt was repaid by the gratitude of Innocent II, and his successor, Eugenius III, was the friend and disciple of the Holy Bernard. It was in the proclamation of the Second Crusade that he shone as the missionary and prophet of God, who called the nations to the defense of his holy sepulcher. 31 At the Parliament of Vézelay he spoke before the king, and Louis the Seventh, with his nobles, received their crosses from his hand. The abbot of Clairvaux then marched to the less easy conquest of the Emperor Conrad, 311 a phlegmatic people, ignorant of his language, was transported by the pathetic vehemence of his tone and gestures, and his progress, from Constance to Cologne, was the triumph of eloquence and zeal. Bernard applauds his own success in the depopulation of Europe, affirms that cities and Castles were emptied of their inhabitants, and computes, that only one man was left behind for the consolation of seven widows. 32 The blind fanatics were desirous of electing him for their general, but the example of the hermit Peter was before his eyes. And while he assured the crusaders of the divine favor, he prudently declined a military command, in which failure and victory would have been almost equally disgraceful to his character. 33 Yet, after the calamitous event, the abbot of Clairvaux was loudly accused as a false prophet, the author of the public and private mourning, his enemies exulted, his friends blushed, and his apology was slow and unsatisfactory. He justifies his obedience to the commands of the Pope, expatiates on the mysterious ways of Providence, imputes the misfortunes of the pilgrims to their own sins, and modestly insinuates that his mission had been approved by signs and wonders. 34 Had the fact been certain, the argument would be decisive, and his faithful disciples, who enumerate twenty or thirty miracles in a day, appeal to the public assemblies of France and Germany, in which they were performed. 35 At the present hour, such prodigies will not obtain credit beyond the precincts of Clairvaux, but in the preternatural cures of the blind, the lame, and the sick, who were presented to the man of God, it is impossible for us to ascertain the separate shares of accident, of fancy, of imposture, and of fiction. 28. Return, the most authentic information of street. Bernard must be drawn from his own writings, published in a correct edition by Permabilon, and reprinted at Venice, 1750, in six volumes in folio. Whatever friendship could recollect, or superstition could add, is contained in the two lives, by his disciples, in the fifth volume. Whatever learning and criticism could ascertain, may be found in the prefaces of the Benedictine editor. 281. Return, Gibbon, whose account of the Crusades is perhaps the least accurate and satisfactory chapter in his history, has here failed in that lucid arrangement, which in general gives perspicuity to his most condensed and crowded narratives. He has unaccountably, and to the great perplexity of the reader, placed the preaching of St. Bernard after the Second Crusade to which I led M. 29, Return, Clairvaux, 
surnamed the Valley of Absinthe, is situate among the woods near bar sur in champagne Street Bernard would blush at the pomp of the church and monastery, he would ask for the library, and I know not whether he would be much edified by a ton of 800 muids, 914 1-7 hogsheads, which almost rivals that of Heidelberg, Melanges Tires d'un Grande. Bibliothèque, Tom. Salvi, p. 1520. 30. Return, The Disciples of the Saint, V.I.T.I.M.A., L. 3C2. p. 1232. V.I.T. Eda, C. 16, No. 45, p. 1383, Record a Marvelous. Example of His Pious Apathy. Juxta lacomentium lawsonensum. Totius dii itinera purgens, penitus non attendit auto rude se vidir. Non vidit. Cum enim vesper facto deidem lacus socii. Colocarenter, interrogative abat eosu belacus il esset, et mirati. Sunt universi. To admire or despise street. Bernard as he ought, the reader, like myself, should have before the windows of his library the beauties of that incomparable landscape. 31. Return, Otho Frisaying, L.I.C. 4. Bernard. Epist 363, Ad. Franco Sorriental as opposite Tom. I.P. 328. V.I.T. I.M.A. L. 3. C. 4. Tom. 6. P. 1235. 311. Return. Bernard had a nobler object in his expedition into Germany to arrest the fierce and merciless persecution of the Jews, which was preparing under the monk Radolf, to renew the frightful scenes which had preceded the First Crusade, in the flourishing cities on the banks of the Rhine. The Jews acknowledge the Christian intervention of Street. Bernard See the Curious extract from the history of Joseph ben Meir. Wilkin, Vol. 3p1 np 63m 32 return mand astus et abita v multiplicati sunt super numerum vacuum turbs et castella et underscore peen underscore jam non inveniant quem apprehendent septum mulieres unum virum adio ibique vigilu vivis remnant virus Bernard. Epist P. 247. We must be careful. Not to construe underscore peen underscore as a substantive. 33. Return, quis ego sum ut disbunum aces, ut agridi anti. Facies armatorum, autorud quid tam remotum a professione mea, si. Vires. S.I. Parisha, and C. Epist 256, Tom. I.P. 259. He speaks with Contempt of the Hermit Peter, Vir Quidum, Epist 363. 34. Return, Sic de Cunt Furza Tanisti, Undecimus Quad a Domino. Sermo Egrasus Sit. Q U signatus de facies U T cred amus T B non E S T quad ad ista ipsi respondiam parcendum vericundi me respond Tuesday pro me E T pro T E ipso secundum Q U vidisti E T audisti E T secundum quad T E inspiravarit dias consulat L two
C1 Opposite Tom 2P421423 35 Return See the testimonies in Vita IMA L4C56 Opposite Tom 6P1258-1261 L6 C117 P1286-1314 Omnipotence itself cannot escape the murmurs of its discordant votaries, since the same dispensation which was applauded as a deliverance in Europe, was deplored, and perhaps arraigned, as a calamity in Asia. After the loss of Jerusalem, the Syrian fugitives diffused their consternation and sorrow, Baghdad mourned. In the dust, the Cadizian Eden of Damascus tore his beard in. The Caliph's presence, and the whole divan shed tears at his melancholy tale. 36 But the commanders of the faithful could only weep, they were themselves captives in the hands of the Turks. Some temporal power was restored to the last age of the Abbasides, but their humble ambition was confined to Baghdad and the adjacent province. Their tyrants, the Seljukian sultans, had followed the common law of the Asiatic dynasties, the unceasing round of valor, greatness, discord, degeneracy, and decay, their spirit and power were unequal to the defense of religion, and, in his distant realm of Persia, the Christians were strangers to the name and the arms of Sanjiar, the last hero of his race. 37 While the sultans were involved in the silken web of the harem, the pious task was undertaken by their slaves, the Atabex, 38 a Turkish name, which, like the Byzantine patricians, may be translated by father of the prince. Askanzar, a valiant Turk, had been the favorite of Malak Shah, from whom he received the privilege of standing on the right hand of the throne, but, in the civil wars that ensued on the monarch's death, he lost his head in the government of Aleppo. His domestic emirs persevered in their attachment to his son Zenghai, who proved his first arms against the Franks in the defeat of Antioch, thirty campaigns in. The service of the Caliph and Sultan established his military fame, and he was invested with the command of Mosul, as the only champion that could avenge the cause of the Prophet. The public hope was not disappointed, after a siege of twenty-five days, he stormed the city of Edessa, and recovered from the Franks there. Conquests beyond the Euphrates, 39 The martial tribes of Sir-Distan were subdued by the independent sovereign of Mosul and Aleppo, his soldiers were taught to behold the camp as their only country, they trusted to his liberality for their rewards, and their absent families were protected by the vigilance of Zenghai. At the head of these veterans, his son Naureddin gradually united the Mohammedan powers, 391 added the kingdom of Damascus to that of Aleppo, and waged a long and successful war against the Christians of Syria, he spread his ample reign from the Tigris to the Nile, and the Abbasids rewarded their faithful servant with all the titles and prerogatives of royalty. The Latins themselves were compelled to own the wisdom and courage, and even the justice and piety, of this implacable adversary. Forty in his life and government the holy warrior revived the zeal and simplicity of the first caliphs. 
gold and silk were banished from his palace, the use of wine from his dominions, the public revenue was scrupulously applied to the public service, and the frugal household of Nowradin was maintained from his legitimate share of the spoil which he vested in the purchase of a private estate. His favorite sultana sighed for some female object of expense. Alas, replied the king, I fear God, and am no more than they. Treasurer of the Moslems Their property I cannot alienate, but I still possess three shops in the city of Hems, these you may take, and these alone can I bestow. His chamber of justice was the terror of the great and the refuge of the poor. Some years after the Sultan's death, an oppressed subject called aloud in the streets of Damascus, O Naureddin, Naureddin, where art thou? Now, arise, arise, to pity and protect us. A tumult was apprehended, and a living tyrant blushed or trembled at the name of a departed monarch. 36. Return, Abul Mahazan Apad Degins, History de Huns, Tom. 2 p. 2. p. 99. 37. Return, see his underscore article underscore in the Bibliotheca Rintal of Deherbalus, and Degins, Tom. 2 p. i p. 230-261. Such was his valor, that he was styled the second Alexander, and such they extravagant love of his subjects, that they prayed for the Sultan. A year after his decease, yet Sanjiar might have been made prisoner by the Franks, as well as by the Uzzas. He reigned near 50 years, A.D. 1103-1152, and was a munificent patron of Persian poetry. 38. Return See the chronology of the Atabex of Iraq and Syria, in Degins, Tom. IP 254, and the reigns of Zenghai. And Nowradin in the same writer, Tom 2p 2p 147-221, who uses the Arabic text of Ben Alathir, Ben Skauna, and Abul Fetha. The Bibliotheca Rintal under the articles underscore atabex underscore end underscore nurdin underscore and the dynasties of abul faragius p 250-267 ver pakuk 39 return william of tyre l 16 c 4 5 7 describes the loss of edessa and the death of zenghai the corruption of his name into underscore sanguine underscore afforded the Latins a comfortable illusion to his underscore sanguinary underscore character and end fit sanguine sanguinolentus 391 return on Nurdin's conquest of Damascus see extracts from Arabian writers prefixed to the second part of the third volume of Wilkin M. 40, Return, Noradinus, says William of Tyre, LXX 33, Maximus. Nomenes et fide Christian persecutor, princeps to men justice. Vaf creditor, provigis et secundum gentis su traditions religiosus. To this Catholic witness we may add the primate of the Jacobites. A bull p. 267, quo non alter erat inter regis vit rationi. Magus laudabili, autorud q u pluribus justiti experimentis. A bunderet. The true praise of kings is after their death, and from the mouth of their enemies. Chapter Licks 
The Crusades, Part 2 By the arms of the Turks and Franks, the Fatimites had been deprived of Syria. In Egypt the decay of their character and influence was still more essential. Yet they were still revered. As the descendants and successors of the Prophet, they maintained their invisible state in the palace of Cairo, and their person was seldom violated by the profane eyes of subjects or strangers. The Latin ambassadors 41 have described their own introduction through a series of gloomy passages and glittering porticos, they scene was enlivened by the warbling of birds and the murmur of fountains, it was enriched by a display of rich furniture and rare animals, of the imperial treasures, something was shown, and much was supposed, and the long order of unfolding doors was guarded by black soldiers and domestic eunuchs. The Sanctuary of the presence chamber was veiled with a curtain, and the vizier, who conducted the ambassadors, laid aside the scimitar, and prostrated himself three times on the ground, the veil was then removed, and they beheld the commander of the faithful, who signified his pleasure to the first slave of the throne. But this slave was his master the viziers or sultans had usurped the supreme administration of Egypt, the claims of the rival. Candidates were decided by arms, and the name of the most worthy of the strongest, was inserted in the royal patent of command. The factions of Dargham and Shah alternately expelled each other from the capital and country, and the weaker side implored the dangerous protection of the Sultan of Damascus, or the King of Jerusalem, the perpetual enemies of the sect and monarchy of the Fatimites. By his arms and religion the Turk was most formidable, but the Frank, in an easy, direct march, could advance from Gaza to the Nile, while the intermediate situation of his realm compelled the troops of Naur Eddin to wheel round the skirts of Arabia, a long and painful circuit, which exposed them to thirst, fatigue and the burning wines of the desert. The secret zeal and ambition of the Turkish prince aspired to reign in Egypt under the name of the Abbasides, but the restoration of the suppliant Shah was the ostensible motive of the first expedition, and the success was entrusted to the Amir Shiraku, a valiant and veteran commander. Dargham was oppressed and slain. But the ingratitude, the jealousy, the just apprehensions, of his more fortunate rival, soon provoked him to invite the king of Jerusalem to deliver Egypt from his insolent benefactors. To this union the forces of Shirakoa were unequal, he relinquished the premature conquest, and the evacuation of Belbis or Pelusium was the condition of his safe retreat. As the Turks defiled before the enemy, and their general closed the rear, with a vigilant I, and a battle axe in his hand, a Frank presumed to ask him if he were not afraid of an attack. It is doubtless in your power to begin the attack, replied the intrepid Emir, but rest assured that not one of my soldiers will go to paradise till he has sent an infidel to hell. His report of the riches of the land the effeminacy of the natives, and the disorders of the government, revived the hopes of Naur Eddin, the Caliph of Baghdad, applauded the pious design, and Shiraku descended into Egypt a second time with 12,000 Turks and 11,000 Arabs. 
yet his forces were still inferior to the Confederate armies of the Franks and Saracens, and I can discern an unusual degree of military art, in his passage of the Nile, his retreat into Theba, his masterly evolutions in the Battle of Bavane, the surprise of Alexandria, and his marches and countermarches in the flats and valley of Egypt, from the tropic to the sea. His conduct was seconded by the courage of his troops, and on the eve of action a Mameluk 42 exclaimed, If we cannot wrest Egypt from the Christian dogs, why do we not renounce the honors and rewards of the Sultan, and retire to labor with the peasants, or to spin with the females of the harem? Yet, after all his efforts in the field, 43 after the obstinate defense of Alexandria 44 by his nephew Saladin, an honorable capitulation and retreat 441. Concluded the second enterprise of Shiraku, and Nowreddin. Reserved his abilities for a third and more propitious occasion. It was soon offered by the ambition and avarice of Amalric or Amaudi, king of Jerusalem, who had imbibed the pernicious maxim that no faith should be kept with the enemies of God. 442 A Religious warrior, the great master of the hospital, encouraged him to proceed, the emperor of Constantinople either gave, or promised, a fleet to act with the armies of Syria, and they Perfidious Christian, unsatisfied with spoil and subsidy, aspired to the conquest of Egypt. In this emergency, the Moslems turned their eyes towards the Sultan of Damascus, the vizier, whom danger encompassed on all sides, yielded to their unanimous wishes, and Nowreddin seemed to be tempted by the fair offer of one-third of the revenue of the kingdom. The Franks were already at the gates of Cairo, but the suburbs, the old city, were burnt. On their approach, they were deceived by an insidious negotiation, and their vessels were unable to surmount the barriers of the Nile. They prudently declined a contest with the Turks in the midst of a hostile country, and Amaudi retired into Palestine with the shame and reproach that always adhere to unsuccessful injustice. After this deliverance, Shiraka was invested with a robe of honor, which he soon stained with the blood of the unfortunate shower. For a while, the Turkish emirs condescended to hold the office of vizier, but this foreign conquest precipitated the fall of the Fatimites themselves, and the bloodless change was accomplished by a message and a word. The caliphs had been degraded by their own weakness and the tyranny of the viziers, their subjects blushed, when they descendant and successor of the prophet presented his naked hand. To the rude gripe of a Latin ambassador, they wept when he sent the hair of his women, a sad emblem of their grief and terror, to excite the pity of the Sultan of Damascus. By the command of Nowreddin, and the sentence of the doctors, the holy names of Abubekar, Omar, and Othman, were solemnly restored, the Caliph Most Hadi, of Baghdad, was acknowledged in the public prayers as the true commander of the faithful, and the green livery of the sons of Ali was exchanged for the black color of the Abbasides. The last of his race, the Caliph ADH'd, who survived only ten days, expired in happy ignorance of his fate, his treasures, secured the loyalty of the soldiers, 
and silenced the murmurs of the sectaries, and in all subsequent revolutions, Egypt has never departed from the orthodox tradition of the Muslims. 45. 41. Return, from the Ambassador, William of Tyre, L19 c. 17, 18, describes the Palace of Cairo. In the Caliph's treasure were found a pearl as large as a pigeon's egg, a ruby weighing 17 Egyptian drams, an emerald a palm and a half in length, and many vases of crystal and porcelain of China, Renaudot, p. 536. 42, return, underscore mamluk underscore, plur. Underscore Mamaluk underscore, is defined by Pakuk. Prolegum at a bull farag p7, and Deherbalus, p545, Sarvam. Imptidium, seu qui precio numerato in domini possessionum sedet. They frequently occur in the wars of Saladin, Bohaddon, p236. And c. And it was only the underscore Bahardi underscore Mamelukes that were first introduced into Egypt by his descendants. 43. Return, Jacobus A. Vitriaco, p. 1116, gives the king of Jerusalem no more than 374 knights. Both the Franks and the Moslems report the superior numbers of the enemy, a difference which may be solved by counting or omitting the unwarlike Egyptians. 44. Return, it was the Alexandria of the Arabs, a middle term. In extent and riches between the period of the Greeks and Romans. And that of the Turks, Savary, Letraser el Egypt, Tom I P. 25, 26. 441, return, the treaty stipulated that both the Christians and the Arabs should withdraw from Egypt. Wilkin, Vol. 3 Part 2 p. 113 m. 442, return, the Knights Templars, abhorring the perfidious breach of treaty partly, perhaps, out of jealousy of the hospitallers, refused to join in this enterprise. Will. Tyre C. XX P. 5. Wilkin, Vol. 3 Part 2. P. 117 M. 45. Return, for this great revolution of Egypt, see William of. Tyre. L. 1905, 6, 7, 1231, XX, 512, Bohaddon, in VIT. Saladin, P. 3039, a bull in excerpt. Schultens, P. 112. Deherbalus, Bibliot. Orient. Underscore ADH, underscore, underscore Fathma, underscore, but very. Incorrect, Renaudot, History Patriarch. Alex. P. 522-525. 532-537, Verto, History des Chevaliers de Mouth, Tom I. P. 141-163, in Fortio and M. D. Gaines, Tom 2 P. 185-215. The hilly country beyond the Tigris is occupied by the pastoral tribes of the Sea Ords, 46 of people hardy, strong, savage impatient of the yoke, addicted to rapine, and tenacious of the government of their national chiefs. The resemblance of name, situation, and manners seems to identify them with the Carduchans of the Greeks, 47 and they still defend against the Ottoman port they 
antique freedom which they asserted against the successors of Cyrus. Poverty and ambition prompted them to embrace the profession of mercenary soldiers, the service of his father and uncle prepared the reign of the great Saladin, 48 and the son of Job or Ayud, a simple seaward, magnanimously smiled at his pedigree, which flattery deduced from the Arabian caliphs. 49 So Unconscious was now Redden of the impending ruin of his house. That he constrained the reluctant youth to follow his uncle. Shirakuru into Egypt, his military character was established by the defense of Alexandria, and, if we may believe the Latins, he solicited and obtained from the Christian general the underscore profane underscore honors of knighthood. 50 On the death of Shiraku, the office of Grand Vizier was bestowed on Saladin, as the youngest and least powerful of the emirs, but with the advice of his father, whom he invited to Cairo, his genius obtained the ascendant over his equals, and attached the army to his person and interest. While Naureddin lived, these ambitious sea words were the most humble of his slaves, and the indiscreet murmurs of the divan were silenced by the prudent Ayub, who loudly protested that at the command of the Sultan he himself would lead his sons in chains to the foot of the throne. Such language, he added in private, was prudent and proper in an assembly of your rivals. But we are now above fear and obedience, and the threats of Naureddin shall not extort the tribute of a sugar cane. His seasonable death relieved them from the odious and doubtful conflict, his son, a minor of eleven years of age, was left for a while to the emirs of Damascus, and the new lord of Egypt was decorated by the caliph with every title 51 that could sanctify his usurpation in the eyes of the people. Nor was Saladin long. Content with the possession of Egypt, he despoiled the Christians of Jerusalem, and the Atabeks of Damascus, Aleppo, and Diyarbakir. Mecca and Medina acknowledged him for their temporal protector. His brother subdued the distant regions of Yemen, or the happy Arabia, and at the hour of his death, his empire was spread from the African Tripoli to the Tigris, and from the Indian Ocean to the mountains of Armenia. In the judgment of his character, the reproaches of treason and ingratitude strike forcibly on underscore our underscore minds, impressed, as they are, with the principle and experience of law and loyalty. But his ambition may in some measure be excused by the revolutions of Asia, 52 which had erased every notion of legitimate succession, by the recent example of the Atabeks themselves, by his reverence to the son of his benefactor, his humane and generous behavior to the collateral branches, by underscore their underscore incapacity and underscore his underscore merit, by the approbation of the caliph, the sole source of all legitimate power, and, above all, by the wishes and interest of the people whose happiness is the first object of government. In underscore his underscore virtues, and in those of his patron, they admired the singular union of the hero and the saint, for both Naureddin and Saladin are ranked among the Mohammedan saints, and the constant meditation of the holy war appears to have shed a serious end sober color over their lives and actions. The youth of the latter 
53 was addicted to wine and women, but his aspiring spirit soon renounced the temptations of pleasure for the graver follies of fame and dominion, the garment of Saladin was of coarse woolen. Water was his only drink, and, while he emulated the temperance, he surpassed the chastity of his Arabian prophet. Both in faith and practice he was a rigid Musulman, he ever deplored that the defense of religion had not allowed him to accomplish the pilgrimage of Mecca, but at the stated hours, five times each day, the Sultan devoutly prayed with his brethren, the involuntary omission of fasting was scrupulously repaid, and his perusal of the Quran, on horseback between the approaching armies, may be quoted as a proof, however ostentatious, of piety and courage. 54 The superstitious doctrine of the sect of Shafi'i was the only study that he deigned to encourage, the poets were safe in his contempt, but all profane science was the object of his aversion, and a philosopher, who had invented some speculative novelties, was seized and strangled by the command of the royal saint. The justice of his divan was accessible to the meanest suppliant against himself and his ministers, and it was only for a kingdom that Saladin would deviate from the rule of equity. While the descendants of Seljuk and Zenghai held his stirrup and smoothed his garments, he was affable and patient with the meanest of his servants. So boundless was his liberality, that he distributed twelve thousand horses at the siege of Acre, and, at the time of his death, no more than forty-seven drams of silver and one piece of gold coin were found in the treasury, yet, in a martial reign, the tributes were diminished, and the wealthy citizens enjoyed, without fear or danger, the fruits of their industry. Egypt, Syria, and Arabia were adorned by the royal foundations of hospitals, colleges, and mosques, and Cairo was fortified with a wall and citadel, but his works were consecrated to public use, 55 nor did the Sultan indulge himself in a garden or palace of private luxury. In a fanatic age, himself a fanatic, the genuine virtues of Saladin commanded the esteem of the Christians, the Emperor of Germany. Gloried in his friendship, 56 the Greek Emperor solicited his alliance, 57 and the conquest of Jerusalem diffused, and perhaps magnified, his fame both in the East and West. 46, Return, for the Sea Orts, C. D. Gaines, Tom 2 p. 416. 417, The Index Geographicus of Schultens and Tavernier, Voyages. P. I. P. 308, 309. The Aubites descended from the tribe of the Rawadii, one of the noblest, but as underscore they underscore were infected with the heresy of the metempsychosis, the orthodox sultans insinuated that their descent was only on the mother's side, and that their ancestor was a stranger who settled among the sea lords. 47. Return, see the Ivith Book of the Anabasis of Xenophon. The 10,000 suffered more from the arrows of the free Carduchans, than from the splendid weakness of the great king. 48. Return, we are indebted to the Professor Schultens, Lagood. Bat, 1755, in folio, for the richest and most authentic materials, 
A Life of Saladin by His Friend and Minister the Caddy. Bohaddon, and copious extracts from the history of his kinsman the Prince of Bolfeth of Hama. To these we may add, the article of underscore Salaheddin underscore in the Bibliotheca Rintal, and all that may be gleaned from the dynasties of Abul Faragius. 49. Return, since Abul Fetha was himself an Iavite, he may share the praise, for imitating, at least tacitly, the modesty of the founder. 50. Return, History. Here also. In the Gusta Dei per Francos, p. 1152. A similar example may be found in Join Vili, p. 42. Edition du Louvre, but the pious street. Louis refused to dignify. Infidels with the order of Christian knighthood, Duckenge. Observations, p. 70. 51. Return, in these Arabic titles, underscore religionese underscore must always be understood, underscore nurdin underscore, lumen r, underscore etzidin underscore, decus, underscore amedadin underscore. Kalyamen, our hero's proper name was Joseph, and he was styled underscore salahadin underscore, salas, underscore al malicious underscore, underscore al nazirus underscore, rex de fainsot. Underscore Abu Modifer underscore, Pater Victori, Schultens, Pear Fat. 52. Return, a bull fetha, who descended from a brother of Saladin. Observes, from many examples, that the founders of dynasties took the guilt for themselves, and left the reward to their innocent. Collaterals, excerpt p. 10. 53. Return, see his life and character in Renaudot, p. 537-548. 54. Return, his civil and religious virtues are celebrated in the first chapter of Bohaddon, p. 430, himself an eyewitness and an honest bigot. 55. Return, in many works, particularly Joseph's well in the Castle of Cairo, the Sultan and the Patriarch have been confounded by the ignorance of natives and travelers. 56. Return, Anonym. Canisii, Tom. 3p2. p504. 57. Return, Bohaddon, p129, 130. During its short existence, the Kingdom of Jerusalem 58 was supported by the discord of the Turks and Saracens, and both the Fatimite Caliphs and the Sultans of Damascus were tempted to sacrifice the cause of their religion to the meaner considerations of private and present advantage. But the powers of Egypt, Syria and Arabia were now united by a hero, whom nature and fortune had armed against the Christians. All without now bore the most threatening aspect, and all was feeble and hollow in the internal state of Jerusalem. After the two first Baldwins, the brother and cousin of Godfrey of Bouillon, they Scepter devolved by female succession to Melisenda, daughter of the second Baldwin, and her husband Fulk, Count of Anjou, the father, by a former marriage, of our English Plantagenets. There, two sons, Baldwin III and Amaudi, waged a strenuous and not unsuccessful war against the infidels. But the son of Amaudi, Baldwin IV, was deprived, by the leprosy, a gift of the Crusades, 
of the faculties both of mind and body. His sister Sibylla, the mother of Baldwin V, was his natural heiress, after the suspicious death of her child, she crowned her second husband, Guy of Lusignan, a prince of a handsome person, but of such base renown, that his own brother Geoffrey was heard to exclaim, since they have made underscore him underscore a king, surely they would have made underscore me underscore a god. The choice was generally blamed, and they most powerful vassal, Raymond Count of Tripoli, who had been excluded from the succession and regency, entertained an implacable hatred against the king, and exposed his honor and conscience to the temptations of the sultan. Such were they. Guardians of the holy city, a leper, a child, a woman, a coward, and a traitor, yet its fate was delayed twelve years by some supplies from Europe, by the valor of the military orders, and by the distant or domestic avocations of their great enemy. At length, on every side, the sinking state was encircled and pressed by a hostile line, and the truce was violated by the Franks, whose existence it protected. A soldier of fortune, Reginald of Chatillon, had seized a fortress on the edge of the desert, from whence he pillaged the caravans, insulted Muhammad, and threatened the cities of Mecca and Medina. Saladin condescended to complain, rejoiced in the denial of justice, and at the head of fourscore thousand horse and foot invaded the holy land. The choice of Tiberius for his first siege was suggested by the Count of Tripoli, to whom it belonged, and the King of Jerusalem was persuaded to drain his garrison, and to arm his people, for the relief of that important place. 59 By the advice of the perfidious Raymond, the Christians were betrayed into a camp destitute of water, he fled on the first onset, with the curses of both nations, 60 Lusignan was overthrown, with the loss of 30,000 men, and the wood of the true cross, a dire misfortune, was left in the power of the infidels. 601 The royal captive was conducted to the tent of Saladin, and as he fainted, with thirst and terror, the generous victor presented him with a cup of sherbet, cooled in snow, without suffering his companion, Reginald of Chatillon, to partake of this pledge of hospitality and pardon. The person and dignity of a king, said the sultan, are sacred, but this impious robber must instantly acknowledge the prophet, whom he has blasphemed, or meet the death which he has so often deserved. On the proud or conscientious refusal of the Christian warrior, Saladin struck him on the head with his scimitar, and Reginald was dispatched by the guards. 61 They Trembling Lusignan was sent to Damascus, to an honorable prison and speedy ransom, but the victory was stained by the execution of two hundred and thirty knights of the hospital, the intrepid champions and martyrs of their faith. The kingdom was left without a head, and of the two grand masters of the military orders, the one was slain and the other was a prisoner. From all the cities, both of the sea coast and the inland country, the garrisons had been drawn away for this fatal field, Tyre and Tripoli alone could escape the rapid inroad of Saladin, and three months after the Battle of Tiberias, he appeared in arms before 
the gates of Jerusalem. 62. 58. Return, for the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem, see William of Tyre, from the Ixth to the Theod Book. Jacob of Vitriaco, History. Hierosolum L.I., and Sinutus Secreta Fidelium Crucis, L. 3. p. 6 7. 8 9. 59. Return, Templary I.U.T. Apes Bombabant E.T. Hospital Aladi E.U.T. Venti Stride Bant, E.T. Baroness S.E. Exitio Offer Bant, E.T. Turco Pulley. The Christian Light Troops, Semit Ipsi in Ignum NGCA Bant. Ipsa Hani de Expugnation Cut Satica, P. 18, Apud Schultens, A. Specimen of Arabian eloquence, somewhat different from the style. Of Xenophon. 60. Return, the Latins affirm, the Arabians insinuate, they. Treason of Raymond, but had he really embraced their religion, he would have been a saint and a hero in the eyes of the latter. 601, return, Raymond's advice would have prevented the abandonment of a secure camp abounding with water near Sep Horis. The rash and insolent valor of the master of the Order of Knights. Templars, which had before exposed the Christians to a fatal defeat at the Brook Kishon forced the feeble king to annul the determination of a council of war, and advance to a camp in an enclosed valley among the mountains, near hidden, without water. Raymond did not fly till the battle was irretrievably lost, and then the Saracens seemed to have opened their ranks to allow him free passage. The charge of suggesting the siege of Tiberias Appears ungrounded Raymond, no doubt, played a double part, he was a man of strong sagacity, who foresaw the desperate nature of the contest with Saladin, endeavored by every means to maintain the treaty, and, though he joined both his arms and his still more valuable counsels to the Christian army, yet kept up a kind of amicable correspondence with the Mahometans. C. Wilkin, Vol. 3 Part 2 P. 276, E.T. Sequel Michaud, Vol. 2 P. 278, E.T. Sequel M. Michaud is still more friendly than Wilkin to the memory of Count Raymond, who died suddenly, shortly after the Battle of Hidden. He quotes a letter written in the name of Saladin by the Caliph Alftal, to show that Raymond was considered by the Mahometans their most dangerous and detested enemy. No person of distinction among the Christians escaped, except the Count of Tripoli, whom God curse. God made him die shortly afterwards, and sent him from the kingdom of death to hell. M. 61, Return, Bernard, Reginald, or Arnold de Chatillon, is celebrated by the Latins in his life and death, but the circumstances of the latter are more distinctly related by Bohaddon in a bullfeather, and join Vili. History de St. Louis, p. 70. Alludes to the practice of Saladin, of never putting to death a prisoner who had tasted his bread and salt. Some of the companions of Arnold had been slaughtered, and almost sacrificed. In a valley of Mecca, Uba Sacrificia Mactenter, a bull feather, p. 32. 62, Return, Verto, who well describes the loss of the kingdom and city, History des Chevaliers de Mouth, Tom I. L. 2 p. 226-278, 
inserts two original epistles of a Knight Templar. He might expect that the siege of a city so venerable on earth, and in heaven, so interesting to Europe and Asia, would rekindle the last sparks of enthusiasm, and that, of sixty thousand Christians, every man would be a soldier, and every soldier a candidate for martyrdom. But Queen Sibylla trembled for herself, and her captive husband, and the barons and knights, who had escaped from the sword and chains of the Turks, displayed the same factious and selfish spirit in the public ruin. The most numerous portion of the inhabitants was composed of the Greek and Oriental Christians, whom experience had taught to prefer the Mohammedan before the Latin yoke, 63 and the Holy Sepulchre attracted a base and needy crowd, without arms or courage, who subsisted only on the charity of the pilgrims. Some feeble and hasty efforts were made for the defense of Jerusalem, but in the space of fourteen days, a victorious army drove back the sallies of the besieged, planted their engines, opened the wall to the breadth of fifteen cubits, applied their scaling ladders, and erected on the breach twelve banners of the Prophet and the Sultan. It was in vain that a barefoot procession of the Queen, the women, and the monks, implored the Son of God to save his tomb and his inheritance from impious violation. Their sole hope was in the mercy of the conqueror, and to their first suppliant deputation that mercy was sternly denied. He had sworn to avenge the patience and long-suffering of the Moslems, the hour of forgiveness was elapsed, and the moment was now arrived to expiate, in blood, the innocent blood which had been spilt by Godfrey and the First Crusaders. But a desperate and successful struggle of the Franks admonished the Sultan that his triumph was not yet secure, he listened with reverence to a solemn adjuration in the name of the common father of mankind, and a sentiment of human sympathy mollified the rigor of fanaticism and conquest. He consented to accept the city, and to spare the inhabitants. They. Greek and Oriental Christians were permitted to live under his dominion, but it was stipulated, that in forty days all they Franks and Latins should evacuate Jerusalem, and be safely conducted to the seaports of Syria and Egypt, that ten pieces of gold should be paid for each man, five for each woman, and one for every child, and that those who were unable to purchase their freedom should be detained in perpetual slavery. Of some writers, it is a favorite and invidious theme to compare the humanity of Saladin with the massacre of the First Crusade. The difference would be merely personal, but we should not forget that the Christians had offered to capitulate, and that the Mahometans of Jerusalem sustained the last extremities of an assault and storm. Justice is indeed due to the fidelity with which the Turkish conqueror fulfilled the conditions of the treaty, and he may be deservedly praised for the glance of pity which he cast on the misery of the vanquished. Instead of a rigorous exaction of his debt, he accepted a sum of thirty thousand Byzants, for the ransom of seven thousand poor, two or three thousand more were dismissed by his gratuitous clemency, and the number of slaves was reduced to eleven or fourteen thousand persons. In this interview with the Queen, his words and even his tears suggested 
the kindest consolations, his liberal alms were distributed among those who had been made orphans or widows by the fortune of war. And while the knights of the hospital were in arms against him, he allowed their more pious brethren to continue, during the term of a year, the care and service of the sick. In these acts of mercy the virtue of Saladin deserves our admiration and love, he was above the necessity of dissimulation, and his stern fanaticism would have prompted him to dissemble, rather than to affect this profane compassion for the enemies of the Quran. After Jerusalem had been delivered from the presence of the strangers, the Sultan made his triumphal entry, his banners waving in the wind, and to the harmony of martial music. The Great Mosque of Omar, which had been converted into a church, was again consecrated to one God and his prophet Muhammad, the walls and pavement were purified with rose water, and a pulpit, the labor of Naureddin, was erected in the sanctuary. But when the golden cross that glittered on the dome was cast down, and Dragged through the streets, the Christians of every sect uttered a lamentable groan, which was answered by the joyful shouts of the Moslems. In four ivory chests the Patriarch had collected the crosses, the images, the vases, and the relics of the holy place. They were seized by the conqueror, who was desirous of presenting the Caliph with the trophies of Christian idolatry. He was persuaded, however, to entrust them to the Patriarch and Prince of Antioch, and the pious pledge was redeemed by Richard of England, at the expense of 52,000 Byzants of gold. 64. 63. Return, Renaudot, History. Patriarch Alex P. 545 64. Return, for the conquest of Jerusalem, Bohaddon, P. 6775 and a bull feather, P. 4043, are our Muslim witnesses of the Christian, Bernard Thesaurius C. 151-167, is the most copious and authentic, see likewise Matthew Paris, P. 121-24. The nations might fear and hope the immediate and final expulsion of the Latins from Syria, which was yet delayed above a century after the death of Saladin. 65 in the career of victory, he was first checked by the resistance of Tyre, the troops and garrisons, which had capitulated, were imprudently conducted to the same port, their numbers were adequate to the defense of the place, and the arrival of Conrad of Montferrat inspired the disorderly crowd with confidence and union. His father, a venerable pilgrim, had been made prisoner in the Battle of Tiberius, but that disaster was unknown in Italy and Greece, when the son was urged by ambition and piety to visit the inheritance of his royal nephew, the infant Baldwin. The view of the Turkish banners warned him from the hostile coast of Jaffa, and Conrad was unanimously hailed as the prince and champion of Tyre, which was already besieged by the conqueror of Jerusalem. The firmness of his zeal, and perhaps his knowledge of a generous foe, enabled him to brave the threats of the sultan, and to declare, that should his aged parent be exposed before the walls, he himself would discharge the first arrow, and glory in his descent from a Christian martyr. 
66 The Egyptian fleet was allowed to enter the harbor of Tyre, but the chain was suddenly drawn, and five galleys were either sunk or taken, a thousand Turks were slain in a sally, and Saladin, after burning his engines, concluded a glorious campaign by a disgraceful retreat to Damascus. He was soon assailed by a more formidable tempest. The pathetic narratives, and even the pictures, that represented in lively colors the servitude and profanation of Jerusalem, awakened the torpid sensibility of Europe, the Emperor Frederick Barbarossa and the kings of France and England, assumed the cross, and the tardy magnitude of their armaments was anticipated by the maritime states of the Mediterranean and the ocean. The skillful and provident Italians first embarked in the ships of Genoa, Pisa, and Venice. They were speedily followed by the most eager Pilgrims of France, Normandy, and the Western Isles. The powerful Sucker of Flanders, Frise, and Denmark, filled near a hundred vessels, and the northern warriors were distinguished in the field by a lofty stature and a ponderous battle axe. 67 There Increasing multitudes could no longer be confined within the walls of Tyre, or remain obedient to the voice of Conrad. They pitied the misfortunes, and revered the dignity, of Lusignan, who was released from prison, perhaps, to divide the army of the Franks. He proposed the recovery of Ptolemy, or Acre, thirty miles to the south of Tyre, and the place was first invested by 2,000 horse and 30,000 foot under his nominal command. I shall not expatiate on the story of this memorable siege, which lasted near two years, and consumed, in a narrow space, the forces of Europe and Asia. Never did the flame of enthusiasm burn with fiercer and more destructive rage, nor could the true believers, a common appellation, who consecrated their own martyrs, refuse some applause to the mistaken zeal and courage of their adversaries. At the sound of the holy trumpet, the Moslems of Egypt, Syria, Arabia, and the Oriental provinces, assembled under the servant of the Prophet, 68, his camp was pitched and removed within a few miles of acre, and he labored night and day, for the relief of his brethren and the annoyance of the Franks. Nine battles, not unworthy of the name, were fought in the neighborhood of Mount Carmel, with such vicissitude of fortune, that in one attack, the Sultan forced his way into the city, that in one sally, the Christians penetrated to the royal tent. By the means of divers and pigeons, a regular correspondence was maintained with the besieged, and, as often as the sea was left open, the exhausted garrison was withdrawn, and a fresh supply was poured into the place. The Latin camp was Thinned by famine, the sword, and the climate, but the tents of the dead were replenished with new pilgrims, who exaggerated the strength and speed of their approaching countrymen. The vulgar was astonished by the report, that the Pope himself, with an innumerable crusade, was advanced as far as Constantinople. The march of the emperor filled the east with more serious alarms. The obstacles which he encountered in Asia, and perhaps in Greece, were raised by the policy of Saladin, his joy on the 
death of Barbarossa was measured by his esteem, and they Christians were rather dismayed than encouraged at the sight of the Duke of Swabia and his wayworn remnant of five thousand Germans. At length, in the spring of the second year, the royal fleets of France and England cast anchor in the Bay of Acre, and the siege was more vigorously prosecuted by the youthful emulation of the two kings, Philip Augustus and Richard Plantagenet. After every resource had been tried, and every hope was exhausted, the defenders of Acre submitted to their fate, a capitulation was granted, but their lives and liberties were taxed at the hard conditions of a ransom of two hundred thousand pieces of gold, the deliverance of one hundred nobles, and fifteen hundred inferior captives, and the restoration of the wood of the Holy Cross. Some doubts in the agreement, and some delay in the execution, rekindled the fury of the Franks, and three thousand Moslems, almost in the Sultan's view, were beheaded by the command of the sanguinary Richard. Sixty-nine by the conquest of Acre, the Latin powers acquired a strong town and a convenient harbour, but the advantage was most dearly purchased. The minister and historian of Saladin computes, from the report of the enemy, that their numbers, at different periods, amounted to five or six hundred thousand, that more than one hundred thousand Christians were slain, that a far greater number was lost by disease or shipwreck, and that a small portion of this mighty host could return in safety to their native countries. 70. 65. Return, the sieges of Tyre and Acre are most copiously described by Bernard Thesaurarius, de acquisition terre sancte. C. 167-179, the author of the Historia Hierosolimitana, p. 1150-1172, in Bongersius, a Bolfetta, p. 43-50, and Bohadan, p. 75-179. 66. Return. I have followed a moderate and probable representation of the fact, by Verto, who adopts without reluctance a romantic tale the old Marquis is actually exposed to the darts of the besieged. 67. Return, North Mani et Gothit, et Terri Populi Insularum Q. Inter Occidentum et Septentrionum Sit Sunt. Gentis bellicose. Corporis preciri mortis intrepid, vipanibus arma, navibus. Rotundus, qus naki de cuntur, advect. 68. Return, the historian of Jerusalem, p. 1108, adds the nations of the east from the Tigris to India, and the swarthy tribes of Moors and Gechelians so that Asia and Africa fought against Europe. 69. Return, Bohadan, p. 180, and this massacre is neither denied nor blamed by the Christian historians. Alacrider Jessa. Complentes, the English soldiers, says Gaffridus A. Vinisov. L. 4C4. P. 346, who fixes at 2700 the number of victims, who are multiplied to 5000 by Roger Hovedon, p. 697, 698. The humanity or avarice of Philip Augustus was persuaded to ransom his prisoners, Jacob A. Vitriaco, L.I.C. 98. P. 1122. 70. Return, Bohadan, P. 14. 
he quotes the judgment of Balianus and the Prince of Sidon, and adds, Ex illo mundo quasi hominum. Possissimi redi runt. Among the Christians who died before Street. John D. Acre, I find the English names of D. Ferrer's Earl of. Derby, Dugdale, Baronage, Part I. P. 260, Mowbray, Item, P. 124. D. M. A. N. D. Evil, D. Fines, Street. John, Scrope, Bigot, Talbot. N. C. Chapter Licks, The Crusades, Part 3. Philip Augustus, and Richard I, are the only kings of France and England who have fought under the same banners, but the holy service in which they were enlisted was incessantly disturbed by their national jealousy, and the two factions, which they protected in Palestine, were more averse to each other than to the common enemy. In the eyes of the Orientals, the French monarch was superior in dignity and power, and, in the emperor's absence, the Latins revered him as their temporal chief. 71 His exploits were not adequate to his fame. Philip was brave, but the statesman predominated in his character, he was soon weary of sacrificing his health and interest on a barren coast, the surrender of Acre became the signal of his departure, nor could he justify this unpopular desertion, by leaving the Duke of Burgundy with five hundred knights and ten thousand foot, for the service of the Holy Land. The King of England, though inferior in dignity, surpassed his rival in wealth and military renown, seventy-two. And if heroism be confined to brutal and ferocious valor, Richard Plantagenet will stand high among the heroes of the age. The Memory of underscore C or D lion underscore, of the lion-hearted prince, was long. Dear and glorious to his English subjects, and, at the distance of sixty years, it was celebrated in proverbial sayings by the grandsons of the Turks and Saracens, against whom he had fought. His tremendous name was employed by the Syrian mothers to silence their infants, and if a horse suddenly started from the way, his rider was wont to exclaim, Dost thou think King Richard is in that bush? 73 His cruelty to the Mahometans was the effect of temper and zeal, but I cannot believe that a soldier, so free and fearless in the use of his lance, would have descended to wet a Dagger against his valiant brother Conrad of Montferrat, who was slain at Tyre by some secret assassins. 74 After the surrender of Acre, and the departure of Philip, the King of England led the Crusaders to the recovery of the sea coast, and the cities of Xaria and Jaffa were added to the fragments of the kingdom of Lusignan. A march of 100 miles from Acre to Ascalon was a great and perpetual battle of 11 days. In the disorder of his troops, Saladin remained on the field with 17 guards. Without lowering his standard, or suspending the sound of his brazen kettle drum, he again rallied and renewed the charge, and his preachers or heralds called aloud on the underscore Unitarians underscore manfully to stand up against the Christian idolaters. But the progress of these idolaters was irresistible, and it was only by demolishing the walls and buildings of Ascalon that the Sultan could prevent them from occupying an important fortress on the confines of Egypt. 
During a severe winter, the armies slept, but in the spring, the Franks advanced within a day's march of Jerusalem, under the leading standard of the English king, and his active spirit intercepted a convoy, or caravan, of seven thousand camels. Saladin 75 had fixed his station in the holy city, but the city was struck with consternation and discord, he fasted, he prayed, he preached, he offered to share the dangers of the siege, but his Mamelukes, who remembered the fate of their companions at Acre, pressed the Sultan with loyal or seditious clamors, to reserve underscore his underscore person and underscore their underscore courage for the future defense of the religion and empire. 76 The Moslems were delivered by the sudden, or, as they deemed, the miraculous retreat of the Christians, 77 and the laurels of Richard were blasted by the prudence, or envy, of his companions. The hero, ascending a hill, and veiling his face, exclaimed with an indignant voice, those who are unwilling to rescue, are unworthy to view, the sepulchre of Christ. After his return to Acre, on the news that Jaffa was surprised by the Sultan, he sailed with some merchant vessels, and leaped foremost on the beach, they Castle was relieved by his presence, and sixty thousand Turks and Saracens fled before his arms. The discovery of his weakness provoked them to return in the morning, and they found him carelessly encamped before the gates with only seventeen knights and three hundred archers. Without counting their numbers, he sustained their charge, and we learn from the evidence of his enemies, that the King of England, grasping his lance, rode furiously along their front, from the right to the left wing, without meeting an adversary who dared to encounter his career. 78 Am I writing the history of Orlando or Amatus? 71 Return Magnus hic apud eos, interc regis eorum tum. Virtutum majestate eminens. Summus rerum arbiter, Bohaddon. p. 159. He does not seem to have known the names either of Philip or Richard. 72. Return, Rex Angli, per strenuus. Registration e gallorum minor. Apat eos sensbatut rationi regniat dignitatis, said Tum. Divitis florentior, tumbaluca virtut multu erat celebrior. Bohaddon, p. 161. A stranger might admire those riches, they. National historians will tell with what lawless and wasteful oppression they were collected. 73. Return. Join Vili, p. 17. Quides Tuesday QCE so it le rewa. Richard. 74. Return, yet he was guilty in the opinion of the Moslems, who attest the confession of the assassins, that they were sent by the King of England, Bohaddon, p. 225, and his only defense is an absurd and palpable forgery, History de l'Academie des Inscriptions, Tom. 15 p. 155-163, a pretended letter from the Prince of the Assassins, the Sheech, or Old Man of the Mountain, who justified Richard, by assuming to himself the guilt or merit, of the murder. Asterisk. Note, asterisk von Hammer, Geschichte der Assassinen, p. 202, sums up. Against Richard, Wilkin, 
vol 4p 485 as strongly for acquittal Michaud, vol 2p 420 delivers no decided opinion this crime was also attributed to Saladin who is said by an oriental authority the continuator of Tabari to have employed the assassins to murder both Conrad and Richard. It is a melancholy admission, but it must be acknowledged, that such an act would be less inconsistent with the character of the Christian than of the Mohammedan king, M. 75, return, see the distress and pious firmness of Saladin, as they are described by Bohaddon, P. 79, 235-237, who himself harangued the defenders of Jerusalem, their fears were not unknown to the enemy, Jacob A. Vitriaco, L.I.C. 100, P. 1123. Vinasoff, L.V.C. 50, P. 399. 76, Return yet unless the sultan, or an Ayyubite prince, remained in Jerusalem, nec si erdi tersis, nec tersi ascent. Obtemperatory si erdis, Bohaddon, p. 236. He draws aside a corner of the political curtain. 77, return, Bohaddon, p. 237 and even Jeffrey D. Vinasoff. L. 6 C. 18, P. 403 409, ascribe the retreat to Richard himself, and Jacobus A. Vitriaco observes, that in his impatience to depart, in alterum virum mutatus est, P. 1123. Yet, Joinville, a French knight, accuses the envy of Hugh Duke of Burgundy, p. 116, without supposing, like Matthew Paris, that he was bribed by Saladin. 78, return, the expeditions to Ascalon, Jerusalem, and Jaffa are related by Bohaddon, p. 184-249, and a bull feather, p. 51. 52. The author of the itinerary, or the monk of street. Albans, cannot. Exaggerate the caddy's account of the prowess of Richard. Vinasoff, L6C, 1424, p. 412 421. History Major, p. 137 143. And on the whole of this war there is a marvelous agreement between the Christian and Mohammedan writers, who mutually praise the virtues of their enemies. During these hostilities, a languid and tedious negotiation 79 between the Franks and Moslems was started, and continued, and broken, and again resumed, and again broken. Some acts of royal courtesy the gift of snow and fruit, the exchange of Norway. Hawks and Arabian horses, softened the asperity of religious war. From the vicissitude of success, the monarchs might learn to suspect that heaven was neutral in the quarrel, nor, after the trial of each other, could either hope for a decisive victory. 80. The health both of Richard and Saladin appeared to be in a declining state, and they respectively suffered the evils of distant and domestic warfare, Plantagenet was impatient to punish a perfidious rival who had invaded Normandy in his absence, and the indefatigable sultan was subdued by the cries of the people, who was the victim, and of the soldiers, who were they? Instruments, of his martial zeal. The first demands of the king of England were the restitution of Jerusalem, Palestine, and the true cross, 
and he firmly declared, that himself and his brother. Pilgrims would end their lives in the pious labor, rather than return to Europe with ignominy and remorse. But the conscience of Saladin refused, without some weighty compensation, to restore the idols, or promote the idolatry, of the Christians, he asserted, with equal firmness, his religious and civil claim to the sovereignty of Palestine, descanted on the importance and sanctity of Jerusalem, and rejected all terms of the establishment, or partition of the Latins. The marriage which Richard proposed, of his sister with the Sultan's brother, was defeated by the difference of faith, the princess abhorred the embraces of a Turk, an Adele, or Safadan, would not easily renounce a plurality of wives. A personal interview was declined by Saladin, who alleged their mutual ignorance of each other's language, and the negotiation was managed with much art and delay by their interpreters and envoys. The final agreement was equally disapproved by the zealots of both parties, by the Roman pontiff and the caliph of Baghdad. It was stipulated that Jerusalem and the Holy Sepulchre should be open, without tribute or vexation, to the pilgrimage of the Latin Christians, that, after the demolition of Ascalon, they should inclusively possess the sea coast from Jaffa to Tyre, that the Count of Tripoli and the Prince of Antioch should be comprised in the truce, and that, during three years and three months, all hostilities should cease. The principal chiefs of the two armies swore to the observance of the treaty, but the monarchs were satisfied with giving their word and their right hand, and the royal majesty was excused from an oath, which always implies some suspicion of falsehood and dishonor. Richard embarked for Europe to seek a long captivity and a premature grave, and the space of a few months concluded the life and glories of Saladin. The Orientals describe his edifying death, which happened at Damascus, but they seem ignorant of the equal distribution of his alms among the three religions, eighty-one or of the display of a shroud, instead of a standard, to admonish the East of the instability of human greatness. The unity of empire was dissolved by his death, his sons were oppressed by the stronger arm of their uncle Safadan. The hostile interests of the sultans of Egypt, Damascus, and Aleppo, 82 were again revived, and the Franks or Latins stood and breathed, and hoped, in their fortresses along the Syrian coast. 79. Return, see the progress of negotiation and hostility in Bohaddon, p. 207260, who was himself an actor in the treaty. Richard declared his intention of returning with new armies to the conquest of the Holy Land, and Saladin answered the menace. With a civil compliment, Vinasoff L. 6 C. 28, P. 423. 80. Return, the most copious and original account of this holy war is Gaffridi A. Vinasoff, Itinerarium Regis Anglarum Riccardi. E.T. Aliorum Interim Hierosolimorum, in six books, published in the id volume of Gale Scriptoris History. Anglican, p. 247-429. Roger Hovedon and Matthew Paris afford likewise many valuable materials, and the former describes, with accuracy, the 
Discipline and Navigation of the English Fleet. 81, Return, Even Verto, Tom I.P. 251, Adopts the Foolish. Notion of the Indifference of Saladin, Who Professed the Quran. With His Last Breath. 82, Return, See the Succession of the Ayubites, In. A Bull Faragius, Dynast p. 277, and c. and the tables of m. d. Gaines, L'Art de Verifier les Dates, and the Bibliothèque. Orientale. The noblest monument of a conqueror's fame, and of the terror. Which he inspired, is the Solidine Tenth, a general tax which was imposed on the laity, and even the clergy, of the Latin Church for the service of the Holy War. The practice was too lucrative to expire with the occasion, and this tribute became the foundation of all the tithes and tenths on ecclesiastical benefices, which have been granted by the Roman pontiffs to Catholic sovereigns, or reserved for the immediate use of the Apostolic See. 83 This pecuniary emolument must have tended to increase the interest of the popes in the recovery of Palestine. After the death of Saladin, they preached the crusade, by their epistles, their legates, and their missionaries, and they accomplishment of the pious work might have been expected from the zeal and talents of Innocent III. 84 Under that young and ambitious priest, the successors of Street, Peter attained the full meridian of their greatness, and in a reign of 18 years, he exercised a despotic command over the emperors and kings, whom he raised and deposed, over the nations, whom in Interdict of months or years deprived, for the offense of their rulers, of the exercise of Christian worship. In the Council of the Lateran he acted as the ecclesiastical, almost as the temporal, sovereign of the East and West. It was at the feet of his legate that John of England surrendered his crown, and Innocent may boast of the two most signal triumphs over sense and humanity, the establishment of transubstantiation, and the origin of the Inquisition. At his voice, two crusades, the fourth and the fifth, were undertaken, but, except a king of Hungary, they princes of the second order were at the head of the pilgrims, they Forces were inadequate to the design, nor did the effects correspond with the hopes and wishes of the Pope and the people. The Fourth Crusade was diverted from Syria to Constantinople, and the conquest of the Greek or Roman Empire by the Latins will form the proper and important subject of the next chapter. In the Fifth 85 200,000 francs were landed at the eastern mouth of the Nile. They reasonably hoped that Palestine must be subdued in Egypt, the seat and storehouse of the Sultan, and after a siege of 16 months, the Moslems deplored the loss of Damietta. But the Christian army was ruined by the pride and Insolence of the legate Pelagius, who, in the Pope's name, assumed the character of general, the sickly Franks were encompassed by the waters of the Nile and the Oriental forces. And it was by the evacuation of Damietta that they obtained a safe retreat, some concessions for the pilgrims, and the tardy restitution of the doubtful relic of the true cross. The failure may in some measure be ascribed to the abuse and multiplication of the Crusades, 
which were preached at the same time against the pagans of Livonia, the Moors of Spain, the Albigewa of France, and the kings of Sicily of the imperial family. 86 In these meritorious services, the volunteers might acquire at home the same spiritual indulgence, and a larger measure of temporal rewards, and even the popes, in their zeal against a domestic enemy, were sometimes tempted to forget the distress of their Syrian brethren. From the last age of the Crusades they derived the occasional command of an army and revenue, and some deep reasoners have suspected that the whole enterprise, from the First Synod of Placentia, was contrived and executed by the policy of Rome. The suspicion is not founded, either in nature or in fact. The successors of Street Peter appear to have followed, rather than guided, the impulse of manners and prejudice, without much foresight of the seasons, or cultivation of the soil they gathered the ripe and spontaneous fruits of the superstition of the times. They gathered these fruits without toil or personal danger, in the council of the Lateran, Innocent III, declared an ambiguous resolution of animating the crusaders by his example, but the pilot of the sacred vessel could not abandon the helm nor was Palestine ever blessed with the presence of a Roman pontiff. 87. 83. Return, Tom Assen, Discipline de l'Eglise, Tom 3p. 311 374, has copiously treated of the origin, abuses, and restrictions of these underscore tenths underscore. A theory was started but not pursued, that they were rightfully due to the Pope, a tenth of the Levites tenth to the high priest, Selden on tithes, see his works, vol. 3 p. 2 p. 1083 84, return, see the Gusta Innocentiae 3 in Murat Scripture Rare Italian, Tom 3p 486-568 85, Return, see the VTH Crusade, and the Siege of Damietta, in Jacobus A. Vitriaco, L. 3p 1125-1149, in the Gusta Dei of Bongersius, an eyewitness, Bernard Thesaurius, in Scripture Muratori, Tom 7 p. 825-846, c. 192-07, a contemporary, and Sinutus, Secreta Fidel Crucis, L3 p. 11 c. 49, a diligent compiler, and of the Arabians of Bulfaragius, Dynast p. 294, and the extracts at the end of Joinville, P. 533, 537, 540, 547, and C. 86, return, to those who took the cross against Mainfroy, the Pope, A.D. 1255, granted plenissimum peccatorum remissionum. Fidelis marabanter quat tantum eis promiteret pro sanguine. Christianorum effundem de quantum procruer infidelium aliquando. Matthew Paris p. 785. A high flight for the reason of the zeeth century. 87. Return, this simple idea is agreeable to the good sense of Mosheim, Institute. History Ecclesiastes. p. 332 and the fine philosophy of Hume, History of England, Vol. I. P. 330. 
the persons, the families, and estates of the pilgrims, were under the immediate protection of the popes, and these spiritual patrons soon claimed the prerogative of directing their operations, and enforcing, by commands and censures, the accomplishment of their vow. Frederick II, 88 the grandson of Barbarossa, was successively the pupil, the enemy, and the victim of the church. At the age of 21 years, and in obedience to his guardian Innocent III, he assumed the cross, the same promise was repeated at his royal and imperial coronations, and his marriage with the heiress of Jerusalem forever bound him to defend the kingdom of his son Conrad. But as Frederick advanced in age and authority, he repented of the rash engagements of his youth, his liberal sense and knowledge taught him to despise the phantoms of superstition and the crowns of Asia, he no longer entertained the same reverence for the successors of Innocent, and his ambition was occupied by the restoration of the Italian monarchy from Sicily to the Alps. But the success of this project would have reduced the popes to their primitive simplicity, and, after the delays and excuses of twelve years, they urged the emperor, with entreaties and threats, to fix the time and place of his departure for Palestine. In the harbors of Sicily and Apulia, he prepared a fleet of one hundred galleys, and of one hundred vessels, that were framed to transport and land two thousand five hundred knights, with their horses and attendants, his vassals of Naples and Germany formed a powerful army, and the number of English crusaders was magnified to sixty thousand by the report of fame. But the inevitable or affected slowness of these mighty preparations consumed the strength and provisions of the more indigent pilgrims, the multitude was thinned by sickness and desertion, and the sultry summer of Calabria anticipated the mischiefs of a Syrian campaign. At length the emperor hoisted sail at Brungesum, with a fleet and army of forty thousand men, but he kept the sea no more than three days, and his hasty retreat, which was ascribed by his friends to a grievous indisposition, was accused by his enemies as a voluntary and obstinate disobedience. For suspending his vow was Frederick excommunicated by Gregory IX, for presuming, the next year, to accomplish his vow, he was again excommunicated by the same pope. 89 While he served under the banner of the cross, a crusade was preached against him in Italy. And after his return, he was compelled to ask pardon for the injuries which he had suffered. The clergy and military orders of Palestine were previously instructed to renounce his communion and dispute his commands, and in his own kingdom, the emperor was forced to consent that the orders of the camp should be issued in the name of God and of the Christian Republic. Frederick entered Jerusalem in triumph, and with his own hands, for no priest would perform the office, he took the crown from the altar of the Holy Sepulchre. But the Patriarch cast an interdict on the Church, which his presence had profaned, and the Knights of the Hospital and Temple informed the Sultan how easily he might be surprised and slain in his unguarded visit to the River Jordan. In such a state of fanaticism and faction, victory was hopeless, and 
Defense was difficult, but the conclusion of an advantageous peace may be imputed to the discord of the Maometans, and their personal esteem for the character of Frederick. The enemy of the Church is accused of maintaining with the miscreants an intercourse of hospitality and friendship unworthy of a Christian, of despising the barrenness of the land, and of indulging a profane thought, that if Jehovah had seen the kingdom of Naples he never would have selected Palestine for the inheritance of his chosen people. Yet Frederick obtained from the Sultan the restitution of Jerusalem, of Bethlehem and Nazareth, of Tyre and Sidon, the Latins were allowed to inhabit and fortify. The city, an equal code of civil and religious freedom was ratified for the sectaries of Jesus and those of Muhammad, and while the former worshipped at the Holy Sepulchre, the latter might pray and preach in the mosque of the temple, ninety from whence. The prophet undertook his nocturnal journey to heaven. The clergy deplored this scandalous toleration, and the weaker Moslems were gradually expelled, but every rational object of the Crusades was accomplished without bloodshed, the churches were restored, they Monasteries were replenished, and, in the space of fifteen years, the Latins of Jerusalem exceeded the number of six thousand. This peace and prosperity, for which they were ungrateful to their benefactor, was terminated by the eruption of the strange and savage hordes of Charismians. Ninety-one flying from the arms of the Mughals, those shepherds 911 of the Caspian rolled headlong on Syria, and the union of the Franks with the sultans of Aleppo, Hems, and Damascus, was insufficient to stem the violence of the torrent. Whatever stood against them was cut off by the sword, or dragged into captivity, the military orders were almost exterminated in a single battle, and in the pillage of the city. In the profanation of the Holy Sepulchre, the Latins confess and regret the modesty and discipline of the Turks and Saracens. 88. Return, the original materials for the Crusade of Frederick. 2. May be drawn from Richard D. Street. Germano, in Muratori. Scripture Rerum Italian Tom 7 p. 1002 1013, and Matthew Paris p. 286, 291, 300, 302, 304. The most rational moderns are Flery, History Ecclesiastes Tom 16, Verto, Chevaliers de Mouth Tom I. L. 3, Gianoni, Historia Civile di Napoli, Tom 2. L. 16, and Muratori, Annali di Italia, Tom X. 89, Return, poor Muratori knows what to think, but knows not what to say, Chino Chi Illinois Capo, and C. P. 322. 90, Return the clergy artfully confounded the mosque or church of the temple with the holy sepulchre, and their willful error has deceived both Verto and Muratori. 91. Return, the eruption of the Charismians, or Chorismans, is related by Matthew Paris, p. 546, 547, and by Joinville. Nangus, and the Arabians, p. 111, 112, 191, 192, 528, 530. 911, return, they were in alliance with Iab, 
Sultan of Syria. Wilkin Vall. 6 p. 630 m. Of the Seven Crusades, the two last were undertaken by Louis the Ninth, King of France, who lost his liberty in Egypt, and his life on the coast of Africa. Twenty-eight years after his death, he was canonized at Rome, and sixty-five miracles were readily found, and solemnly attested, to justify the claim of the royal saint. Ninety-two The voice of history renders a more honorable testimony, that he united the virtues of a king, a hero, and a man, that his martial spirit was tempered by the love of private and public justice, and that Louis was the father of his people, the friend of his neighbors, and the terror of the infidels. Superstition alone, in all the extent of her baleful influence. 93 Corrupted his understanding and his heart, his devotion. Stooped to admire and imitate the begging friars of Francis and Dominic, he pursued with blind and cruel zeal the enemies of the faith, and the best of kings twice descended from his throne to seek the adventures of a spiritual knight errant. A monkish historian would have been content to applaud the most despicable part of his character, but the noble and gallant Joinville, 94, who shared the friendship and captivity of Louis, has traced with the pencil of nature the free portrait of his virtues as well as of his failings. From this intimate knowledge we may learn to suspect the political views of depressing their great vassals, which are so often imputed to the royal authors of the Crusades. Above all the princes of the Middle Ages, Louis IX successfully labored to restore the prerogatives of the crown. But it was at home and not in the East, that he acquired for himself and his posterity, his vow was the result of enthusiasm and sickness, and if he were the promoter, he was likewise the victim, of his holy madness. For the invasion of Egypt, France was exhausted of her troops and treasures, he covered the sea of Cyprus with 1800 sails, the most modest enumeration amounts to 50,000 men, and, if we might trust his own Confession, as it is reported by Oriental Vanity, he disembarked 9,500 horse, and 130,000 foot, who performed their pilgrimage under the shadow of his power. 95. 92. Return, read, if you can, the life and miracles of Street. Lewis by the confessor of Queen Margaret, p. 291-523. Joinville, du Louvre. 93. Return, he believed all that Mother Church taught. Joinville, p. 10, but he cautioned Joinville against disputing. With infidels. El homme said he in his old language, Quand Illinois. O.T. Medire de Laloy Crestine, N.E. Doit Pa Defendra Laloy. Crestine N.E. Mays Q.D.L.S.P., D. Quoi Illinois Doit Donner Parmi L.E. Vontra Dedans, Tant Cum L.Y. Put Entree, P. 12. 94. Return, I have two editions of Joinville, the one, Paris. 1668 most valuable for the observations of Duckenge, the other. Paris, O Louvre, 1761, most precious for the pure and authentic. Text, a mis of which has been recently discovered. The last. Edition proves that the history of Street. Lewis was finished A.D. 1309, without explaining, 
or even admiring, the age of the author, which must have exceeded 90 years, preface, px. Observations D. Duckenge, p. 17. 95, Return, Joinville, p. 32. Arabic Extracts, p. 549. Asterisk. Note, asterisk compare Wilkin, Vol. 7 p. 94 m. Incomplete Armor, the Aura Flam waving before him, Lewis leaped. Foremost on the beach, and the strong city of Damietta, which had cost his predecessors a siege of sixteen months, was abandoned on the first assault by the trembling Moslems. But Damietta was the first and the last of his conquests, and in the fifth and sixth crusades, the same causes, almost on the same ground, were productive of similar calamities. 96 After a ruinous delay, which introduced into the camp the seeds of an epidemic disease, the Franks advanced from the sea coast towards the capital of Egypt and strove to surmount the unseasonable inundation of the Nile, which opposed their progress. Under the eye of their intrepid Monarch, the barons and knights of France displayed their invincible contempt of danger and discipline, his brother, the Count of Artois, stormed with inconsiderate valour the town of Masura, and the carrier pigeons announced to the inhabitants of Cairo that all was lost. But a soldier, who afterwards usurped the scepter, rallied the flying troops, the main body of the Christians was far behind the vanguard, and Artois was overpowered and slain. A shower of Greek fire was incessantly poured on the invaders, the Nile was commanded by the Egyptian galleys, the open country by the Arabs, all provisions were intercepted, each day aggravated the sickness and famine, and about the same time a retreat was found to be necessary and impracticable. The Oriental writers confess that Louis might have escaped if he would have deserted his subjects, he was made prisoner with the greatest part of his nobles, all who could not redeem their lives by service or ransom were inhumanly massacred, and the walls of Cairo were decorated with a circle of Christian heads. 97 The King of France was loaded with chains, but the generous victor, a great-grandson of the brother of Saladin, sent a robe of honor to his royal captive, and his deliverance, with that of his soldiers, was obtained by the restitution of Damietta. 98 And the payment of 400,000 pieces of gold. In a soft and luxurious climate, the degenerate children of the companions of Naureddin and Saladin were incapable of resisting. The flower of European chivalry, they triumphed by the arms of their slaves or Mamelukes, the hardy natives of Tartary, who at a tender age had been purchased of the Syrian merchants, and were educated in the camp and palace of the Sultan. But Egypt soon afforded a new example of the danger of Pertorian bands, and the rage of these ferocious animals, who had been let loose on the strangers, was provoked to devour their benefactor. In the pride of conquest, Turin Shah, the last of his race, was murdered by his Mamelukes, and the most daring of the assassins entered the chamber of the captive king, with drawn cimeters, and their hands imbrued in the blood of their sultan. The firmness of Louis commanded their respect, 
99 their avarice prevailed over cruelty. And zeal, the treaty was accomplished, and the king of France, with the relics of his army, was permitted to embark for Palestine. He wasted four years within the walls of Acre, unable to visit Jerusalem, and unwilling to return without glory to his native country. 96. Return, the last editors have enriched their join Vili with large and curious extracts from the Arabic historians, Makrazai, a bull feather, and C. See likewise a bull Faragius, Dynast P. 322-325, who calls him by the corrupt name of underscore Rita Friends underscore. Matthew Paris p. 683-684, has described the rival folly of the French and English who fought and fell at Masura. 97, Return, Savary, in his agreeable letters Sir L. Egypt, has given a description of Damietta, Tom I, Letra XXIII, p. 274-290, and a narrative of the exposition of Street. Lewis, XXV. p. 306350. 98. Return, for the ransom of Street. Lewis, a million of Byzance. was asked and granted, but the Sultan's generosity reduced that. Some to 800,000 Byzance, which are valued by Joinville at 400,000. French livres of his own time, and expressed by Matthew Paris by 100,000 marks of silver, Duckenge, Dissertation XX, Sir. Joinville. 99, Return, the idea of the emirs to choose Louis for their Sultan is seriously attested by Joinville, p. 77, 78, and does not appear to me so absurd as to M. D. Voltaire, History General. Tom. 2 p. 386, 387. The Mamelukes themselves were strangers. Rebels, and equals, they had felt his valor, they hoped his conversion, and such a motion, which was not seconded, might be made perhaps by a secret Christian in their tumultuous assembly. Asterisk Note, Asterisk Wilkin, Vol. 7p257, thinks the proposition could not have been made in earnest, M. The memory of his defeat excited Lewis, after sixteen years of wisdom and repose, to undertake the seventh and last of the Crusades. His finances were restored, his kingdom was enlarged, a new generation of warriors had arisen, and he advanced with fresh confidence at the head of 6,000 horse and 30,000 foot. The loss of Antioch had provoked the enterprise, a wild hope of baptizing the king of Tunis tempted him to steer for the African coast, and the report of an immense treasure reconciled his troops to the delay of their voyage to the Holy Land. Instead of a proselyte, he found a siege, the French panted and died on the burning sands, street. Louis expired in his tent, and no sooner had he closed his eyes, than his son and successor gave the Signal of the Retreat 100 It is thus, says a lively writer, that a Christian king died near the ruins of Carthage, waging war against the sectaries of Muhammad, in a land to which Dido had introduced the deities of Syria. 101 100 Return, see the expedition in the annals of Street. Lewis by 
William D. Nangus, p. 270-287, and the Arabic Extracts, p. 545. 555, of the Louvre edition of Joinville. 101, Return, Voltaire, History. General, Tom. 2p391. A more unjust and absurd constitution cannot be devised than that, which condemns the natives of a country to perpetual servitude under the arbitrary dominion of strangers and slaves. Yet such has been the state of Egypt above five hundred years. The most illustrious sultans of the Baharite and Borjite dynasties 102 were themselves promoted from the Tartar and Circassian bands. And the four and twenty bays, or military chiefs, have ever been succeeded, not by their sons, but by their servants. They produce the great charter of their liberties, the Treaty of Salimne. First with the Republic, 103 and the Othman Emperor still accepts from Egypt a slight acknowledgement of tribute and subjection. With some breathing intervals of peace and order, the two Dynasties are marked as a period of rapine and bloodshed, 104 but their throne, however shaken, reposed on the two pillars of discipline and valor, their sway extended over Egypt, Nubia, Arabia, and Syria, their Mamelukes were multiplied from 800 to 25,000 horse, and their numbers were Increased by a provincial militia of 107 thousand foot, and the occasional aid of 66,000 Arabs. 105 princes of such power and spirit could not long endure. On their coast a hostile and independent nation, and if the ruin of the Franks was postponed about 40 years, they were indebted to the cares of an unsettled reign, to the invasion of the Mughals, and to the occasional aid of some warlike pilgrims. Among these, the English reader will observe the name of our first Edward, who assumed the cross in the lifetime of his father, Henry. At the head of a thousand soldiers the future conqueror of Wales and Scotland delivered Acre from a siege, marched as far as Nazareth with an army of 9,000 men, emulated the fame of his uncle Richard, extorted, by his valour, a ten years' truce. 1051 and escaped, with a dangerous wound, from the dagger of a fanatic underscore assassin underscore 106 1061 Antioch, 107 whose situation had been less exposed to the calamities of the Holy War, was finally occupied and ruined by Bondok Dar, or Bibars, Sultan of Egypt and Syria, the Latin principality was extinguished, and the first seat of the Christian name was dispeopled by the slaughter of 17, and the captivity of 100,000 of her inhabitants. The maritime towns of Laodicea, Gabala, Tripoli, Baradus, Sidon, Tyre, and Jaffa, and the stronger castles of the Hospitallers and Templars, successively fell, and the whole existence of the Franks was confined to the city and colony of Street. John of Acre, which is sometimes described by the more classic title of Ptolemy. 102. Return, the chronology of the two dynasties of Mamelukes. The Baharites, Turks, or Tartars of Kipzak, and the Borgites. Circassians, is given by Pakuk, Prolegum at a Bulfarag, p. 631 and Deguines, 
Tom IP 264-270, Their History From A Bullfeather, Macrozy, N.C., To the Beginning of the XVTH Century, by The Same M. D. Geens, Tom 4P 110-328 103, Return, Savary, Lettre sur l'Egypte, Tom 2 Lettre 15 P. 189-208 I much question the authenticity of this copy, yet it is true, that Sultan Salim concluded a treaty with the Circassians or Mamelukes of Egypt, and left them in possession of arms, riches, and power. Cianua Bray de l'Estoyer Auto Main Composed in Egypt, and translated by M. Dijon Tom I. P. 5558, Paris, 1781, A Curious, Authentic, and National History. 104, Return, S.I. Totem Quo Regnum Occuparent Tempus Respicious. Per Certum Quat Fini Pro Pius, Reperis Il Lud Bellis, Pugnus. Injurious, A.C. Rapinus Refertum, Al Janabi. Apud Pakuk, P31. The Reign of Mohammed, AD 1311-1341, affords a happy exception. Deakins, Tom 4P 208-210. 105, Return, they are now reduced to 8500, but the expense of each Mameluk may be rated at 100 Louis, and Egypt groans. Under the avarice and insolence of these strangers, Voyages D. Volney, Tom. I. P. 89187. 1051, Return, Gibbon colors rather highly the success of Edward. Wilkin is more accurate Vol. 7 P. 593, and C. M. 106, Return. See Cart's History of England, Vol. 2 p. 165-175, and his original authors, Thomas Wykes and Walter Hemingford, L3 C. 34, 35, in Gale's Collection, Tom 2 p. 97, 589-592. They are both ignorant of the Princess Eleanor's Piety in sucking the poisoned wound, and saving her husband at the risk of her own life. 1061, Return, the Sultan Bibars was concerned in this attempt. At Assassination Wilkin, Vol. 7 p. 602. Ptolemy's Lucenes Eyes is the earliest authority for the devotion of Eleonora. Ibid. 605 m. 107, Return, Sinutus, Secret. Fidelium Crucis, 1. 3 p. 12. c. 9, and de Geens, Histoire des Huns, Tom. 4 p. 143, from the Arabic historians. After the loss of Jerusalem, Acre. 108 which is distant about 70 miles, became the metropolis of the Latin Christians, and was adorned with strong and stately buildings, with aqueducts, an artificial port, and a double wall. The population was increased by the incessant streams of pilgrims and fugitives, in the pauses of hostility the trade of the east and west was attracted to this convenient station, and the market could offer the produce of every clime and the interpreters of every tongue. But in this conflux of nations, every vice was propagated and practiced, of all the disciples of Jesus and Muhammad, the male and female. Inhabitants of Acre were esteemed the most corrupt, nor could they abuse of religion be corrected by the discipline of law. 
the city had many sovereigns and no government. The kings of Jerusalem and Cyprus, of the house of Lucignan, the princes of Antioch, they counts of Tripoli and Sidon, the great masters of the hospital, the temple, and the Teutonic order, the republics of Venice. Genoa, and Pisa, the Pope's legate, the kings of France and England, assumed an independent command, seventeen tribunals. Exercised the power of life and death, every criminal was protected in the adjacent quarter, and the perpetual jealousy of the nations often burst forth in acts of violence and blood. Some Adventurers, who disgraced the ensign of the cross, compensated their want of pay by the plunder of the Mohammedan villages. Nineteen Syrian merchants, who traded under the public faith, were despoiled and hanged by the Christians, and the denial of satisfaction justified the arms of the Sultan Kalil. He marched against Acre at the head of sixty thousand horse and one hundred and forty thousand foot, his train of artillery, if I may use the word, was numerous and weighty, the separate timbers of a single engine were transported in one hundred wagons, and the royal historian Abulfetha, who served with the troops of Hama, was himself a spectator of the holy war. Whatever might be the vices of the Franks, their courage was rekindled by enthusiasm and despair, but they were torn by the discord of seventeen chiefs, and overwhelmed on all sides by the powers of the Sultan. After a siege of thirty-three days, the double wall was forced by the Moslems, the principal tower yielded to their engines, the Mamelukes made a general assault, the city was stormed, and death or slavery was the lot of sixty thousand Christians. The convent, or rather fortress, of the Templars resisted three days longer. But the great master was pierced with an arrow, and, of five hundred knights, only ten were left alive, less happy than they victims of the sword, if they lived to suffer on a scaffold, in the unjust and cruel proscription of the whole order. The king of Jerusalem, the patriarch and the great master of the hospital, effected their retreat to the shore, but the sea was rough, the vessels were insufficient, and great numbers of the fugitives were drowned before they could reach the Isle of Cyprus, which might comfort Lusignan for the loss of Palestine. By the command of the Sultan, the churches and fortifications of the Latin cities were demolished, a motive of avarice or fear still opened the Holy Sepulchre to some devout and defenseless pilgrims, and a Mournful and solitary silence prevailed along the coast which had so long resounded with the world's debate. 109. 108. Return, the state of Acre is represented in all the chronicles of T.E. Times, and most accurately in John Villainy, L. 7 c. 144, in Muratori. Scriptores Rerum Italicarum, Tom. 13. 337, 338. 109, Return, see the final expulsion of the Franks, in Sinutus. L. 3. P. 12. C. 1122, A Bullfeather, Macrazi, and C. in D. Gaines. Tom. 4p 162, 164, and Verto, Tom. I. L. 3. P. 
p 307428 asterisk note asterisk after these chapters of gibbon the masterly prize composition essay sur influence des croyades sur l'europe p a r a h l heron traduit d l allemand p a r charles villers paris 1808 or the original german in herens vermischt schriften may be read with great advantage m chapter lx the fourth crusade part i schism of the greeks and latins state of constantinople revolt of the bulgarians isaac angelus dethroned by his brother alexius origin of the fourth crusade alliance of the french and venetians with the son of isaac their naval expedition to Constantinople, the two sieges and final conquest of the city by the Latins. The restoration of the Western Empire by Charlemagne was speedily followed by the separation of the Greek and Latin churches. 1a. Religious and national animosity still divides the two largest communions of the Christian world, and the schisma of Constantinople by alienating her most useful allies and provoking her most dangerous enemies has precipitated the decline and fall of the Roman Empire in the East 1 return in the successive centuries from the Ixth to the 80th Mosheim traces the schism of the Greeks with learning clearness and impartiality, the underscore filioque underscore, institute. History. Ecclesiastes. p. 277, Leo 3. p. 303 Photius, p. 307, 308. Michael. Cyril Arias, p. 370, 371, and c. In the course of the present history, the aversion of the Greeks for the Latins has been often visible and conspicuous. It was originally derived from the disdain of servitude, inflamed, after the time of Constantine, by the pride of equality or dominion, and finally exasperated by the preference which their rebellious subjects had given to the alliance of the Franks. In every age, the Greeks were proud of their superiority in profane and religious knowledge, they had first received the light of Christianity, they had pronounced the decrees of the seven general councils, they alone possessed the language of scripture and philosophy, nor should the barbarians immersed in the darkness of the West, to presume to argue on the high end. Mysterious questions of theological science. Those barbarians despised in then turn the restless and subtle levity of the Orientals, the authors of every heresy, and blessed their own simplicity, which was content to hold the tradition of the Apostolic Church. Yet in the 7th century, the synods of Spain, and afterwards of France, improved or corrupted the Nicene Creed, on the mysterious subject of the third person of the Trinity. 3. In the long controversies of the East, the nature and generation of the Christ had been scrupulously defined, and they well-known relation of father and son seemed to convey a faint image to the human mind. The idea of birth was less analogous to the Holy Spirit, who, instead of a divine gift or a tribute, was considered by the Catholics as a substance, a person, a god, he was not begotten, but in the orthodox style he underscore preceded underscore did 
he proceed from the father alone, perhaps underscore by underscore the son? Or from the father underscore and underscore the son? The first of these opinions was asserted by the Greeks, the second by the Latins, and they addition to the Nicene Creed of the word underscore filioque underscore, kindled they flame of discord between the Oriental and the Gallic churches. In the origin of the disputes the Roman pontiffs affected a character of neutrality and moderation, for they condemned the innovation, but they acquiesced in the sentiment, of their Transalpine brethren, they seemed desirous of casting a veil of Silence and charity over the superfluous research, and in the correspondence of Charlemagne and Leo III, the Pope assumes the liberality of a statesman, and the prince descends to the passions and prejudices of a priest. 5. But the orthodoxy of Rome spontaneously obeyed the impulse of the temporal policy, and they Underscore filioque underscore, which Leo wished to erase, was transcribed in the symbol and chanted in the liturgy of the Vatican. The Nicene and Athanasian creeds are held as the Catholic faith, without which none can be saved, and both Papists and Protestants must now sustain and return the anathemas of the Greeks, who deny they procession of the Holy Ghost from the Son, as well as from the Father. Such articles of faith are not susceptible of treaty, but the rules of discipline will vary in remote and independent churches, and the reason, even of divines, might allow, that the difference is inevitable and harmless. The craft or superstition of Rome has imposed on her priests and deacons the rigid obligation of celibacy, among the Greeks it is confined to the bishops, the loss is compensated by dignity or annihilated by age, and the parochial clergy, the papas, enjoy the conjugal society of the wives whom they have married before their entrance into holy orders. A question concerning the underscore Zim's underscore was fiercely debated in the 11th century, and the essence of the Eucharist was supposed in the East and West to depend on the use of leavened or unleavened bread. Shall I mention in a serious history the furious reproaches that were urged against the Latins, who for a long while remained on the defensive? They neglected to abstain, according to the apostolical decree, from things strangled, and from blood, they fasted, a Jewish observance, on the Saturday of each week, during the first week of Lent they permitted the use of milk and cheese, six their infirm. Monks were indulged in the taste of flesh, and animal grease was substituted for the want of vegetable oil, the holy chrism or unction in baptism was reserved to the episcopal order, the bishops, as the bridegrooms of their churches, were decorated with rings, their priests shaved their faces, and baptized by a single immersion. Such were the crimes which provoked the zeal of the patriarchs of Constantinople, and which were justified with equal zeal by the doctors of the Latin Church. 7. 2. Return, Andre v. Dusa b. i v. k. Apatro Paoi, Andre v. e. k. to v. Anadunt v. t. h. v. gar aspiria moira v. uppercon genmata, fought. Epist p. 47, edit. Montacut. The Oriental Patriarch continues to apply the images of thunder, earthquake, hail, wild boar, 
precursors of Antichrist, and C, and C. 3. Return, the mysterious subject of the procession of the holy. Ghost is discussed in the historical, theological, and controversial sense, or nonsense, by the Jesuit Pedavias. Dogmata Theologica, Tom 2L, 7P, 362-440. 4. Return, before the Shrine of Street. Peter he placed two shields of the weight of ninety-four and one-half pounds of pure silver, on which he inscribed the text of both creeds, Eutroxim below, Pro Amor. Et underscore Cotella underscore Orthodox Fide, Anastas in Leon. 3 in Muratori, Tom. 3 pars. IP 208. His language most clearly proves that neither the underscore filioque underscore nor the Athanasian Creed were received at Rome about the year 830. 5. Return, the Missy of Charlemagne pressed him to declare that all who rejected the underscore filioque underscore, or at least the doctrine, must be damned. All, replies the Pope, are not capable of reaching the Altiorum Mysteria Qui Potua Rit, et non volua Rit. Salvus esse non potest, collect. Consul. Tom. 9p 277-286. The underscore Potua Rit underscore would leave a large loophole of salvation. 6. Return, in France, after some harsher loss, the ecclesiastical discipline is now relaxed, milk, cheese, and butter, are become a perpetual, and eggs an annual, indulgence in Lent, vi privé de François, Tom 2 p. 2738. 7. Return the original monuments of the schism, of the charges of the Greeks against the Latins, are deposited in the epistles of Photius, Epist Encyclica, 2 p. 4761, and of Michael Cerularius, Canisii Antique Lections, Tom 3 p. ip. 281-324, edit. Basinage with the prolix answer of Cardinal Humbert. Bigotry and national aversion are powerful magnifiers of every object of dispute, but the immediate cause of the schism of the Greeks may be traced in the emulation of the leading prelates who maintained the supremacy of the old metropolis superior to all, and of the reigning capital, inferior to none, in the Christian world. About the middle of the 9th century, Photius ate an ambitious layman, the captain of the guards and principal secretary, was promoted by merit and favor to the more desirable office of Patriarch of Constantinople. In science, even ecclesiastical science, he surpassed the clergy of the age, and the purity of his morals has never been impeached, but his ordination was hasty, his rise was irregular, and Ignatius, his abdicated predecessor, was yet supported by the public compassion and the obstinacy of his adherents. They appealed to the tribunal of Nicholas I, one of the proudest and most aspiring of the Roman pontiffs, who embraced the welcome opportunity of judging and condemning his rival of the East. Their quarrel was embittered by a conflict of jurisdiction over the king and nation of the Bulgarians, nor was their recent conversion to Christianity of much avail to either prelate, unless he could number the proselytes among the subjects of his power. 
with the aid of his court the Greek patriarch was victorious, but in the furious contest he deposed in his turn the successor of Street, Peter, and involved the Latin church in the reproach of heresy and schism. Photius sacrificed the peace of the world to a short and precarious reign, he fell with his patron, the Xar Bardas. And Basil the Macedonian performed an act of justice in the restoration of Ignatius, whose age and dignity had not been sufficiently respected. From his monastery, or prison, Photius solicited the favor of the emperor by pathetic complaints and artful flattery, and the eyes of his rival were scarcely closed when he was again restored to the throne of Constantinople. After the death of Basil he experienced the vicissitudes of courts and the ingratitude of a royal pupil, the patriarch was again deposed, and in his last solitary hours he might regret the freedom of a secular and studious life. In each revolution, the breath the nod, of the sovereign had been accepted by a submissive clergy, and a synod of three hundred bishops was always prepared to hail the triumph, or to stigmatize the fall of the holy, or the execrable, Photius. Nine by a delusive promise of succor or reward, the popes were tempted to countenance these various proceedings, and the synods of Constantinople were ratified by their epistles or legates. But the court and the people, Ignatius and Photius, were equally adverse to their claims, their ministers were insulted or imprisoned, the procession of the Holy Ghost was forgotten, Bulgaria was forever annexed to the Byzantine throne, and the schism was prolonged by their rigid censure of all the multiplied ordinations of an irregular patriarch. The darkness and corruption of the tenth century suspended the intercourse, without reconciling the minds of the two nations. But when the Norman sword restored the churches of Apulia to the jurisdiction of Rome, the departing Flock was warned, by a petulant epistle of the Greek patriarch, to avoid and abhor the errors of the Latins. The rising majesty of Rome could no longer brook the insolence of a rebel, and Michael Cerularius was excommunicated in the heart of Constantinople by the Pope's legates. Shaking the dust from their feet, they deposited on the altar of Street. Sophia a direful anathema, ten which enumerates the seven mortal heresies of the Greeks, and devotes the guilty teachers, and their unhappy sectaries, to the eternal society of the devil and his angels. According to the emergencies of the church and state, a friendly Correspondence was sometimes resumed, the language of charity and concord was sometimes affected, but the Greeks have never recanted their errors, the popes have never repealed their sentence, and from this thunderbolt we may date the consummation of the schism. It was enlarged by each ambitious step of the Roman pontiffs, the emperors blushed and trembled at the ignominious fate of their royal brethren of Germany, and the people were scandalized by the temporal power and military life of the Latin clergy. 11. 8. Return, the XTH volume of the Venice edition of the Councils contains all the acts of the synods and history of Photius, the are abridged, with a faint tinge of prejudice or prudence, by Dupin and Fleury. 
9. Return, the Synod of Constantinople, held in the year 869. Is the eighth of the General Councils, the last assembly of the East which is recognized by the Roman Church. She rejects the Synods of Constantinople of the years 867 and 879, which were, however, equally numerous and noisy, but they were favorable to Photius. 10. Return, see this anathema in the Councils, Tom 11 p. 1457-1460 11. Return, Anacomna, Alexiad, LIP 3133, represents the abhorrence, not only of the Church, but of the Palace, for Gregory VII, the Popes and the Latin Communion. The style of Sin Amos and Nystus is still more vehement. Yet how calm is the voice of history compared with that of polemics? The aversion of the Greeks and Latins was nourished and manifested in the three first expeditions to the Holy Land. Alexius Comnus contrived the absence at least of the formidable pilgrims, his successors, Manuel and Isaac Angelus, conspired with the Moslems for the ruin of the greatest princes of the Franks, and their crooked and malignant policy was seconded by the active and voluntary obedience of every order of their subjects. Of this hostile temper, a large portion may doubtless be ascribed to the difference of language, dress and manners, which severs and alienates the nations of the globe. The pride, as well as the prudence, of the sovereign was deeply wounded by the intrusion of foreign armies, that claimed a right of traversing his dominions, and passing under the walls of his capital, his subjects were insulted and plundered by the rude strangers of the West, and the hatred of the pusillanimous Greeks was sharpened by secret envy of the bold and pious enterprises of the Franks. But these profane causes of national enmity were fortified and inflamed by the venom of religious zeal. Instead of a kind embrace, a hospitable reception from their Christian brethren of the East, every tongue was taught to repeat the names of schismatic and heretic, more odious to an orthodox ear than those of pagan and infidel, instead of being loved for the general conformity of faith and worship, they were abhorred for some rules of discipline, some questions of theology, in which themselves or their teachers might differ from the Oriental Church. In the crusade of Louis VII, the Greek clergy washed and purified the altars which had been defiled by the sacrifice of a French priest. The companions of Frederick Barbarossa deplore the injuries which they endured, both in word and deed, from the peculiar rancor of the bishops and monks. Their prayers and sermons excited the people against the impious barbarians, and the patriarch is accused of declaring that they faithful might obtain the redemption of all their sins by the extirpation of the schismatics. Twelve an enthusiast, named Dorotheus, alarmed the fears and restored the confidence of the emperor by a prophetic assurance, that the German heretic, after assaulting the gate of block urns, would be made a signal example of the divine vengeance. The passage of these mighty armies were rare and perilous events, but the Crusades introduced a frequent and familiar intercourse between the two nations, which enlarged 
their knowledge without abating their prejudices. The wealth and luxury of Constantinople demanded the productions of every climate, these imports were balanced by the art and labor of her numerous inhabitants, her situation invites the commerce of the world, and, in every period of her existence, that commerce has been in the hands of foreigners. After the decline of Amalfi, the Venetians, Pisans and Genoese, introduced their factories and settlements into the capital of the empire, their services were rewarded with honors and immunities, they acquired the possession of lands and houses, their families were multiplied by marriages with the natives, and, after the toleration of a Mohammedan mosque, it was impossible to interdict the churches of the Roman Rite. 13 The two wives of Manuel Comnus 14 were of the race of the Franks, the first, a sister-in-law of the Emperor. Conrad, the second, a daughter of the Prince of Antioch, he obtained for his son Alexius a daughter of Philip Augustus, King of France, and he bestowed his own daughter on a Marquis of Montferrat, who was educated and dignified in the palace of Constantinople. The Greek encountered the arms, and aspired to the Empire, of the West, he esteemed the valor, and trusted the fidelity, of the Franks, fifteen their military talents were unfitly recompensed by the lucrative offices of judges and treasures, the policy of Manuel had solicited the alliance of the Pope, and the popular voice accused him of a partial bias to the nation and religion of the Latins. 16 During his reign, and that of his successor Alexius, they were exposed at Constantinople to the reproach of foreigners, heretics and favorites, and this triple guilt was severely expiated in the tumult, which announced the return and elevation of Andronicus. 17 The people rose in arms. From the Asiatic shore the tyrant dispatched his troops and galleys to assist the national revenge, and the hopeless resistance of the strangers served only to justify the rage, and sharpen the daggers, of the assassins. Neither age, nor sex, nor the ties of friendship or kindred, could save the victims of national hatred and avarice and religious zeal, the Latins were slaughtered in their houses and in the streets, their quarter was reduced to ashes, the clergy were burnt in their churches, and the sick in their hospitals, and some estimate may be formed of the slain from the clemency which sold above 4,000 Christians in perpetual slavery to the Turks. The priests and monks were the loudest and most active in the destruction of the schismatics, and they chanted a thanksgiving to the Lord, when the head of a Roman cardinal, the Pope's legate, was severed from his body, fastened to the tail of a dog, and dragged, with savage mockery, through the city. The more diligent of the strangers had retreated, on the first alarm, to their vessels, and escaped through the Hellespont from the scene of blood. In their flight, they burned and ravaged two hundred miles of the sea coast inflicted a severe revenge on the guiltless subjects of the empire, marked the priests and monks as their peculiar enemies, and compensated, by the accumulation of plunder, the loss of their property and friends. On their return, they exposed to Italy and Europe the wealth and weakness, the perfidy and malice 
of the Greeks, whose vices were painted as the genuine characters of heresy and schism. The scruples of the First Crusaders had neglected the fairest opportunities of securing, by the possession of Constantinople, the way to the Holy Land, domestic revolution invited, and almost compelled, the French and Venetians to achieve the conquest of the Roman Empire of the East. 12. Return, his anonymous historian, Dexpedit. Asiat. Fred. I. In Canacy I Lection. Antique Tom. 3 Pars 2. p. 511, Edit. Basinage mentions the sermons of the Greek patriarch, Quomodo. Grisus injunxerat in remissionum peccatorum patagdinos oxidir. Et delare de terra. Tejano observes, in scriptores freher, Tom. IP 409, edit. Strav, Grisi herticos nos appellant, clerici. Et manachi dictus et factis persequentur. We may add the Declaration of the Emperor Baldwin fifteen years afterwards, H.C. E.S.T. underscore gens underscore, Q. Latinos omnes non hominum nomini, said canum. Dignabatut, quorum sanguinum f under a peen inter merita. Reputabant, gusta innocent. 3, c. 92, in Muratori, Scripture. Rerum Italicarum, Tom. 3 Pars I, p. 536. There may be some exaggeration, but it was as effectual for the action and reaction of hatred. 13, Return, C. Anacomna, Alexiad, L6 p. 161, 162. And a remarkable passage of Nystus, in Manuel, LVC, 9, who observes of the Venetians, Kata SMHNHKJ Ratria V then. Constantinopolin THV Oikia V Laxantho, and C. 14, Return, Dukenge, Fam. Byzant. P. 186, 187. 15. Return, Nystus and Manuel L. 7C2. Reganti and M. Manuel. Apud eum tantum latinus populus reparerat gratium. Ut neglectus graculi suis tan quam virus malibus et. F. Minutus. Solis latinis grandia committeret negotia. Erga eos profusa liberalitate abunda bat. Ex omni orbat eum. Tan quam ad benefactorum nobles et ignobles concurribant. Willem. Tear. XXII c 10. 16. Return, the suspicions of the Greeks would have been confirmed, if they had seen the political epistles of Manuel II. Pope Alexander III, the enemy of his enemy Frederick I, in which the Emperor declares his wish of uniting the Greeks and Latins as one flock under one shepherd, and C. C. Fleury, History Ecclesiastes Tom. 15 p. 187, 213, 243. 17. Return. See the Greek and Latin narratives in Nystus, in Alexio Comno, c. 10, and William of Tyre, LXXII, c. 10, 11, 12, 13, the first soft and concise, the second loud, copious, and tragical. In the series of the Byzantine princes, I have exhibited the Hypocrisy and ambition, the tyranny and fall of Andronicus, the 
last male of the Komnian family who reigned at Constantinople. The revolution, which cast him headlong from the throne, saved an exalted Isaac Angelus, 18 who descended by the females from the same imperial dynasty. The successor of a second Nero might have found it an easy task to deserve the esteem and affection of his subjects, they sometimes had reason to regret the administration of Andronicus. The sound and vigorous mind of the tyrant was capable of discerning the connection between his own and the public interest, and while he was feared by all who could inspire him with fear, the unsuspected people, and the remote provinces, might bless the inexorable justice of their master. But his successor was vain and jealous of the supreme power, which he wanted courage and abilities to exercise, his vices were pernicious, his virtues, if he possessed any virtues, were useless, to mankind, and the Greeks, who imputed their calamities to his negligence, denied him the merit of any transient or accidental benefits of the times. Isaac slept on the throne, and was awakened only by the sound of pleasure, his vacant hours were amused by comedians and buffoons, and even to these buffoons the emperor was an object of contempt, his feasts and buildings exceeded the examples of royal luxury, the number of his eunuchs and domestics amounted to 20,000, and a daily sum of 4,000 pounds of silver would swell to 4 millions, sterling the annual expense of his household and table. His poverty was relieved by oppression, and the public discontent was inflamed by equal abuses in the collection, and the application, of the revenue. While the Greeks numbered the days of their servitude, a flattering prophet, whom he rewarded with the dignity of patriarch, assured him of a long and victorious reign of thirty-two years, during which he should extend his sway to Mount Libanus, and his conquests beyond the Euphrates. But his only step towards the accomplishment of the prediction was a splendid and scandalous embassy to Saladin, 19 to demand the restitution of the Holy Sepulchre, and to propose an offensive and defensive league with the enemy of the Christian name. In these unworthy hands of Isaac and his brother, the remains of the Greek Empire crumbled into dust. The island of Cyprus, whose name excites the ideas of elegance and pleasure, was usurped by his namesake, a Comnian prince, and by a strange concatenation of events, the sword of our English Richard bestowed that kingdom on the house of Lusignan, a rich compensation for the loss of Jerusalem. 18. Return the history of the reign of Isaac Angelus is composed, in three books, by the Senator Nystus, p. 228-290, and his offices of Logothete, or Principal Secretary, and Judge of the Vale or Palace, could not bribe the impartiality of the historian. He wrote, it is true, after the fall and death of his Benefactor. 19. Return, C. Bohadan, V. I. T. Saladin. P. 129-131-226, Ver. Schultens. The ambassador of Isaac was equally versed in the Greek, French, and Arabic languages, a rare instance in those times. His embassies were received with honor, dismissed without effect, 
and reported with scandal in the West. The honor of the monarchy and the safety of the capital were deeply wounded by the revolt of the Bulgarians and Wallachians. Since the victory of the Second Basel, they had supported, above 170 years, the loose dominion of the Byzantine princes, but no effectual measures had been adopted to impose the yoke of laws and manners on these savage tribes. By the command of Isaac, their sole means of subsistence, their flocks and herds, were driven away, to contribute towards the pomp of the royal nuptials, and their fierce warriors were exasperated by the denial of equal rank and pay in the military service. Peter and Asin, two powerful chiefs, of the race of the ancient kings, twenty, asserted their own rights and the national freedom, their demoniac impostors proclaimed to the crowd, that their glorious patron street, Demetrius had forever deserted the cause of the Greeks, and the conflagration spread from the banks of the Danube to the hills of Macedonia and Thrace. After some faint efforts, Isaac Angelus and his brother acquiesced in their independence, and the imperial troops were soon discouraged by the bones of their fellow soldiers, that were scattered along the passes of Mount Hamas. By the arms and policy of John or Joan Nices, the Second Kingdom of Bulgaria was firmly established. The subtle barbarian sent an embassy to Innocent III, to acknowledge himself a genuine son of Rome in descent and religion, 21 and humbly received from the Pope the license of coining money, the royal title, and a Latin archbishop or patriarch. The Vatican Exalted in the spiritual conquest of Bulgaria, the first object of the schism, and if the Greeks could have preserved the prerogatives of the Church, they would gladly have resigned the rights of the monarchy. 20. Return, Dukenge, Family, Dalmatic, p. 318, 319, 320. The Original correspondence of the Bulgarian king and the Roman Pontiff is inscribed in the Gusta Innocent. 3 c. 6682, p. 513 525. 21. Return, the Pope acknowledges his pedigree, a nobiliabus. Rom prosopia genitors to originum traxerunt. This tradition and the strong resemblance of the Latin and Wallachian idioms, is explained by M. Danville, Etats de l'Europe, p. 258-262. The Italian colonies of the Dacia of Trajan were swept away by the tide of emigration from the Danube to the Volga, and brought back by another wave from the Volga to the Danube. Possible but strange. The Bulgarians were malicious enough to pray for the long life of Isaac Angelus, the surest pledge of their freedom and prosperity. Yet their chiefs could involve in the same indiscriminate contempt the family and nation of the emperor. In all they Greeks, said Asin to his troops, the same climate, and character, and education, will be productive of the same fruits. Behold my lance, continued the warrior, and the long streamers that float in the wind. They differ only in color, they are formed of the same silk, and fashioned by the same workman, nor has the stripe that is stained in purple any superior price or value above its fellows. 
22 several of these candidates for the purple successively rose and fell under the empire of Isaac, a general, who had repelled the fleets of Sicily, was driven to revolt and ruined by the ingratitude of the prince, and his luxurious repose was disturbed by secret conspiracies and popular insurrections. The emperor was saved by accident, or the merit of his servants, he was at length oppressed by an ambitious brother, who, for the hope of a precarious diadem, forgot the obligations of nature, of loyalty, and of friendship. 23 While Isaac in the Thracian valleys pursued the idle and solitary pleasures of the chase, his brother, Alexius Angelus, was invested with the purple, by the unanimous suffrage of the camp, the capital and the clergy subscribed to their choice, and the vanity of the new sovereign rejected the name of his fathers for the lofty and royal appellation of the Comnian race. On the despicable character of Isaac I have exhausted the language of contempt, and can only add, that, in a reign of eight years, the baser Alexius. 24 was supported by the masculine vices of his wife Euphrosyne. The first intelligence of his fall was conveyed to the late emperor by the hostile aspect and pursuit of the guards, no longer his own, he fled before them above fifty miles, as far as Stagira, in Macedonia but the fugitive, without an object or a follower, was arrested, brought back to Constantinople, deprived of his eyes, and confined in a lonesome tower, on a scanty allowance of bread and water. At the moment of the revolution, his son Alexius, whom he educated in the hope of empire, was twelve years of age. He was spared by the usurper, and reduced to attend his triumph both in peace and war, but as the army was encamped on the seashore, an Italian vessel facilitated the escape of the royal youth, and, in the disguise of a common sailor, he eluded the search of his enemies, passed the Hellespont, and found a secure refuge in the Isle of Sicily. After saluting the threshold of the Apostles, and imploring the protection of Pope Innocent III, Alexius accepted the kind invitation of his sister Irene, the wife of Philip of Swabia, King of the Romans. But in his passage through Italy, he heard that the flower of Western chivalry was assembled at Venice for the deliverance of the Holy Land, and a ray of hope was kindled in his bosom, that their invincible swords might be employed in his father's restoration. 22. Return, this parable is in the best savage style, but I wish the Wailich had not introduced the classic name of Mysians. The experiment of the magnet or lodestone, and the passage of an old comic poet, Nystus and Alex. Comno, L.I.P. 299-300. Return, the Latins aggravate the ingratitude of Alexius, by supposing that he had been released by his brother Isaac from Turkish captivity this pathetic tale had doubtless been repeated at Venice and Zara but I do not readily discover its grounds in the Greek historians. 24. Return, see the reign of Alexius Angelus, or Comnus, in the three books of Nystus, p. 291-352. About ten or twelve years after the loss of Jerusalem, the nobles of France were again summoned to the holy war by the voice of a 
third prophet, less extravagant, perhaps, than Peter the Hermit. But far below street. Bernard in the merit of an orator and a statesman. An illiterate priest of the neighborhood of Paris. Folk of Neuilly, 25 forsook his parochial duty, to assume the more flattering character of a popular and itinerant missionary. The fame of his sanctity and miracles was spread over the land. He declaimed, with severity and vehemence, against the vices of the age, and his sermons, which he preached in the streets of Paris, converted the robbers, the usurers, the prostitutes, and even the doctors and scholars of the university. No sooner did Innocent III ascend the chair of street Peter, than he proclaimed in Italy, Germany, and France the obligation of a new crusade. 26 The eloquent pontiff described the ruin of Jerusalem, the triumph of the pagans, and the shame of Christendom, his liberality proposed the redemption of sins, a plenary indulgence to all who should serve in Palestine, either a year in person, or two years by a substitute, 27 and among his legates and orators who blew the sacred trumpet, Folk of Neuilly was the loudest and most successful. The situation of the principal monarchs was averse to the pious summons. The Emperor Frederick II was a child, and his kingdom of Germany was disputed by the rival houses of Brunswick and Swabia, the memorable factions of the Guelphs and Ghibellines. Philip Augustus of France had performed and could not be persuaded to renew the perilous vow, but as he was not less ambitious of praise than of power, he cheerfully instituted a perpetual fund for the defense of the Holy Land. Richard of England was satiated with the glory and misfortunes of his first adventure, and he presumed to deride the exhortations of Folk of Neuilly, who was not abashed in the presence of kings. You advise me, said Plantagenet, to dismiss my three daughters, pride, avarice, and incontinence, I bequeath them to the most deserving, my pride to the Knights Templars, my avarice to the monks of Sistos, and my incontinence to the prelates. But the preacher was heard and obeyed by the great vassals, the princes of the second order, and Theobald, or Thibaut, Count of Champagne, was the foremost in the holy race. The valiant youth, at the age of twenty-two years, was encouraged by the domestic examples of his father, who marched in the Second Crusade, and of his elder brother, who had ended his days in Palestine with the title of King of Jerusalem, 2,200 knights owed service and homage to his peerage, 28 the nobles of Champagne excelled in all the exercises of war, 29 and by his marriage. With the heiress of Navarre, Thibaut could draw a band of hardy Gascons from either side of the Pyrenean Mountains. His companion in arms was Louis, Count of Blois and Chartres, like himself of regal lineage, for both the princes were nephews, at the same time, of the kings of France and England in a crowd of prelates and barons, who imitated their zeal, I distinguish the birth and merit of Matthew of Montmorency, the famous Simon of Montfort, the scourge of the Albigewa, and a valiant noble, Geoffrey of Villehardouin, 30 Marshal of Champagne, 31 who has condescended in the rude idiom of his age and country, 
32 to write or dictate. 33 An original narrative of the councils and actions in which he bore a memorable part. At the same time, Baldwin, Count of Flanders, who had married the sister of Thibaut, assumed the cross at Bruges, with his brother Henry, and the principal knights and citizens of that rich and industrious province. 34. The vow which the chiefs had pronounced in churches, they ratified in tournaments, the operations of the war were debated in full and frequent assemblies, and it was resolved to seek the deliverance of Palestine in Egypt, a country, since Saladin's death, which was almost ruined by famine and civil war. But the fate of so many royal armies displayed the toils and perils of a land expedition, and if the Flemings dwelt along the ocean, the French barons were destitute of ships and ignorant of navigation. They embraced the wise resolution of choosing six deputies or representatives, of whom Vilhardouin was one, with a discretionary trust to direct the motions, and to pledge the faith of the whole confederacy. The maritime states of Italy were alone possessed of the means of transporting the holy warriors with their arms and horses, and the six deputies proceeded to Venice, to solicit, on motives of piety or interest, the aid of that powerful republic. 25. Return, C. Fleury, History Ecclesiastes Tom 16 p. 26, and c. and Vilhardouin, number 1, with the observations of Duckenge, which I always mean to quote with the original text. 26. Return, The Contemporary Life of Pope Innocent III. Published by Valias and Muratori, Scriptores Rerum Italicarum. Tom. 3 pars i p 486 568 is most valuable for the important and original documents which are inserted in the text the bull of the crusade may be read c 84 85 27 return por c e q sil pardon fiot is gran s i s n S. Murant Multnoma Lee Cure Stagens, E. T. Multnoma S. N. Curwazirant, Powers. Q. Lee Pardons Air S. I. Gran. Vilhardouin, No. 1. R. Philosophers may refine on the causes of the Crusades, but such were the genuine feelings of a French knight. 28. Return, this number of fiefs of which 1800 owed liege. Homage, was enrolled in the Church of Street. Stephen at Troyes, and attested A.D. 1213, by the Marshal and Butler of Champagne. Duckenge, observe p. 254. 29. Return, Campania. Melitti privilegio singularius. Excellent. In Tyrosinius. Prolution Armorum, N.C., Dunsage. p. 249, from the Old Chronicle of Jerusalem, A.D. 1177-1199. 30. Return, the name of Vilharduin was taken from a village. And castle in the Diocese of Troyes, near the River Obe, between Bar and Arkis. The family was ancient and noble, the elder branch of our historian existed after the year 1400, the younger, which acquired the principality of Achaia, merged in the house of Savoy, Duckenge, p. 235-245. 31. Return, 
this office was held by his father and his descendants, but Dukanj has not hunted it with his usual sagacity. I find that, in the year 1356, it was in the family of Conflans, but these provincial have been long since eclipsed by the National Marshals of France. 32. Return, this language, of which I shall produce some specimens, is explained by Vijnir and Dukanj, in a version and glossary. The President des Brasses, Mécanisme des Longues, Tom. 2p83, gives it as the example of a language which has ceased to be French, and is understood only by grammarians. 33, return, his age, and his own expression, Moiki Sestuvra. Underscore dicta underscore, number 62, and C, may justify the suspicion, more probable. Then Mr. Woods on Homer, that he could neither read nor write. Yet Champagne may boast of the two first historians, the noble authors of French prose, Villehardouin and Joinville. 34. Return, the crusade and reigns of the Counts of Flanders. Baldwin and his brother Henry, are the subject of a particular history by the Jesuit Dutremens, Constantinopolis Balhika. Ternacy, 1638, in Fortio, which I have only seen with the eyes of Dukenj. In the invasion of Italy by Attila, I have mentioned 35 the flight of the Venetians from the fallen cities of the continent, and their obscure shelter in the chain of islands that line the extremity of the Adriatic Gulf. In the midst of the waters, free, indigent, laborious, and inaccessible, they gradually coalesced. Into a republic, the first foundations of Venice were laid in the island of Rialto, and the annual election of the twelve tribunes was superseded by the permanent office of a duke or doge. On the verge of the two empires, the Venetians exult in the belief of primitive and perpetual independence. 36 Against the Latins their antique freedom has been asserted by the sword, and may be justified by the pen. Charlemagne himself resigned all claims of sovereignty to the islands of the Adriatic Gulf, his son Pepin was repulsed in the attacks of the underscore lagunas underscore or canals, too deep for the cavalry, and too shallow for the vessels, and in every Age, under the German Xars, the lands of the Republic have been clearly distinguished from the Kingdom of Italy. But the inhabitants of Venice were considered by themselves, by strangers, and by their sovereigns, as an inalienable portion of the Greek Empire, 37 in the 9th and 10th centuries, the proofs of their subjection are numerous and unquestionable, and the vain titles, the servile honors, of the Byzantine court, so ambitiously solicited by their dukes, would have degraded the magistrates of a free people. But the bands of this dependence, which was never absolute or rigid, were imperceptibly relaxed by the ambition of Venice and the weakness of Constantinople. Obedience was softened into respect, privilege ripened into prerogative, and the freedom of domestic government was fortified by the independence of foreign dominion. The maritime cities of Istria and Dalmatia bowed to the sovereigns of the Adriatic, and when they armed against the Normans in the cause of Alexius, the emperor applied, not to the duty of his subjects, but to the gratitude and generosity of his faithful allies. 
The sea was their patrimony, 38 the western parts of the Mediterranean, from Tuscany to Gibraltar, were indeed abandoned to their rivals of Pisa and Genoa, but the Venetians acquired an early and lucrative share of the commerce of Greece and Egypt. Their riches increased. With the increasing demand of Europe, their manufactures of silk and glass, perhaps the institution of their bank, are of high antiquity, and they enjoyed the fruits of their industry in the magnificence of public and private life. To assert her flag, to avenge her injuries, to protect the freedom of navigation, they Republic could launch and man a fleet of a hundred galleys, and the Greeks, the Saracens, and the Normans, were encountered by her naval arms. The Franks of Syria were assisted by the Venetians in the reduction of the sea coast, but their zeal was neither blind nor disinterested, and in the conquest of Tyre, they shared the sovereignty of a city the first seat of the commerce of the world. The policy of Venice was marked by the avarice of a trading, and the insolence of a maritime, power, yet her ambition was prudent, nor did she often forget that if armed galleys were the effect and safeguard, merchant vessels were the cause and supply, of her greatness. In her religion, she avoided the schisms of the Greeks, without yielding a servile obedience to the Roman pontiff, and a free intercourse with the infidels of every clime appears to have allayed betimes the fever of superstition. Her primitive government was a loose mixture of democracy and monarchy, the doge was elected by the votes of the General Assembly, as long as he was popular and successful, he reigned with the pomp and authority of a prince, but in the frequent revolutions of the state, he was deposed, or banished, or slain, by the justice or injustice of the multitude. The 12th century produced the first rudiments of the wise and jealous aristocracy, which has reduced the doge to a pageant, and the people to a cipher. 39. 35. Return, History, and C. Vol. 3 p. 446, 447. 36. Return, The Foundation and Independence of Venice, and Pepin's Invasion, are discussed by Page I. Tidika, Tom 3. A.D. 81, Number 4, and C. and Beretti, Dessert. Choreograph. Itali Medii. V. in Muratori, Scripture Tom. X. P. 153. The two critics have a slight bias, the Frenchman adverse, the Italian favorable, to the Republic. 37. Return, when the son of Charlemagne asserted his right of sovereignty, he was answered by the loyal Venetians, Odi Himevi. Dolo I Gelamanina Dou Rumain Basil Levi, Constantin. Porphyrogenet. De Administrat. Imperii, Pars 2. C. 28, P. 85. And the report of the Ixth establishes the fact of the XTH century, which is confirmed by the embassy of Lyudprand of Cremona. The annual tribute, which the emperor allows them to pay to the king of Italy, alleviates, by doubling, their servitude. But the hateful word Doloi must be translated, as in the charter. Of 827, Lagier, History de Venice, Tom I. P. 67, and C. 
by the softer appellation of underscore subtity underscore or underscore fiddlies underscore 38 return see the xxvth and xxxth dissertations of the antiquitates medii v of muratori from anderson's history of commerce i understand that the venetians did not trade to england before the year 1323 the most flourishing state of their wealth and commerce in the beginning of the xvth century is agreeably described by the abbe du boss history de la ligue de cambrai tom 2p 443 480 39 return the venetians have been slow in writing and publishing their history their most ancient monuments are, 1. The Rude Chronicle, perhaps, of John Sagerninus, Venezia, 1765. In octavo, which represents the state and manners of Venice in the year 1008. 2. The Larger History of the Doge, 1342-1354. Andrew Dandolo published for the first time in the Zeeth Tom of Muratori, A.D. 1728 The History of Venice by the Abbe Lagier Paris, 1728, is a work of some merit, which I have chiefly used for the constitutional part. Asterisk note, it is scarcely necessary to Mention the valuable work of Count Daru, History de Venice, of which I hear that an Italian translation has been published, with notes defensive of the ancient republic. I have not yet seen this work M. Chapter LX, The Fourth Crusade, Part 2 When the six ambassadors of the French pilgrims arrived at Venice, they were hospitably entertained in the Palace of Street. Mark, by the reigning duke, his name was Henry Dandolo, forty and he. Shown in the last period of human life as one of the most illustrious characters of the times. Under the weight of years. And after the loss of his eyes, forty-one Dandolo retained a sound understanding and a manly courage, the spirit of a hero, ambitious to signalize his reign by some memorable exploits, and the wisdom of a patriot, anxious to build his fame on the glory and advantage of his country. He praised the bold enthusiasm and liberal confidence of the barons and their deputies, in such a cause and with such associates, he should aspire, were he a private man, to terminate his life, but he was the servant of the Republic, and some delay was requisite to consult, on this arduous business, the judgment of his colleagues. The proposal of the French was first debated by the six underscore sages underscore who had been Recently appointed to control the administration of the Doge, it was next disclosed to the forty members of the Council of State, and finally communicated to the Legislative Assembly of four hundred and fifty representatives, who were annually chosen in the six quarters of the city. In peace and war, the Doge was still the chief of the Republic, his legal authority was supported by the personal reputation of Dandolo, his arguments of public interest were balanced and approved, and he was authorized to inform the ambassadors of the following conditions of the treaty. 42. It was proposed that the Crusaders should assemble at Venice, on the Feast of Street. John of the ensuing year, that 
Flat-bottomed vessels should be prepared for 4,500 horses, and 9,000 squires, with a number of ships. Sufficient for the embarkation of 4,500 knights, and 20,000 foot, that during a term of nine months they should be supplied with provisions, and transported to whatsoever coast the service of God and Christendom should require, and that the Republic should join the armament with a squadron of fifty galleys. It was required, that the pilgrims should pay, before their departure, a sum of eighty-five thousand marks of silver, and that all conquests, by sea and land, should be equally divided between the confederates. The terms were hard. But the emergency was pressing, and the French barons were not less profuse of money than of blood. A general assembly was convened to ratify the treaty, the stately chapel and place of street. Mark were filled with ten thousand citizens, and the noble Deputies were taught a new lesson of humbling themselves before the majesty of the people. Illustrious Venetians, said they. Marshal of Champagne, we are sent by the greatest and most powerful barons of France to implore the aid of the masters of the sea for the deliverance of Jerusalem. They have enjoined us to fall prostrate at your feet, nor will we rise from the ground till you have promised to avenge with us the injuries of Christ. The eloquence of their words and tears, 43 their martial aspect and suppliant attitude, were applauded by a universal shout, as it were, says Geoffrey, by the sound of an earthquake. They Venerable Doge ascended the pulpit to urge their request by those motives of honor and virtue, which alone can be offered to a popular assembly, the treaty was transcribed on parchment, attested with oaths and seals, mutually accepted by the weeping and joyful representatives of France and Venice, and dispatched to Rome for the approbation of Pope Innocent III. 2. Thousand marks were borrowed of the merchants for the first expenses of the armament. Of the six deputies, two repassed the Alps to announce their success, while their four companions made a fruitless trial of the zeal and emulation of the republics of Genoa and Pisa. 40. Return Henry Dandolo was 84 at his election, A.D. 1192, and 97 at his death, A.D. 1205. See the Observations of Duckange Sir Vilhardouin, No. 204. But this underscore extraordinary underscore longevity is not observed by the original writers, nor does there exist another example of a hero near a hundred years of age. Theophrastus might afford an instance of a writer of ninety-nine, but instead of an incantap, prom ad character, I am much inclined to read Evdemite Cantap, with his last editor Fisher, and the first thoughts of Casabon. It is Scarcely possible that the powers of the mind and body should support themselves till such a period of life. 41. Return, The Modern Venetians, Lagier, Tom 2 p. 119. Accuse the Emperor Manuel, but the calumny is refuted by Vilharduin and the older writers, who suppose that Dandolo lost his eyes by a wound, number 31, and Duckenge, asterisk note, the accounts differ, both as to the extent and the cause of his 
Blindness according to Vilharduin and others, the sight was totally lost, according to the Chronicle of Andrew Dandolo. Murat Tom 12 p. 322, he was vice Dibilis. C. Wilkin, Vol. V. P. 143 m. 42, Return, see the original treaty in the Chronicle of Andrew. Dandolo, p. 323-326. 43, Return, a reader of Vilharduin must observe the frequent tears of the marshal and his brother knights. Sachis Q. La O. T. Main Lerm Plori de Pity, No. 17, Mult Noma Plorant, Ibid. Main Lerm Plori, No. 34, Si Orant Mult Noma Pity et Plorant. Mult Noma Dormant, No. 60, Iot Main Lerm Plori de Pity, No. 202, They weep on every occasion of grief, joy, or devotion. The execution of the treaty was still opposed by unforeseen difficulties and delays. The marshal, on his return to Chihuahua, was embraced and approved by Thibaut Count of Champagne, who had been unanimously chosen general of the Confederates. But the health of that valiant youth already declined, and soon became hopeless and he deplored the untimely fate, which condemned him to expire, not in a field of battle, but on a bed of sickness. 2. His brave and numerous vassals, the dying prince distributed his treasures, they swore in his presence to accomplish his vow and their own, but some there were, says the marshal, who accepted his gifts and forfeited their words. The more resolute champions of the cross held a parliament at Soissons for the election of a new general, but such was the incapacity, or jealousy, or reluctance, of the princes of France, that none could be found, both able and willing to assume the conduct of the enterprise. They acquiesced in the choice of a stranger, of Boniface Marquis of Montferrat, descended of a race of heroes, and himself of conspicuous fame in the wars and negotiations of the times, 44. Nor could the piety or ambition of the Italian chief decline this honorable invitation. After visiting the French court, where he was received as a friend and kinsman, the Marquis, in the church of Soissons, was invested with the cross of a pilgrim and the staff of a general, and immediately repassed the Alps, to prepare for the distant expedition of the East. About the festival of the Pentecost he displayed his banner, and marched towards Venice at the head of the Italians, he was preceded or followed by the Counts of Flanders and Blois, and the most respectable barons of France, and their numbers were swelled by the pilgrims of Germany, 45 whose object and motives were similar to their own. The Venetians had fulfilled, and even surpassed, their engagements, stables were constructed for the horses, and Barracks for the troops, the magazines were abundantly replenished with forage and provisions, and the fleet of transports, ships, and galleys, was ready to hoist sail as soon as the Republic had received the price of the freight and armament. But that price far exceeded the wealth of the Crusaders, who were assembled at Venice. The Flemings, whose obedience to their count was voluntary and precarious, had embarked in their vessels for the long navigation of the ocean and Mediterranean. And many of the French and Italians had preferred a cheaper and 
more convenient passage from Marseilles and Apulia to the Holy Land. Each pilgrim might complain that after he had furnished his own contribution, he was made responsible for the deficiency of his absent brethren, the gold and silver plate of the chiefs, which they freely delivered to the treasury of street. Marx was a generous but inadequate sacrifice, and after all their efforts, 34,000 marks were still wanting to complete the stipulated sum. The obstacle was removed by the policy and patriotism of the doge, who proposed to the barons, that if they would join their arms in reducing some revolted cities of Dalmatia, he would expose his person in the holy war, and obtain from the republic a long indulgence, till some wealthy conquest should afford the means of satisfying the debt. After much scruple and hesitation, they chose rather to accept the offer than to relinquish the enterprise, and the first hostilities of the fleet and army were directed against Zara, 46 a strong city of the Sclavonian coast, which had renounced its allegiance to Venice, and implored the protection of the King of Hungary. 47. The Crusaders burst the chain or boom of the harbour, landed there. Horses, troops, and military engines, and compelled the inhabitants, after a defence of five days, to surrender at discretion, their lives were spared, but the revolt was punished by the pillage of their houses and the demolition of their walls. The season was far advanced, the French and Venetians resolved to pass the winter in a secure harbour and plentiful country, but their repose was disturbed by national and tumultuous quarrels of the soldiers and mariners. The conquest of Zara had scattered the seeds of discord and scandal, the arms of the Allies had been stained in their outset with the blood, not of infidels, but of Christians, the King of Hungary and his new subjects were themselves enlisted under the banner of the cross, and the scruples of the devout were magnified by the fear of lassitude of the reluctant pilgrims. The Pope had excommunicated the false Crusaders who had pillaged and massacred their brethren, 48 and only the Marquis Boniface and Simon of Montfort 481 escaped these spiritual thunders, the one by his absence from the siege, the other by his final departure from the camp. Innocent might absolve the simple and submissive penitents of France, but he was provoked by the stubborn reason of the Venetians, who refused to confess their guilt, to accept their pardon, or to allow, in their temporal concerns, the interposition of a priest. 44. Return, by a victory, A.D. 1191, over the citizens of Osti. By a crusade to Palestine, and by an embassy from the Pope to the German princes, Muratori, Anneli d'Italia, Tom XP 163. 202. 45. Return, see the crusade of the Germans in the Historia C. P. of Gunter, Cana Cint Lect, Tom 4 P. V. V. I. 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 Who celebrates the pilgrimage of his abbot Martin, one of the preaching rivals of folk of Neuilly. His monastery, of the Cistercian order, was situate in the diocese of Basel. 46. Return, Jadera, now Zara, was a Roman colony, which acknowledged Augustus for its parent. It is now only two miles round, 
and contains five or six thousand inhabitants, but the fortifications are strong, and it is joined to the mainland by a bridge. See the travels of the two companions, Spawn and Wheeler. Voyage de Dalmati, de Grasse, and C. Tom I.P. 6470. Journey. Into Greece, p. 814, the last of whom, by mistaking underscore sestertia underscore. For underscore sesterte underscore, values an arch with statues and columns at. 12 pounds. If, in his time, there were no trees near Zara. The cherry trees were not yet planted which produce R. Incomparable underscore Marasquin underscore. 47, Return, Katona, Historique de Dica Regular Hungary, Sturpus Arpid. Tom. 4P 536-558, Collects all the facts and testimonies most. Adverse to the conquerors of Zara. 48. Return, see the whole transaction, and the sentiments of the Pope, in the Epistles of Innocent III. Gusta, c. 86, 87, 88. 481. Return, Montfort protested against the siege. Guido, the Abbot of Vox di Cerni, in the name of the Pope, interdicted the attack on a Christian city, and the immediate surrender of the town was thus delayed for five days of fruitless resistance. Wilkin, Vol. V. P. 167. See likewise, at length, the history of the interdict issued by the Pope. Ibid. M. The assembly of such formidable powers by sea and land had Revived the hopes of young 49 Alexius, and both at Venice and Zara, he solicited the arms of the Crusaders, for his own restoration and his father's fifty deliverance. The royal youth was recommended by Philip King of Germany, his prayers and presence excited the compassion of the camp, and his cause was embraced and pleaded by the Marquis of Montferrat and the Doge of Venice. A double alliance, and the dignity of Xar, had connected with the imperial family the two elder brothers of Boniface, 51 he expected to derive a kingdom from the important service, and the more generous ambition of Dandolo was eager to secure the inestimable benefits of trade and dominion that might accrue to his country. 52 Their influence procured a favorable audience for the ambassadors of Alexius, and if the magnitude of his offers excited some suspicion, the motives and rewards which he displayed might justify the delay and diversion of those forces which had been consecrated to the deliverance of Jerusalem. He promised in his own and his father's name, that as soon as they should be seated on the throne of Constantinople, they would terminate the long schism of the Greeks, and submit themselves and their people to the lawful supremacy of the Roman Church. He engaged to recompense the labors and merits of the Crusaders, by the immediate payment of 200,000 marks of silver, to accompany them in person to Egypt, or, if it should be judged more advantageous, to maintain, during a year, 10,000 men, and, during his life, 500 knights, for the service of the Holy Land. These tempting conditions were accepted by the Republic of Venice, and the eloquence of the Doge and Marquis persuaded the Counts of Flanders, Blois and Street. Paul, with eight barons of France, 
to join in the glorious enterprise. A Treaty of Offensive and Defensive Alliance was confirmed by their oaths and seals, and each individual, according to his situation and character, was swayed by the hope of public or private advantage. By the honor of restoring an exiled monarch, or by the sincere and probable opinion, that their efforts in Palestine would be fruitless and unavailing, and that the acquisition of Constantinople must precede and prepare the recovery of Jerusalem. But they were the chiefs or equals of a valiant band of freemen and volunteers, who thought and acted for themselves. The soldiers and clergy were divided, and, if a large majority subscribed to the alliance, the numbers and arguments of the dissidents were strong and respectable. 53 The boldest hearts were appalled by the report of the naval power and impregnable strength of Constantinople, and their apprehensions were disguised to the world, and perhaps to themselves, by the more decent objections of religion and duty. They alleged the sanctity of a vow, which had drawn them from their families and homes to the rescue of the Holy Sepulchre, nor should the dark and crooked counsels of human policy divert them from a pursuit, the event of which was in the hands of the Almighty. Their first offense, the attack of Zara, had been severely punished by the reproach of their conscience and the censures of the Pope, nor would they again imbrue their hands in the blood of their fellow Christians. The Apostle of Rome had pronounced, nor would they usurp the right of avenging with the sword the schism of the Greeks and the doubtful usurpation of the Byzantine monarch. On these principles or pretenses, many pilgrims, the most distinguished for their valor and piety, withdrew from the camp, and their retreat was less pernicious than the open or secret opposition of a discontented party, that labored, on every occasion, to separate the army and disappoint the enterprise. 49. Return A modern reader is surprised to hear of the valet de Constantinople, as applied to young Alexius, on account of his youth, like the underscore infants underscore of Spain, and the underscore nobilissimus pure underscore of the Romans. The pages and underscore valets underscore of the knights were as noble as themselves, Vilharduin and Dukenge, number 36. 50. Return, the Emperor Isaac is styled by Vilharduin. Underscore Sir Sack underscore, number 35, and C, which may be derived from the French. Underscore Sire underscore, or the Greek Cur, Curio V, melted into his proper name. The further corruptions of Tursac and Conserac will instruct us. What license may have been used in the old dynasties of Assyria and Egypt? 51. Return, Rainier and Conrad, the former married Maria, daughter of the Emperor Manuel Comnus, the latter was the husband of Theodora Angela, sister of the Emperors Isaac and Alexius. Conrad abandoned the Greek court and princess for the glory of defending Tyre against Saladin, Dukenge, Fam Byzant. p. 187, 203. 52. Return, Nystus, in Alexio Comno, L. 3C9, accuses the Doge and Venetians as the first authors of the war against Constantinople, and considers only as a Kuma AP Cumity, the arrival and shameful offers of the royal exile. 
Asterisk note, he admits, however, that the Angeli had committed depredations on the Venetian trade, and the emperor himself had refused the payment of part of the stipulated compensation for the seizure of the Venetian merchandise by the Emperor Manuel Nystus, in Locut of M. 53, Return, Vilharduin and Gunter represent the sentiments of the two parties. The Abbot Martin left the army at Zara, proceeded to Palestine, was sent ambassador to Constantinople, and became a reluctant witness of the second siege. Notwithstanding this defection, the departure of the fleet and army was vigorously pressed by the Venetians, whose zeal for the service of the royal youth concealed a just resentment to his nation and family. They were mortified by the recent preference, which had been given to Pisa, the rival of their trade, they had a long arrear of debt and injury to liquidate with the Byzantine court, and Andolo might not discourage the popular tale, that he had been deprived of his eyes by the Emperor Manuel, who perfidiously violated the sanctity of an ambassador. A similar armament, for ages, had not rode the Adriatic, it was composed of 120 flat-bottomed vessels or underscore palanders underscore four. The horses, 240 transports filled with men and arms, 70 store ships laden with provisions, and 50 stout galleys, well prepared for the encounter of an enemy. 54 while the wind was favorable, the sky serene, and the water smooth. Every eye was fixed with wonder and delight on the scene of military and naval pomp which overspread the sea. 541 The shields of the knights and squires, at once an ornament and a defense, were arranged on either side of the ships, the banners of the nations and families were displayed from the stern, our modern Artillery was supplied by 300 engines for casting stones and darts, the fatigues of the way were cheered with the sound of music, and the spirits of the adventurers were raised by the mutual assurance that 40,000 Christian heroes were equal to the conquest of the world. 55 in the navigation 56 from Venice and Zara the fleet was successfully steered by the skill and experience of the Venetian pilots, at Durazzo, the Confederates first landed on the territories of the Greek Empire. The Isle of Corfu afforded a station and repose, they doubled. Without accident, the perilous Cape of Malia, the southern point of Peloponnesus or the Moria, made a descent in the islands of Negropont and Andrus, and cast anchor at Abydus on the Asiatic side of the Hellespont. These preludes of conquest were easy and bloodless, the Greeks of the provinces, without patriotism or courage, were crushed by an irresistible force, the presence of the lawful heir might justify their obedience, and it was rewarded by the modesty and discipline of the Latins. As they penetrated through the Hellespont, the magnitude of their navy was compressed in a narrow channel, and the face of the waters was darkened with innumerable sails. They again expanded in the basin of the Propontis, and traversed that placid sea, till they approached the European shore, at the Abbey of Street. Stephen, 3. Leagues to the west of Constantinople. The prudent doge dissuaded. 
them from dispersing themselves in a populous and hostile land. And, as their stock of provisions was reduced, it was resolved. In the season of harvest, to replenish their store ships in the fertile islands of the Propontis. With this resolution, they directed their course, but a strong gale, and their own impatience, drove them to the eastward, and so near did they run to the shore and the city, that some volleys of stones and darts were exchanged between the ships and the rampart. As they passed along, they gazed with admiration on the capital of the east, or, as it should seem, of the earth, rising from her seven hills, and towering over the continents of Europe and Asia. The swelling domes and lofty spires of five hundred palaces and churches were gilded by the sun and reflected in the waters, the walls were crowded with soldiers and spectators, whose numbers they beheld, of whose temper they were ignorant, and each heart was chilled by the reflection that, since the beginning of the world, such an enterprise had never been undertaken by such a handful of warriors. But the momentary apprehension was dispelled by hope and valor, and every man, says the Marshal of Champagne, glanced his eye on the sword or lance which he must speedily use in the glorious conflict. 57 The Latins cast anchor before Chalcedon. The mariners only were left in the vessels, the soldiers, horses, and arms, were safely landed, and, in the luxury of an imperial palace, the barons tasted the first fruits of their success. On the third day, the fleet and army moved towards Scutari, they Asiatic suburb of Constantinople, a detachment of 500. Greek horse was surprised and defeated by fourscore French knights, and in a halt of nine days, the camp was plentifully supplied with forage and provisions. 54. Return, the birth and dignity of Andrew Dandolo gave him the motive and the means of searching in the archives of Venice. The memorable story of his ancestor. His brevity seems to accuse. The copious and more recent narratives of Sanudo, in Muratori. Scripture Rerum Italicarum, Tom. XXII, Blondus, Sibelicus, and. Ramnesus. 541, Return, this description rather belongs to the first. Setting sail of the expedition from Venice, before the siege of Zara. The armament did not return to Venice. M. 55, Return, Vilharduin, Number 62. His feelings and expressions are original, he often weeps, but he rejoices in the glory's end. Perils of war with a spirit unknown to a sedentary writer. 56. Return, in this voyage, almost all the geographical names are corrupted by the Latins. The modern appellation of Chalcis and Aljuba is derived from its underscore Euripus underscore, underscore every po underscore, underscore negri po underscore, underscore negro punt underscore, which dishonors our maps, Danville. Geography on Sien, Tom. I.P. 263. 57. Return, E.T. Sachis Q. Illinois N.I.O.T.S.I. Hardy Tsue L.E. C. 66. Chaz Kunz Regardoit S.E.S. Armes. Q.P.A.R. Thames. N. Arons C. 67. Such is the honesty of courage.
In relating the invasion of a great empire, it may seem strange that I have not described the obstacles which should have checked the progress of the strangers. The Greeks, in truth, were an unwarlike people, but they were rich, industrious and subject to the will of a single man, had that man been capable of fear, when his enemies were at a distance, or of courage, when they approached his person. The first rumor of his nephew's alliance with the French and Venetians was despised by the usurper. Alexius, his flatterers persuaded him, that in this contempt he was bold and sincere, and each evening, in the close of the banquet, he thrice discomfited the barbarians of the West. These barbarians had been justly terrified by the report of his naval power, and the 1600 fishing boats of Constantinople 58 could have manned a fleet, to sink them in the Adriatic, or stop their entrance in the mouth of the Hellespont. But all force may be annihilated by the negligence of the prince and the venality of his ministers. The great duke, or admiral, made a scandalous, almost a public, auction of the sails, the masts, and the rigging, the royal forests were reserved for the more important purpose of the chase, and the trees, says Nystus, were guarded by the eunuchs, like the groves of religious worship. 59 From his dream of pride, Alexius was awakened by the siege of Zara, and the rapid advances of the Latins, as soon as he saw the danger was real, he thought it inevitable, and his vain presumption was lost in abject despondency and despair. He suffered these contemptible barbarians to pitch their camp in the sight of the palace, and his apprehensions were thinly disguised by the pomp and menace of a suppliant embassy. The sovereign of the Romans was astonished, his ambassadors were instructed to say, at the hostile appearance of the strangers. If these pilgrims were sincere in their vow for the deliverance of Jerusalem, his voice must applaud, and his treasures should assist, their pious design. But should they dare to invade the sanctuary of empire, there numbers, were they ten times more considerable, should not protect them from his just resentment. The answer of the doge and barons was simple and magnanimous. In the cause of honor and justice, they said, we despise the usurper of Greece, his threats, and his offers underscore our underscore friendship and underscore his underscore allegiance are due to the lawful heir, to the young prince, who is seated among us, and to his father, the Emperor Isaac, who has been deprived of his scepter, his freedom and his eyes, by the crime of an ungrateful brother. Let that brother confess his guilt, and Implore forgiveness, and we ourselves will intercede, that he may be permitted to live in affluence and security. But let him not insult us by a second message, our reply will be made in arms, in the palace of Constantinople. 58. Return, Eandum Urbum Plus in Solus Navibus Piscatorum. Abunder Quamillos in toto navigo. Habibot enim mili t. Sexentis piscatorius naves. Bel ICA's autumn civ mercatorius. Habe bant infinite multitudinous et porchum tutissimum. Gunter. History c. p. c. 8. p. 10. 59. Return. 
Kakaper Irv Nalson, I pain DK Jejo Tutun. Parade Eyes Unijid, Onto Taupuni. Nice to see Alex. Com no, L, 3. C, 9, P, 348. On the tenth day of their encampment at Skutari, the Crusaders prepared themselves, as soldiers and as Catholics, for the passage of the Bosphorus. Perilous indeed was the adventure, the stream was broad and rapid, in a calm the current of the Euxine might drive down the liquid and unextinguishable fires of the Greeks, and the opposite shores of Europe were defended by 70,000 horse and foot in formidable array. On this memorable day, which happened to be bright and pleasant, the Latins were distributed in six battles or divisions, the first or vanguard, was led by the Count of Flanders, one of the most powerful of the Christian princes in the skill and number of his crossbows. The four successive battles of the French were commanded by his brother Henry, the Counts of Street, Paul and Blois, and Matthew of Montmorency, the last of whom was honored by the Voluntary service of the Marshal and Nobles of Champagne. The 6th Division, the rear guard and reserve of the army, was conducted by the Marquis of Montferrat, at the head of the Germans and Lombards. The chargers, saddled, with their long caparisons dragging on the ground, were embarked in the flat. Underscore palanders underscore, sixty and the knights stood by the side of their horses, in complete armor, their helmets laced, and their lances in their hands. The numerous train of sergeants sixty-one and archers occupied the transports, and each transport was towed by the strength and swiftness of a galley. The six divisions traversed the Bosphorus, without encountering an enemy or an obstacle, to land the foremost was the wish, to conquer or die was the resolution, of every division and of every soldier. Jealous of the preeminence of danger, the knights in their heavy armor leaped into the sea, when it rose as high as their girdle, they Sergeants and archers were animated by their valor, and they squires, letting down the drawbridges of the Pala and Deers, led the horses to the shore. Before their squadrons could mount, and form, and couch their lances, the seventy thousand Greeks had vanished from their sight, the timid Alexius gave the example to his troops, and it was only by the plunder of his rich pavilions that the Latins were informed that they had fought against an emperor. In the first consternation of the flying enemy, they resolved, by a double attack, to open the entrance of the harbor. The tower of Galata, 62 in the suburb of Para, was attacked and stormed by the French, while the Venetians assumed the more difficult task of forcing the boom or chain that was stretched from that tower to the Byzantine shore. After some fruitless attempts, their intrepid perseverance prevailed, twenty ships of war, the relics of the Grecian navy, were either sunk or taken. The enormous and massy links of iron were cut asunder by the shears, or broken by the weight, of the galleys, 63 and the Venetian fleet, safe and triumphant, rode at anchor in the port of Constantinople. By these daring achievements, a remnant of 20,000 Latins solicited the license of besieging a 
capital which contained above 400,000 inhabitants. 64 able, though not willing, to bear arms in defense of their country. Such an account would indeed suppose a population of near 2 millions, but whatever abatement may be required in the numbers of the Greeks, the underscore belief underscore of those numbers will equally exalt the fearless spirit of their assailants. 60. Return, from the version of Veneer I adopt the well-sounding word underscore palander underscore, which is still used, I believe, in the Mediterranean. But had I written in French, I should have preserved the original and expressive denomination of underscore vessiers underscore or underscore huissiers underscore, from the underscore hus underscore or door which was let down as a drawbridge, but which, at sea, was closed into the side of the ship, see Ducan Joville Harduin, number 14, and join Vili p. 27, 28, edit. Du Louvre. 61, return, to avoid the vague expressions of followers, and see, I. Use, after Vil Harduin, the word underscore sergeants underscore for all horsemen. Who were not knights. There were sergeants at arms, and sergeants at law, and if we visit the parade in Westminster Hall, we may observe the strange result of the distinction, Duckenge, Glosser, Latin, underscore servients underscore, and C, Tom, 6p226-231, 62, return, it is needless to observe, that on the subject of Galata, the chain, and C, Duckenge is accurate and full. Consult. Likewise, the proper chapters of the C. P. Christiana of the same. Author. The inhabitants of Galata were so vain and ignorant, that they applied to themselves street. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians. 63, Return, the vessel that broke the chain was named the Eagle, underscore Aquila, underscore, Dandolo, Cron Icon, P. 322, which Blondus, D. Justice Venet, has changed into underscore Aquilo, underscore, the North Wind. Duckenge. Observations, number 83, maintains the latter reading, but he had not seen the respectable text of Dandolo nor did he enough. Consider the topography of the harbour. The southeast would have been a more effectual wind. Note to Wilkin, Vol. V. P. 215. 64. Return, Cotter Centuries Mill Homes O. U. Plus, Ville Harduin, No. 134 must be understood of underscore men underscore of a military age. L. E. Bo. History du Bass Empire, Tom XX P. 417, allows Constantinople a million of inhabitants, of whom 60,000 horse, and an infinite number of foot soldiers. In its present decay, the capital of the Ottoman Empire may contain 400,000 souls, Bell's Travels, Vol. 2p, 401, 402, but as the Turks keep no registers, and as circumstances are fallacious, it is impossible to ascertain. Nibor, Voyage and Araby, Tom I. P. 18, 19, The Real Populousness of Their Cities in the choice of the attack, the French and Venetians were divided by their habits of life and warfare. The former affirmed, with truth, that Constantinople was most accessible on the side of the sea and the harbour. 
the latter might assert with honor that they had long enough trusted their lives and fortunes to a frail bark and a precarious element, and loudly demanded a trial of knighthood, a firm ground, and a close onset, either on foot or on horseback. After a prudent compromise, of employing the two nations by sea and land, in the service best suited to their character, the fleet covering the army, they both proceeded from the entrance to the extremity of the harbour, the stone bridge of the river was hastily repaired, and the six battles of the French formed their encampment against the front of the capital, the basis of the triangle which runs about four miles from the port to the Propontis. 65 on the edge of a broad ditch, at the foot of a lofty rampart, they had leisure to contemplate the difficulties of their enterprise. The gates to the right and left of their narrow camp poured forth frequent sallies of cavalry and light infantry, which cut off their stragglers, swept the country of provisions, sounded the alarm five or six times in the course of each day, and compelled them to plant a palisade, and sink an int arrangement, for their immediate safety. In the supplies and convoys the Venetians had been too sparing, or the Franks too voracious, the usual complaints of hunger and scarcity were heard and perhaps felt their stock of flour would be exhausted in three weeks, and their disgust of salt meat tempted them to taste the flesh of their horses. The trembling usurper was supported by Theodore Lascaris, his son-in-law, a valiant youth, who aspired to save and to rule his country, the Greeks. Regardless of that country, were awakened to the defense of their religion, but their firmest hope was in the strength and spirit of the Varangian guards, of the Danes and English, as they are named in the writers of the times. 66 After ten days' incessant labor, the ground was leveled, the ditch filled, the approaches of the besiegers were regularly made and 250 engines of assault exercised their various powers to clear the rampart, to batter the walls, and to sap the foundations. On the first appearance of a breach, the scaling ladders were applied. The numbers that defended the vantage ground repulsed and oppressed the adventurous Latins, but they admired the resolution of fifteen knights and sergeants, who had gained the ascent, and maintained their perilous station till they were precipitated or made prisoners by the imperial guards. On the side of the harbour, the naval attack was more successfully conducted by the Venetians, and that industrious people employed every resource that was known and practiced before the invention of gunpowder. A double line, three bow shots in front, was formed by the galleys and ships, and the swift motion of the former was supported by the weight and loftiness of the latter, whose decks and poops and turret were the platforms of military engines that discharged their shot over the heads of the first line. The soldiers, who leaped from the galleys on shore, immediately planted and ascended their scaling ladders, while the large ships, advancing more slowly into the intervals, and lowering a drawbridge, opened a way through the air from their masts to the rampart. In the midst of the conflict, the doge, a venerable and conspicuous form, stood aloft in complete armor on the prow of 
his galley. The great standard of street. Mark was displayed before. Him, his threats, promises, and exhortations, urged the diligence. Of the rowers, his vessel was the first that struck, and Andolo was the first warrior on the shore. The nations admired the magnanimity of the blind old man, without reflecting that his age and infirmities diminished the price of life, and enhanced the value of immortal glory. On a sudden, by an invisible hand, for the standard bearer was probably slain, the banner of the Republic was fixed on the rampart, twenty-five towers were rapidly occupied, and, by the cruel expedient of fire, the Greeks were driven from the adjacent quarter. The Doge had dispatched the intelligence of his success, when he was checked by the danger of his confederates, nobly declaring that he would rather die with the pilgrims than gain a victory by their destruction. Dandolo relinquished his advantage, recalled his troops, and hastened to the scene of action. He found the six weary diminutive underscore battles underscore of the French encompassed by sixty squadrons of the Greek cavalry, the least of which was more numerous than the largest of their divisions. Shame and despair had provoked Alexius to the last effort of a general sally, but he was awed by the firm order and manly aspect of the Latins, and, after skirmishing at a distance, withdrew his troops in the close of the evening. The silence or tumult of the night exasperated his fears, and the timid usurper, collecting a treasure of ten thousand pounds of gold, basely deserted his wife, his people, and his fortune, threw himself into a bark, stole through the Bosphorus, and landed in shameful safety in an obscure harbour of Thrace. As soon as they were apprised of his flight, the Greek nobles sought pardon and peace in the dungeon where the blind Isaac expected each hour the visit of the executioner. Again, saved and exalted by the vicissitudes of fortune, the captive in his imperial robes was replaced on the throne, and surrounded with prostrate slaves, whose real terror and affected joy he was incapable of discerning. At the dawn of day, hostilities were suspended, and the Latin chiefs were surprised by a message from the lawful and reigning emperor, who was impatient to embrace his son, and to reward his generous deliverers. 67. 65. Return, on the most correct plans of Constantinople, I know. Not how to measure more than four thousand paces. Yet Vilharduin computes the space at three leagues, number eighty-six. If his eye were not deceived, he must reckon by the old Gallic League of fifteen hundred paces, which might still be used in Champagne. Sixty-six, return, the guards, the Vergi, are styled by Vilharduin, number eighty-nine. 95, in Gloiti Denwa avec leurs hatches. Whatever had been their origin, a French pilgrim could not be mistaken in the nations of which they were at that time composed. 67, return, for the first siege and conquest of Constantinople. We may read the original letter of the Crusaders to Innocent. 3, Gusta c. 91, p. 533, 534. Vilharduin, no. 7599. Nystus, 
Intellectual Common L3 C10 P349 352 Dandolo, in Chronicles P322 Gunter and his abbot Martin were not yet returned from their obstinate pilgrimage to Jerusalem or Street John D. Acre, where the greatest part of the company had died of the plague. Chapter LX, The Fourth Crusade, Part 3 But these generous deliverers were unwilling to release their hostage, till they had obtained from his father the payment, or at least the promise, of their recompense. They chose four ambassadors, Matthew of Montmorency, our historian the Marshal of Champagne, and two Venetians, to congratulate the Emperor. The gates were thrown open on their approach, the streets on both sides were lined with the battle axes of the Danish and English guard, the presence chamber glittered with gold and jewels, the false substitute of virtue and power, by the side of the blind. Isaac his wife was seated, the sister of the King of Hungary, and by her appearance, the noble matrons of Greece were drawn from their domestic retirement, and mingled with the circle of senators and soldiers. The Latins, by the mouth of the marshal, spoke like men conscious of their merits, but who respected the work of their own hands, and the emperor clearly understood, that his son's engagements with Venice and the pilgrims must be ratified without hesitation or delay. Withdrawing into a private chamber with the empress, a chamberlain, an interpreter, and the four ambassadors, the father of young Alexius inquired with some anxiety into the nature of his stipulations. The submission of the Eastern Empire to the Pope, the succor of the Holy Land, and a present contribution of 200,000 marks of silver, these conditions are weighty, was his prudent reply. They are hard to accept, and difficult to perform. But no conditions can exceed the measure of your services and deserts. After this satisfactory assurance, the barons mounted on horseback, and introduced the heir of Constantinople to the city and palace, his youth and marvelous adventures engaged every heart in his favor, and Alexius was solemnly crowned with his father in the dome of street. Sophia In the first days of his reign, the people, already blessed with the restoration of plenty and peace, was delighted by the joyful catastrophe of the tragedy, and the discontent of the nobles, their regret and their fears, were covered by the polished surface of pleasure and loyalty the mixture of two discordant nations in the same capital might have been pregnant with mischief and danger, and the suburb of Galata or Para, was assigned for the quarters of the French and Venetians. But the liberty of trade and familiar intercourse was allowed between the friendly nations, and each day the pilgrims were tempted by devotion or curiosity to visit the churches and palaces of Constantinople. Their rude minds, insensible perhaps, of the finer arts, were astonished by the magnificent scenery, and the poverty of their native towns enhanced the populousness and riches of the first metropolis of Christendom. 68 Descending From his state, young Alexius was prompted by interest and gratitude to repeat his frequent and familiar visits to his Latin allies, and in the freedom of the table, the gay petulance of the 
French sometimes forgot the Emperor of the East. 69 In their most serious conferences, it was agreed that the reunion of the two churches must be the result of patience and time, but avarice was less tractable than zeal, and a larger sum was instantly dispersed to appease the wants and silence the importunity of the Crusaders. 70 Alexius was alarmed by the approaching hour of their departure, their absence might have relieved him from the engagement which he was yet incapable of performing, but his friends would have left him, naked and alone, to the caprice and prejudice of a perfidious nation. He wished to bribe their stay. The delay of a year, by undertaking to defray their expense, and to satisfy, in their name, the freight of the Venetian vessels. The offer was agitated in the council of the barons, and, after a repetition of their debates and scruples, a majority of votes again acquiesced in the advice of the doge and the prayer of the young emperor. At the price of sixteen hundred pounds of gold, he prevailed on the Marquis of Montferrat to lead him with an army round the provinces of Europe, to establish his authority, and pursue his uncle, while Constantinople was awed by the presence of Baldwin and his confederates of France and Flanders. The expedition was successful, the blind emperor exulted in the success of his arms, and listened to the predictions of his flatterers, that the same providence which had raised him from the dungeon to the throne, would heal his gout, restore his sight, and watch over the long prosperity of his reign. Yet the mind of the suspicious old man was tormented by the rising glories of his son, nor could his pride conceal from his envy that, while his own name was pronounced in faint and reluctant acclamations, the royal youth was the theme of spontaneous and universal praise. 71. 68. Return, compare, in the rude energy of Vilharduin, no. 66. 100. The inside and outside views of Constantinople, and their impression on the minds of the pilgrims, Setville, says. He, Q. D. Toots lay autres er souverain. See the parallel. Passages of Fulturius Carnoensis, History. Here also. L. I. C. 4. And Will. Tier. 2. 3. X. X. 26. 69, return, as they played at dice, the Latins took off his diadem, and clapped on his head a woolen or hairy cap, to Megaloprep vk pagliston catara pain and anima, nystus, p. 358, if these merry companions were Venetians, it was the insolence of trade and a commonwealth. 70, Return, Vilharduin, number 101. Dandolo, p. 322. The Doge affirms that the Venetians were paid more slowly than they French, but he owns that the histories of the two nations differed on that subject. Had he read Vilharduin? The Greeks complained. However, good totius grisi ops transchilicit. Gunter, History C. P. C. 13, See the Lamentations and Invectives. Of Nystus, P. 355. 71, Return, The Reign of Alexius Comnus occupies three books. In Nystus, P. 291-352.
the short restoration of Isaac and his son is dispatched in five chapters, p. 352-362. By the recent invasion, the Greeks were awakened from a dream of nine centuries, from the vain presumption that the capital of the Roman Empire was impregnable to foreign arms. The strangers of the West had violated the city, and bestowed the scepter, of Constantine, their imperial clients soon became as unpopular as themselves, the well-known vices of Isaac were rendered still more contemptible by his infirmities, and the young Alexius was hated as an apostate, who had renounced the manners and religion of his country. His secret covenant with the Latins was divulged or suspected, the people, and especially the clergy, were devoutly attached to their faith and superstition, and every convent, and every shop, resounded with the danger of the church and the tyranny of the Pope. 72 An empty treasury could ill supply the demands of regal luxury and foreign extortion, the Greeks refused to avert, by a general tax, the impending evils of servitude and pillage, the oppression of the rich excited a more dangerous and personal resentment, and if the emperor melted the plate, and despoiled the images, of the sanctuary, he seemed to justify the complaints of heresy and sacrilege. During the absence of Marquis Boniface and his imperial pupil, Constantinople was visited with a calamity which might be justly imputed to the zeal and indiscretion of the Flemish pilgrims. 73. In one of their visits to the city, they were scandalized by the aspect of a mosque or synagogue, in which one god was worshipped, without a partner or a son. Their effectual mode of controversy was to attack the infidels with the sword, and their habitation with fire, but the infidels, and some Christian neighbors, presumed to defend their lives and properties, and the flames which bigotry had kindled, consumed the most orthodox and innocent structures. During eight days and nights, the conflagration spread above a league in front, from the harbour to the Propontis, over the thickest and most populous regions of the city. It is not easy to count the stately churches and palaces that were reduced to a smoking ruin, to value the merchandise that perished in the trading streets, or to number the families that were involved in the common destruction. By this outrage, which the doge and the barons in vain affected to disclaim, the name of the Latins became still more unpopular, and the colony of that nation, above 15,000 persons, consulted their safety in a hasty retreat from the city to the protection of their standard in the suburb of Para. The emperor returned in triumph, but the firmest and most dexterous policy would have been insufficient to steer him through the tempest, which overwhelmed the person and government of that unhappy youth. His own inclination, and his father's advice, attached him to his benefactors, but Alexius hesitated between gratitude and patriotism, between the fear of his subjects and of his allies. 74 By his feeble and fluctuating conduct he lost the esteem and confidence of both, and, while he invited the Marquis of Montferrat to occupy the palace, he suffered the nobles to conspire, and the people to arm, for the deliverance of their country. 
regardless of his painful situation, the Latin chiefs repeated their demands, resented his delays, suspected his intentions, and exacted a decisive answer of peace or war. The haughty summons was delivered by three French knights and three Venetian deputies, who girded their swords, mounted their horses, pierced through the angry multitude, and entered, with a fearful countenance, the palace in presence of the Greek emperor. In a peremptory tone, they recapitulated their services and his engagements, and boldly declared, that unless their just claims were fully and immediately satisfied, they should no longer hold him either as a sovereign or a friend. After this defiance, they first that had ever wounded an imperial ear, they departed without betraying any symptoms of fear, but their escape from a servile palace and a furious city astonished the ambassadors themselves, and their return to the camp was the signal of mutual hostility. 72. Return, when Nystas reproaches Alexius for his impious league, he bestows the harshest names on the Pope's new religion. Mizan Kato put a tone, Perictrophen peace to V, T V N T O U Papa. Pronominkinismon, Metaxin T E K Metapoisin T V N Polivine. Rume Oi V, Ekn, P. 348. Such was the sincere language of every Greek to the last gasp of the empire. 73. Return, Nystas. P. 355, is positive in the charge, and specifies the Flemings, Flamion V, though he is wrong in supposing it an ancient name. Vilharduin, number 107, exculpates the barons, and is ignorant, perhaps affectedly ignorant, of the names of the guilty. 74. Return, compare the suspicions and complaints of Nystas. p. 359-362, with the blunt charges of Baldwin of Flanders. Gusta Innocent 3 c. 92, p. 534, cum patriarcha et mole. Nobilium, nobis promises perjurus et mendax. Among the Greeks, all authority and wisdom were overborne by the impetuous multitude, who mistook their rage for valor, their numbers for strength, and their fanaticism for the support and inspiration of heaven. In the eyes of both nations Alexius was false and contemptible, the base and spurious race of the Angeli was rejected with clamorous disdain, and the people of Constantinople encompassed the Senate, to demand at their hands a more worthy emperor. To every senator, conspicuous by his birth or dignity, they successively presented the purple, by each senator the deadly garment was repulsed, the contest lasted three days, and we may learn from the historian Nystas, one of the members of the assembly, that fear and weaknesses were they guardians of their loyalty. A phantom, who vanished in oblivion, was forcibly proclaimed by the crowd, 75 but the author of the tumult, and the leader of the war, was a prince of the house of Ducas, and his common appellation of Alexius must be discriminated by the epithet of Morzuifal, 76 which in the vulgar idiom expressed the close junction of his black and shaggy eyebrows. At once a patriot and a courtier, the perfidious Morzuifal, who was not destitute of cunning and courage, opposed the Latins both in speech and action, 
inflamed the passion's end. Prejudices of the Greeks, and insinuated himself into the favor and confidence of Alexius, who trusted him with the office of great chamberlain, and tinged his buskins with the colors of royalty. At the dead of night, he rushed into the bedchamber with an affrighted aspect, exclaiming that the palace was attacked by the people and betrayed by the guards. Starting from his couch, the unsuspecting prince threw himself into the arms of his enemy, who had contrived his escape by a private staircase. But that staircase terminated in a prison, Alexius was seized, stripped, and loaded with chains, and, after tasting some days, the bitterness of death, he was poisoned, or strangled, or beaten, with clubs, at the command, or in the presence, of the tyrant. The Emperor Isaac Angelus soon followed his son to the grave, and, more zooful, perhaps, might spare the superfluous crime of hastening the extinction of impotence and blindness. 75. Return, his name was Nicholas Cannabis, he deserved the praise of Nystus and the vengeance of Morzuifal, p. 362. 76. Return, Vilharduin, number 116, speaks of him as a favorite, without knowing that he was a prince of the blood. Underscore Angelus underscore and underscore Ducas underscore Duckenge, who pries into every corner, believes him to be the son of Isaac Ducas Sebastocrator, and second cousin of young Alexius. The death of the emperors, and the usurpation of Morzuifal, had changed the nature of the quarrel. It was no longer they disagreement of allies who overvalued their services, or neglected their obligations, the French and Venetians forgot. Their complaints against Alexius dropped a tear on the untimely fate of their companion, and swore revenge against the perfidious nation who had crowned his assassin. Yet the prudent doge was still inclined to negotiate, he asked as a debt, a subsidy, or a fine, fifty thousand pounds of gold, about two million sterling. Nor would the conference have been abruptly broken, if the zeal or policy of Morzuifal had not refused to sacrifice the Greek church to the safety of the state. 77 Amidst the invectives of his foreign and domestic enemies, we may discern, that he was not unworthy of the character which he had assumed, of the public champion, the second siege of Constantinople was far more laborious than the first, the treasury was replenished, and discipline was restored, by a severe inquisition into the abuses of the former reign, and more zooful, an iron mace in his hand, visiting the posts, and affecting the port and aspect of a warrior, was an object of terror to his soldiers, at least, and to his kinsmen. Before and after the death of Alexius, the Greeks made two vigorous and well-conducted attempts to burn the navy in the harbor, but the skill and courage of the Venetians repulsed. The fire ships, and the vagrant flames wasted themselves without injury in the sea. 78 In a nocturnal sally the Greek emperor was vanquished by Henry, brother of the Count of Flanders, the advantages of number and surprise aggravated the shame of his defeat. His buckler was found on the field of battle, and the Imperial Standard, 79 a divine image of the Virgin, was presented, 
as a trophy and a relic to the Cistercian monks, the disciples of Street Bernard Near three months, without accepting the holy season of Lent, were consumed in skirmishes and preparations, before the Latins were ready or resolved for a general assault. The land fortifications had been found impregnable, and the Venetian pilots represented that, on the shore of the Propontis, the anchorage was unsafe, and the ships must be driven by the current far away to the straits of the Hellespont, a prospect not unpleasing to the reluctant pilgrims, who sought every opportunity of breaking the army. From the harbour, therefore, the assault was determined by the assailants, and expected by the besieged, and the emperor had placed his scarlet pavilions on a neighbouring height, to direct and animate the efforts of his troops. A fearless spectator, whose mind could entertain the ideas of pomp and pleasure, might have admired the long array of two embattled armies, which extended above half a league, the one on the ships and galleys, the other on the walls, and towers raised above the ordinary level by several stages of wooden turrets. Their first fury was spent in the discharge of darts, stones, and fire, from the engines, but the water was deep. The French were bold, the Venetians were skillful, they approached the walls, and a desperate conflict of swords, spears, and battle axes, was fought on the trembling bridges that grappled the floating, to the stable, batteries. In more than a hundred places, the assault was urged, and the defense was sustained till the superiority of ground and numbers finally prevailed, and the Latin trumpets sounded a retreat. On the ensuing days, the attack was renewed with equal vigor, and a similar event, and, in the night, the doge and the barons held a council, apprehensive only for the public danger, not a voice pronounced the words of escape or treaty, and each warrior, according to his temper, embraced the hope of victory, or the assurance of a glorious death, Eighty by the experience of the former siege, the Greeks were instructed, but the Latins were animated, and the knowledge that Constantinople might be taken, was of more avail than the local precautions which that knowledge had inspired for its defense. In the third assault, two ships were linked together to double their strength, a strong north wind drove them on the shore, the bishops of Trua and Swasaled, the van, and the auspicious names of the underscore pilgrim underscore and the Underscore paradise underscore resounded along the line. 81 The episcopal banners were displayed on the walls, a hundred marks of silver had been promised to the first adventurers, and if their reward was intercepted by death, their names have been immortalized by fame. 811 Four towers were scaled, three gates were burst open, and they French knights, who might tremble on the waves, felt themselves invincible on horseback on the solid ground. Shall I relate that? The thousands who guarded the emperor's person fled on the approach, and before the lands, of a single warrior? Their ignominious flight is attested by their countryman Nystus, an army of phantoms marched with the French hero, and he was magnified to a giant in the eyes of the Greeks. 82 While they 
fugitives deserted their posts and cast away their arms, they Latins entered the city under the banners of their leaders, they Streets and gates opened for their passage, and either design or Accident kindled a third conflagration, which consumed in a few Hours the measure of three of the largest cities of France 83 in The close of evening, the barons checked their troops, and Fortified their stations they were awed by the extent and populousness of the capital, which might yet require the labor of a month, if the churches and palaces were conscious of their internal strength. But in the morning, a suppliant procession with crosses and images, announced the submission of the Greeks and deprecated the wrath of the conquerors, the usurper escaped. Through the Golden Gate, the palaces of Blackairn and Bucullion were occupied by the Count of Flanders and the Marquis of Montferrat, and the Empire, which still bore the name of Constantine, and the title of Roman, was subverted by the arms of the Latin pilgrims. 84. 77. Return, this negotiation probable in itself, and attested. By Nystus, p. 65, is omitted as scandalous by the delicacy of Dandolo and Vilharduin. Asterisk note, Wilkin places it before the death of Alexius, Vol. V. p. 276 m. 78, return, Baldwin mentions both attempts to fire the fleet. Jest, c. 92, p. 534, 535. Vilharduin, no. 11315, only. Describes the first. It is remarkable that neither of these warriors observe any peculiar properties in the Greek fire. 79, return. Duckenge, number 119, pours forth a torrent of learning. On the underscore gonfanon imperial underscore. This banner of the Virgin is shown at Venice as a trophy and relic, if it be genuine the pious doge. Must have cheated the monks of Citeau. 80, return, Vilharduin, number 126, confesses, that Multnoma air. Grant Peril, and Guntherus, History C. P. C. 13, affirms, that. Nulla spes victori are dear poterat. Yet the knight despises. Those who thought of flight, and the monk praises his countrymen. Who were resolved on death. 81, Return, Baldwin, and all the writers, Honor the names of these two galleys, Felici Auspicio. 811, return, Pietro Alberti, a Venetian noble and Andrew. D'Amboise a French knight, M. 82, return, with an allusion to Homer, Nystus calls him. Any orguio v, nine orgy, or eighteen yards high, a stature which would, indeed, have excused the terror of the Greek. On this occasion, the historian seems fonder of the marvelous than of his country, or perhaps of truth. Baldwin exclaims in the words of the psalmist, Persequiter unis ex nobis centum alienos. 83, return, Vilharduin, number 130, is again ignorant of the authors of underscore this underscore more legitimate fire, which is ascribed by Gunter to a quidum comes to an ICU's, C14. They seem ashamed. The incendiaries. 84, return, for the second siege and conquest of Constantinople, Seville Harduin, no 113 132, 
Baldwin Zid. Epistle to Innocent 3, Gusta C. 92, p. 534-537, with the whole reign of Morzuifal, in Nystus, p. 363-375, and borrowed. Some hints from Dandolo, Chronicles Venet p. 323-330, and Gunter. History c. p. c. 1418, who added the decorations of prophecy and vision. The former produces an oracle of the Erythran Sibyl, of a great armament on the Adriatic, under a blind chief, against Byzantium, and c. See Urius enough, were the prediction anterior to the fact. Constantinople had been taken by storm, and no restraints, except those of religion and humanity, were imposed on the conquerors by the laws of war. Boniface, Marquis of Montferrat, still acted as their general, and the Greeks, who revered his name as that of their future sovereign, were heard to exclaim in a lamentable tone, Holy Marquis King, have mercy upon us. His prudence or compassion opened the gates of the city to the fugitives, and he exhorted the soldiers of the cross to spare the lives of their fellow Christians. The streams of blood that flowed down the pages of Nystus may be reduced to the slaughter of two thousand of his unresisting countrymen, eighty-five and the greater part was massacred, not by the strangers, but by the Latins, who had been driven from the city, and who exercised the revenge of a triumphant faction. Yet of these exiles, some were less mindful of injuries than of benefits, and Nystus himself was indebted for his safety to the generosity of a Venetian merchant. Pope Innocent III accuses the pilgrims for respecting, in their lust, neither age, nor sex, nor religious profession, and bitterly laments that the deeds of darkness, fornication, adultery, and incest, were perpetrated in open day, and that noble matrons and holy nuns were polluted by the grooms and peasants of the Catholic camp. 86 It is indeed probable that the license of victory prompted and covered a multitude of sins, but it is certain that the capital of the East contained a stock of venal or willing beauty, sufficient to satiate the desires of twenty thousand pilgrims, and female prisoners were no longer subject to the right or abuse of domestic slavery. The Marquis of Montferrat was the patron of discipline and decency, the Count of Flanders was the mirror of chastity, they had forbidden, under pain of death the rape of married women, or virgins, or nuns, and the proclamation was sometimes invoked by the vanquished 87 and respected by the victors. Their cruelty and lust were moderated by the authority of the chiefs, and feelings of the soldiers, for we are no longer describing an eruption of the northern savages and however ferocious they might still appear, time, policy, and religion had civilized the manners of the French, and still more of the Italians. But a free scope was allowed to their avarice, which was glutted, even in the Holy Week, by the pillage of Constantinople. The right of victory, unshackled by any promise, or treaty, had confiscated the public and private wealth of the Greeks, and every hand, according to its size and strength, might lawfully execute the sentence and seize the forfeiture. A 
portable and universal standard of exchange was found in the coined and uncoined metals of gold and silver, which each captor at home or abroad, might convert into the possessions most suitable to his temper and situation. Of the treasures, which trade and luxury had accumulated, the silks, velvets, furs, the gems, spices, and rich movables, were the most precious, as they could not be procured for money in the ruder countries of Europe. An order of rapine was instituted, nor was the share of each individual abandoned to industry or chance. Under the tremendous penalties of perjury, excommunication, and death, the Latins were bound to deliver their plunder into the common stock. Three churches were selected for the deposit and distribution of the spoil. A single share was allotted to a foot soldier, two for a sergeant on horseback, four to a knight, and larger proportions, according to the rank and merit of the barons and princes. 4. Violating this sacred engagement, a knight belonging to the Count of Street. Paul was hanged with his shield and coat of arms round his neck. His example might render similar offenders more artful and discreet, but avarice was more powerful than fear, and it is generally believed that the secret far exceeded the acknowledged plunder. Yet the magnitude of the price surpassed the largest scale of experience or expectation. 88 After the whole had been Equally divided between the French and Venetians, 50,000 marks were deducted to satisfy the debts of the former and the demands of the latter. The residue of the French amounted to 400,000 marks of silver, 89 about 800,000 pounds sterling, nor can I better appreciate the value of that some in the public and private transactions of the age, than by defining it as seven times the annual revenue of the Kingdom of England. 90. 85. Return, Cessiderant Tumenia di Civium Quasi Duomilia. And C. Gunter, C. 18. Arithmetic is an excellent touchstone to Try the amplifications of passion and rhetoric. 86. Return, quidem, says Innocent III, Gusta, c. 94, p. 538. Nec religion Ioni, nec tati, nec sex we pepperserunt, said. Fornications, adulteria, et instus in oculis omnium. Exercentes, Non solemn maritatas et viduas, said et matronas et. Virgins diakidicatas, expose warunt spersitias garcianum. Vilharduin takes no notice of these common incidents. 87. Return, Nystus saved, and afterwards married, a noble. Virgin, p. 380, whom a soldier, Eti Martusi Poloivi Anden. Epibrumumanovi, had almost violated in spite of the Entala. Entalmata eu Gaganotun. 88. Return, of the general mass of wealth, Gunter observes, ut. De pauperibus et advenis sives didi semi redorenter, history c. p. c. 18, Vilharduin. Number 132, that since the creation, any Futant Gani Dans Unville, Baldwin, Gusta, C. 92, Ut. Tantum Tota Non Vidiata Posidera Latinitas. 89, Return, Vilharduin, No. 133-135. Instead of 400,000. 
there is a various reading of 500,000. The Venetians had offered to take the whole booty, and to give 400 marks to each knight, 200 to each priest and horseman, and 100 to each foot soldier. They would have been great losers, Elibo, History du Bas Empire. Tom. XXP 506. I know not from whence. 90. Return, at the Council of Lyons, AD 1245, the English. Ambassadors stated the revenue of the crown as below that of the foreign clergy, which amounted to 60,000 marks a year, Matthew. Paris, p. 451 Hume's History of England, Vol. 2 p. 170. In this great revolution we enjoy the singular felicity of comparing the narratives of Vilharduin and Nystus, the opposite feelings of the Marshal of Champagne and the Byzantine Senator. 91. At the first view it should seem that the wealth of Constantinople was only transferred from one nation to another, and that the loss and sorrow of the Greeks is exactly balanced by the joy and advantage of the Latins. But in the miserable account of war, the gain is never equivalent to the loss, the pleasure to the pain, the smiles of the Latins were transient and fallacious. The Greeks forever wept over the ruins of their country, and their real calamities were aggravated by sacrilege and mockery. What benefits accrued to the conquerors from the three fires, which annihilated so vast a portion of the buildings and riches of the city? What a stock of such things, as could neither be used nor transported, was maliciously or wantonly destroyed. How much treasure was idly wasted in gaming, debauchery, and riot. And what precious objects were bartered for a vile price by the impatience or ignorance of the soldiers, whose reward was stolen by the base industry of the last of the Greeks. These alone, who had nothing to lose, might derive some profit from the revolution, but the misery of the upper ranks of society is strongly painted in the personal adventures of Nystas himself. His stately palace had been reduced to ashes in the second conflagration, and the senator, with his family and friends, found an obscure shelter in another house which he possessed near the church of street Sophia it was the door of this mean habitation that his friend the Venetian merchant guarded in the disguise of a soldier till Nystas could save by a precipitate flight the relics of his fortune and the chastity of his daughter in a cold, wintry season, these fugitives, nursed in the lap of prosperity, departed on foot, his wife was with child, the desertion of their slaves compelled them to carry their baggage on their own shoulders, and their women, whom they placed in the center, were exhorted to conceal their beauty with dirt, instead of adorning it with paint and jewels every step was exposed to insult and danger, the threats of the strangers were less painful than the taunts of the plebeians, with whom they were now leveled, nor did the exiles breathe in safety till their mournful pilgrimage was concluded at Salimbria, above forty miles from the capital. On the way they overtook the Patriarch, without attendance and almost without apparel, riding on an ass, and reduced to a state of apostolical poverty, which, had it been voluntary, might perhaps have been meritorious. In the mean 
while, his desolate churches were profaned by the licentiousness and party zeal of the Latins. After stripping the gems and pearls, they converted the chalices into drinking cups, their tables, on which they gamed and feasted, were covered with the pictures of Christ and the saints, and they trampled underfoot the most venerable objects of the Christian worship. In the Cathedral of Street Sophia, the ample veil of the sanctuary was rent asunder for the sake of the golden fringe, and the altar, a monument of art and riches, was broken in pieces and shared among the captors. Their mules and horses were laden with the wrought silver and gilt carvings, which they tore down from the door's end. Pulpit and if the beasts stumbled under the burden, they were stabbed by their impatient drivers, and the holy pavement streamed with their impure blood. A prostitute was seated on the throne of the patriarch, and that daughter of Belial, as she is styled, sung and danced in the church, to ridicule the hymns and processions of the Orientals nor were the repositories of the royal dead secure from violation, in the church of the apostles. The tombs of the emperors were rifled, and it is said, that after six centuries the corpse of Justinian was found without any signs of decay or putrefaction. In the streets, the French and Flemings clothed themselves and their horses in painted robes and flowing headdresses of linen, and the coarse intemperance of their feasts 92 insulted the splendid sobriety of the East. To expose the arms of a people of scribes and scholars, they affected to display a pen, an inkhorn, and a sheet of paper, without discerning that the instruments of science and valor were underscore alike underscore feeble and useless in the hands of the modern Greeks. 91. Return, the disorders of the sack of Constantinople, and his own adventures, are feelingly described by Nystus, p. 367-369, and in the status URB. CPP 375 384. His complaints, even of sacrilege, are justified by Innocent III, Gusta, c. 92, but Vilharduin does not betray a symptom of pity or remorse. 92, return, if I rightly apprehend the Greek of Nystus's receipts. Their favorite dishes were boiled buttocks of beef, salt pork and peas, and soup made of garlic and sharp or sour. Herbs, p. 382. Their reputation and their language encouraged them, however, to despise the ignorance and to overlook the progress of the Latins. 93. In the love of the arts, the national difference was still more obvious and real, the Greeks preserved with reverence the works of their ancestors, which they could not imitate, and, in the destruction of the statues of Constantinople, we are provoked to join in the complaints and invectives of the Byzantine historian. 94 We have seen how the rising city was adorned by the vanity and despotism of the imperial founder, in the ruins of paganism, some gods and heroes were saved from the acts of superstition, and the forum and hippodrome were dignified with the relics of a better age. Several of these are described by Nystus, 95 in a florid and affected style, and from his Descriptions I shall select some interesting particulars 
underscore one underscore. The victorious charioteers were cast in bronze, at their own oar. The public charge, and fitly placed in the hippodrome, they stood. Aloft in their chariots, wheeling round the goal, the spectators could admire their attitude, and judge of the resemblance, and of these figures, the most perfect might have been transported from the Olympic Stadium. Underscore two, underscore the Sphinx, River Horse, and Crocodile. Denote the climate and manufacture of Egypt and the spoils of that ancient province. Underscore three, underscore the she-wolf suckling Romulus and Remus, a subject alike pleasing to the underscore old underscore and the underscore new underscore Romans, but which could really be treated before the decline of the Greek sculpture. Underscore four, underscore an eagle holding and tearing a serpent. In his talons, a domestic monument of the Byzantines, which they ascribed, not to a human artist, but to the magic power of the philosopher Apollonius, who, by this talisman, delivered the city from such venomous reptiles. Underscore five, underscore an ass and his driver, which were erected by Augustus in his colony of Nicopolis, to Commemorate a verbal omen of the victory of Actium. Underscore six, underscore an equestrian statue which passed, in the vulgar opinion, for Joshua, the Jewish conqueror, stretching out his hand to stop the course of the descending sun. A more classical tradition recognized the figures of Bellerophon and Pegasus, and the free attitude of the steed seemed to mark that he trod on air, rather, than on the earth. Underscore seven, underscore a square and lofty obelisk of brass, the sides were embossed with a variety of picturesque and rural scenes, birds singing, rustics laboring, or playing on their pipes, sheep bleeding, lambs skipping, the sea, and a scene of Fish and fishing, little naked cupids laughing, playing, and pelting each other with apples, and, on the summit, a female figure, turning with the slightest breath, and thence denominated. Underscore the winds attendant underscore. Underscore eight underscore the Phrygian shepherd presenting to Venus the prize of beauty, the apple of discord. Underscore nine, underscore the incomparable statue of Helen, which is delineated by Nystus in the words of admiration and love, her well turned feet, snowy arms, rosy lips, bewitching smiles, swimming eyes, arched eyebrows, the harmony of her shape, the lightness of her drapery, and her flowing locks that waved in the wind a beauty that might have moved her barbarian destroyers to pity and remorse. Underscore ten, underscore The manly or divine form of Hercules, 96 as he was restored to life by the master hand of Lysippus, of such magnitude, that his thumb was equal to his waist, his leg to the stature, of a common man. 97 His chest ample, his shoulders broad, his limbs strong and muscular, his hair curled, his aspect commanding. Without his bow, or quiver, or club, his lion's skin carelessly thrown over him, he was seated on an osier basket, his right leg and arm stretched to the utmost, his left knee bent, and supporting his elbow, his head reclining on his left hand, his countenance indignant and pensive. Underscore eleven, underscore a colossal statue of Juno, 
which had once adorned her temple of Samos, the enormous head by four yoke of oxen was laboriously drawn to the palace. Underscore 12 underscore another Colossus of Pallas or Minerva, 30 feet in height, and representing with admirable spirit the attributes and character of the martial maid. Before we accuse the Latins, it is just to remark that this palace was destroyed after the first siege by the fear and superstition of the Greeks themselves. 98 The other statues of brass which I have enumerated were broken and melted by the unfeeling avarice of the crusaders, the cost and labor were consumed in a moment, the soul of genius evaporated in smoke, and the remnant of base metal was coined into money for the payment of the troops. Bronze is not the most durable of monuments, from the marble forms of Phidias and Praxiteles, they Latins might turn aside with stupid contempt, 99 but unless they were crushed by some accidental injury, those useless stones stood secure on their pedestals. 100 The most enlightened of the strangers, above the gross and sensual pursuits of their countrymen, more piously exercised the right of conquest in the Search and seizure of the relics of the saints. 101 immense was the supply of heads and bones, crosses and images, that were scattered by this revolution over the churches of Europe, and such was the increase of pilgrimage and oblation, that no branch, perhaps, of more lucrative plunder was imported from the East. 102 of the writings of antiquity, many that still existed in the 12th century, are now lost. But the pilgrims were not solicitous to save or transport the volumes of an unknown tongue. The perishable substance of paper or parchment can only be preserved by the multiplicity of copies, the literature of the Greeks had almost centered in the metropolis, and, without computing the extent of our loss, we may drop a tear over the libraries that have perished in the triple fire of Constantinople. 103. 93. Return, Nystus uses very harsh expressions, P.A.R. A grammatoi v barbaroi v. K. Tellian anal fab toy v. Fragment, apud. Fabric. Bibliot. GRC, Tom. 6p, 414. This reproach, it is. True, applies most strongly to their ignorance of Greek and of. Homer. In their own language, the Latins of the Zeeth and Zeeth. Centuries were not destitute of literature. See Harris's Philological Inquiries, p. 3. C. 9, 10, 11. 94. Return, Nystus was of Chon in Phrygia, the old Coloss. Of St. Paul he raised himself to the honors of Senator, Judge. Of the Vale, and Great Law Gothete, beheld the fall of the empire, retired to Nice, and composed an elaborate history from the death of Alexius Comnus to the reign of Henry. 95. Return, a manuscript of Nystus in the Bodleian Library. Contains this curious fragment on the statues of Constantinople. Which fraud, or shame, or rather carelessness, has dropped in the Common editions. It is published by Fabricius, Bibliot. GRC. Tom. 6p 405416, and immoderately praised by the late. 
Ingenious Mr. Harris of Salisbury, Philological Inquiries, p. 3c, 5, p. 301 312. 96. Return, to illustrate the statue of Hercules, Mr. Harris. Quotes a Greek epigram, and engraves a beautiful gem, which does not, however, copy the attitude of the statue, in the latter. Hercules had not his club, and his right leg and arm were extended. 97. Return, I transcribe these proportions, which appear to me inconsistent with each other, and may possibly show, that they boasted taste of niceness was no more than affectation and vanity. 98. Return, Nystus in Asako Angelo et Alexio, C3, P359. The Latin editor very properly observes, that the historian, in his bombast style, produces ex pulis elephantum. 99. Return, in two passages of Nystus, edit. Paris, p. 360. Fabric. p. 408. The Latins are branded with the lively reproach. Avoidio u calo an aristoi barbaroi, and their avarice of brass is clearly expressed. Yet the Venetians had the merit of removing four bronze horses from Constantinople to the place of street. Mark Sanuto, v del Dogi, in Muratori, Scripture Rerum Italicarum. Tom XXIIP 534 100, Return, Winkelman, Histoire de l'Art, Tom 3P 269 270 101, Return, See the pious robbery of the Abbot Martin, who transferred a rich cargo to his monastery of Paris, Diocese of Basel, Gunter, History C. P. C. 19, 23, 24. Yet in secreting this booty, the saint incurred an excommunication, and perhaps broke his oath. Compare Wilkin Vall, V. P. 308 M. 102, Return, Flary, History. Ecclesiastes Tom. 16 p. 139-145 103. Return, I shall conclude this chapter with the notice of a modern history, which illustrates the taking of Constantinople by the Latins, but which has fallen somewhat late into my hands. Paolo Ramugio, the son of the compiler of voyages, was directed by the Senate of Venice to write the history of the conquest, and this order, which he received in his youth, he executed in a mature age, by an elegant Latin work, di bello. Constantino Politano et Imperatoribus Comnus per Gallos et Venetos Restitutis, Venet, 1635, in folio. Remugio, or Ramnicius, transcribes and translates, sequitur ad ungium, a mis. of Vilharduin, which he possessed, but he enriches his narrative with Greek and Latin materials, and we are indebted to him for a correct state of the fleet, the names of the fifty Venetian nobles who commanded the galleys of the Republic, and the patriot opposition of Pantaleon Barbus to the choice of the Doge for Emperor. Chapter LXI, Partition of the Empire by the French and Venetians, Part I. Partition of the Empire by the French and Venetians, Five Latin Emperors of the Houses of Flanders and Cordonnay, Their Wars against the Bulgarians and Greeks, weakness and poverty of the 
Latin Empire, Recovery of Constantinople by the Greeks, General Consequences of the Crusades After the death of the lawful princes, the French, and Venetians Confident of justice and victory, agreed to divide and regulate Their future possessions One it was stipulated by treaty, that Twelve electors, six of either nation should be nominated, that a majority should choose the Emperor of the East, and that, if the votes were equal, the decision of chance should ascertain the successful candidate to him, with all the titles and prerogatives of the Byzantine throne, they assigned the two palaces of Bukhalian and Blackairn, with a fourth part of the Greek monarchy. It was defined that the three remaining portions should be equally shared between the Republic of Venice and the barons of France, that each feudatory, with an honorable exception for the doge, should acknowledge and perform the duties of homage and military service to the supreme head of the empire. That the nation which gave an emperor should resign to their brethren the choice of a patriarch, and that the pilgrims, whatever might be their impatience to visit the Holy Land, should devote another year to the conquest and defense of the Greek provinces. After the conquest of Constantinople by the Latins, the treaty was confirmed and executed, and the first and most Important step was the creation of an emperor. The six electors of the French nation were all ecclesiastics, the abbot of Losais, the archbishop-elect of Acre in Palestine, and the bishops of Troyes, Soissons, Halberstadt, and Bethlehem, the last of whom exercised in the camp the office of Pope's legate, there. Profession and knowledge were respectable, and as underscore they underscore could not be the objects, they were best qualified to be the authors of the choice. The six Venetians were the principal servants of the state, and in this list the noble families of Quirini and Contarini are still proud to discover their ancestors. The Twelve Assembled in the chapel of the palace, and after the solemn invocation of the Holy Ghost, they proceeded to deliberate and vote. A just impulse of respect and gratitude prompted them to crown the virtues of the doge, his wisdom had inspired their enterprise, and the most youthful knights might envy and applaud the exploits of blindness and age. But the patriot Dandolo was devoid of all personal ambition, and fully satisfied that he had been judged worthy to reign. His nomination was overruled by the Venetians themselves, his countrymen, and perhaps his friends, too. Represented, with the eloquence of truth, the mischiefs that might arise to national freedom and the common cause, from the union of two incompatible characters, of the first magistrate of a republic and the emperor of the east. The exclusion of the doge left room for the more equal merits of Boniface and Baldwin, and at their names all meaner candidates respectfully withdrew. They Marquis of Montferrat was recommended by his mature age and fair reputation, by the choice of the adventurers, and the wishes of the Greeks, nor can I believe that Venice, the mistress of the sea, could be seriously apprehensive of a petty lord at the foot of the Alps. Three but the Count of Flanders was the chief of a wealthy and warlike people, he was valiant, pious, and chaste, in the prime of life, 
since he was only 32 years of age, a eh? descendant of Charlemagne, a cousin of the King of France, and a eh? compeer of the prelates and barons who had yielded with reluctance to the command of a foreigner. Without the chapel, these barons, with the doge and marquis at their head, expected the decision of the twelve electors. It was announced by the Bishop of Soissons, in the name of his colleagues, ye have sworn to obey the prince whom we should choose, by our unanimous suffrage, Baldwin Count of Flanders and Hainault is now your sovereign, and the Emperor of the East. He was saluted with loud applause, and the proclamation was re-echoed through the city by the joy of the Latins, and the trembling adulation of the Greeks. Boniface was the first to kiss the hand of his rival, and to raise him on the buckler, and Baldwin was transported to the